first phase have declared their assets as zero. A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Pondraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Karthik Gendlaji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे में सिर्फ 0.03 पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंट चांसेज परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट्स हु आर इन फ्रे इन दर्स्ट फेज ऑफ दीज पोल्स है एवरेज एसेट of 4 crore and 51 lakh in the first phase the highest number of rich candidates are in tamil nadu aidmk has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore while 22 candidates fielded by dmk have declared average assets worth around 31 crore clearly the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these lok sabha elections In Delhi with Manoj Thakur, Himanshu Shekhar for NDTV. Switching tracks now, and this is hours after the news came in of CBI uh, arresting BRS leader K. Kavita on the Delhi liquor policy scam. K. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea that was filed by the CBI in court over her arrest. Remember, K. Kavita is already in Tihar jail after the ED. Uh, this is the ED that arrested her in the same case on the 15th of March. Now, just a few days back, the CBI had questioned her in the excise policy scam. Now, the CBI is likely to uh, you know seek for her custody today and that case is going to be coming up in court as well we have my colleague uma joining us on the phone line to get us more on this uma uh, you know from what we are hearing is that uh, you know two uh, cases coming up one is k kavita asking for uh, details uh, or you know this is uh, details that she's seeking in order to know if there was any plea that was filed by the cbi in court over her arrest and then we also have the cbi uh, that is going to be seeking her custody today so two different cases but what we are hearing is that uh, k kavita's husband anil kumar was reportedly informed about her arrest by the cbi while she was in judicial custody in tihar jail that's a legal requirement divya that the family needs to be uh, informed when an arrest happens and that's what had happened even when the ed had arrested her from uh, hyderabad here yeah uh, her counsel are arguing in court or rather they appealed in the uh, duty uh, uh, judges court yesterday saying that it has not been put on record whether an application was filed by the cbi or an order or permission was granted by the court for the arrest because kavita happens to be in judicial custody after earlier having been arrested by the enforcement directorate so when uh, the duty judge was asked that he said that he does not have access to the registers and as of now he does not know about it and therefore uh, that is coming up in court the plea that uh, the registry should put on record either the application of the cbi or uh, the order uh, saying that she is being arrested so that's what they have asked for in court and like you mentioned we understand from our cbi sources that uh, the cbi is planning to move for custody of kavita so that they can question her further you would recall that on the 5th of uh, april is when the uh, the special court had granted permission to the cbi to question her in tihar jail and on the 6th they had questioned her but uh, her counsel had also uh, you know gone to court against that order and uh, in fact that is to come up in court on the 26th of april back to you Right. Uh, thank you so much, Uma, for joining us with all those details. Moving on to tragic news uh, from uh, Haryana and uh, six children that died and about 20 students who were injured after a bus uh, that hit a tree and overturned near a village in Haryana's Narnal. Now, Mahindragar's uh, police has arrested the school bus driver, the principal and the school secretary. The bus uh, driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. Uh, the children on uh, board that bus belonged to classes of four to about class uh, 10. Uh, they were belonging to a GL public school, which was functioning despite a holiday for Eid. The bus driver uh, was speeding at the time. He was apparently drunk. This tragic incident has uh, brought to light uh, rules and regulations that are not being followed while selecting staff when it comes to school buses. Grief, anger and despair at 13-year-old Vansha's home in Haryana's Mahindrakar. 
Vanshu's grieving parents, who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village, feel they have nothing to live for. His grandfather, who sent him off to school this morning, is still in shock. Vanch is among the six young students killed by a drunk driver who rammed a private school bus into a tree seriously injuring over 20 students on board. Not only was the driver drunk, but the school bus was not fit to ferry students. The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina. And the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The, the insides of, of the bus here, absolutely tragic and absolutely devastating because all that is left, you know, here, uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor. This was, this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident. And in fact, the remains of the bus scattered all around here, you know, the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who, who were injured, who lost their lives here. In fact, uh, you know, shoes also lying here, school shoes. This is a GL public school, one of the few private schools in the district which was locked up soon after the incident with the principal, a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police. But there are many unanswered questions. Why was the school open on a government holiday? Why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school? How was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children? फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढ़े पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके the children who died have turned into statistics already. But for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam, and the others who have been scarred for life, this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children. In Mahindragar with camera person Xavier Thomas, Vedant for NDTV. We have a driver who was driving the driver's car, who was driving the driver's car, who was driving the driver's car. And in addition, the principal of the principal is Dikti, who is the staff of the main member of the OCR. He is a part of the school. 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 और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पे हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने करनी है और जो छह इसमें टोटल बैठी हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडी हमने उनके घर के हवाले वारिशा के कर दी थी 
We have Gurpreet uh, joining us on the phone line to get us more on this. Uh, Gurpreet, the rest have been made from the driver to the principal. But there's still many questions that remain unanswered, including the fitness certificate of the bus, which is likely to happen today. That test is going to happen today. Well, uh, yes, of course, we have seen yesterday the in inspection has already been initiated in the school buses. And uh, what we have learned from the sources, most of the buses, they don't have this uh, fitness certificate that is required uh, to uh, uh, run these buses on the roads. And this accident, uh, uh, the bus which has been uh, used for uh, the buses, uh, for the students who are being carried uh, from the different location, even that bus uh, did not have this fitness certificate. Today, the investigation will be taken further. They are trying to find out all the angles. And what we have seen, the FIR has already been registered against the driver whose name is Terminder. And now the Further investigation is already going on to find out what was the reason behind thing. But in the FIR, it is also mentioned the driver was drunk and the students and the school children, they were are repeatedly asking this driver to stop this uh, vehicle because he was running the vehicle at a high speed. Despite the students who had raised the alarm again and again, this driver did not stop the car, uh, did not stop the bus. And uh, that could be possible reasons why he uh, had uh, that bus had been Overturned. Gurpreet, uh, from uh, what uh, we are picking up is that uh, it's not just that they were asking the driver to slow down, but apparently the principal was also informed almost uh, an hour before this incident took place about the fact that he was drunk, but nothing was done about it. Well, uh, yes, uh, some of the parents, they had already approached the uh, school authorities when they have learned the bus was at a high speed and uh, are they repeatedly asking the school authorities to ask the driver to stop the bus on the way. But uh, they did not listen to uh, their concern and we have seen the six uh, students, they have already lost their life in this tragic accident and now uh, the uh, Haryana government uh, is going to hold a multiple meeting to find out about the uh, fitness certificate of these buses so that uh, in another school such type of tragedy should not happen. But the no question is made why the school authority has not got this uh, fitness certificate of the buses and if they don't get the fitness certificate why they were running these buses on the roads and carrying the students from the various locations of uh, this district. So all these questions will be put before the owner of the school so that the police will be able to investigate further to find out uh, what was the reason why they did not get this fitness certificate and what was the compulsion to run these buses when they know that these buses are not fit to uh, use on the road. So, so let's see right. uh, today in, in the whole day, this will be the main issue in the Haryana because the top officer, they are also holding a multiple uh, meetings and uh, what we have learned at about 3 p.m. there will be a uh, uh, VC by the top officer with the district officer so that they will be able to find out more clues in this case and further investigation will be taken place. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Gurpreet Mahendra, uh, Guard Deputy Commissioner, has also written to the Haryana Board of School Education and the state government to terminate the school's affiliation for conducting classes on a holiday uh, the, on the occasion of Eid, in which uh, six students, including five boys and one girl, aged between 13 and 16, have died. We're sipping to a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Go presented by Intelligence Meets Art with the all new. The biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. Can you give us, a few, like, say, a three of your strongest takeaways of not to do's or to do's? Because it's a map you have to parenting. You have to, it's a slow process. But the three things one has to get, one can keep in mind even today in this very stress pressure driven world, goal driven world for our kids. 
Well, I think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children, understand who their children are, and understand that every goal or every solution out there will not be tailor-made for your child. You have to attune to each child's essence and connect to who to that connect to who that child is. The second takeaway is connect before you correct. First try to understand what's going on within the child. Their behavior is only on the surface, but underneath the behavior is a need that the child has that we have to help the child discover and solve. And number three is every reaction to your child is more about you than it is about your child. So if you want to really do this as consciously as possible, you have to examine your own reactions and understand where they are coming from. And, and number four, the traditional ways of discipline Welcome back. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally in Rajasthan where he commented on a section of media. Rahul Gandhi said that for people of India, the biggest issues are unemployment and inflation that the Congress party has been breaking up. But for a certain section of the media, the biggest issue seems to be the wedding of the Imbanis. Hindustan ki janta se agar aap puche, to wo aapko batayenge. Pehle number par berozgari, दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा Breaking news coming in, an FR has been registered in the Haryana bus a tragedy case. So an FR has been filed in that Haryana bus accident in which six students aged between 13 and 16, five boys and a girl were killed due to the negligence of the driver. Do remember the driver was allegedly drunk. Uh, the children on the bus uh, kept asking him to slow down. They in fact informed their parents, uh, even the principal was informed of the fact that he is drunk. However, the authorities uh, refused to take any sort of action. They asked the children to come to school even though it was a public holiday so a school that was running on a public holiday uh, uh, you know interesting uh, the life of uh, uh, these children there were 37 children on board that bus of which six students have died and many others have been injured and with that we're slipping into a short break back with a whole lot more Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. The 2024 campaign hot side. The three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav. 
only on NDTV 24/7. बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर talking but very little being said too many voices but hardly the biggest carnival of democracy india's general election prime minister bedness when it comes to the heated conditions which are going to be extreme when it comes uh, to the phase in the pre monsoon uh, this is the period between april and june we'll get you all the details but first the headlines the prime minister chairs a meeting to review the preparedness for the heat wave conditions augmenting healthcare capacity as well as spreading awareness and this was a key focus of that meeting as heat wave conditions warning have been uh, sounded off for several states we're talking about a phase between april to june which is known as the pre monsoon phase Battle Royale as far as Rajasthan is concerned it was Prime Minister Modi versus Rahul Gandhi holding rallies in the state the prime minister targeted congress for corruption while Rahul Gandhi counter attacked saying that the BJP is using tactics to divert from real issues After CBI Azraz K Kavita now moves a uh, uh, plea this is uh, K Kavita seeks details of the CBI application the CBI likely to seek custody of K Kavita today and uh, to get you the latest uh, from haryana that accident that took place uh, yesterday in which six school kids uh, died uh, on a school bus that overturned the school's uh, bus driver principal and the school's secretary have been arrested further investigation is on the case and the fitness test as far as the school bus is concerned that will also take place today and carnage at uh, wankade with uh, bumrah claiming a uh, second 5-4 in uh, ipl Ishan Kishan uh, takes down uh, RCB and Bangalore lose a uh, battle of headlines. This time clears the fence. Let's get your top story and that is the heat wave conditions and the warning that's been sounded off by the IMD and taking stock of that situation is the prime minister who held a high level meeting yesterday he reviewed the preparedness as far as this pre monsoon phase is concerned from april up until june as the temperature is above normal we are talking about maximum temperatures over normal over most parts of the country the prime minister also reviewed the preparedness of the health sector according to IMD the temperature ranged between 40 to 42 degrees in several parts whether it's west uh, rajasthan whether that's gujarat or tamil nadu do remember the temperatures also crossed the 44 degree mark in andhra pradesh so the prime minister there taking stock of the situation uh, wanting to know what are the steps that are being taken augmenting healthcare uh, capacity as well as spreading awareness that was the key focus of that very meeting health ministry and the ndma uh, have already issued uh, advisories with regard to what needs to be done to sort of ensure that there is adequate provisions of ors and uh, uh, you know um, and the, the hospitals are sort of equipped to handle these heat wave cases also uh, you know uh, looking at uh, addressing the problems of forest fires and also elections are coinciding at this time so many people will be out not just campaigning but also voting the imd department like you rightly mentioned has already issued heat wave as they proceed you know the similar conditions would also be witnessed in western part of india that's something that imd has already said so this meeting was to ensure that the advisories of ndma and health ministry six are sort of like you know uh, put in order and the prime minister we are told also
also took uh, you know took took stock of uh, you know uh, the situation in hospital hospitals for the prepar- prepared test of uh, not just the hospitals but also health professionals and uh, also you know polling centers so ndma officials and also health ministry officials were present at this meeting chavas for joining us with well uh, also uh, now campaigning pick space as we inch closer to the first phase of general elections as uh, scheduled in a week's time from now and the heat was on in Rajasthan as the biggest faces on the BJP and the Congress we are talking about Prime Minister Modi versus Congress MP Rahul Gandhi campaigning both of them were in Rajasthan on Thursday the prime minister once again took a dig at the congress targeting them on corruption while Rahul Gandhi hit back saying that these tactics are only to divert the real issues <laughs> temperatures on the rise in Rajasthan with elections just a week away it is operation desert storm as the congress and bjp double up on the campaign trail the prime minister in dholpur karoli touching an emotive issue drinking water that strikes a chord but is especially significant for eastern rajasthan that has been waiting for the eastern rajasthan canal project for years that will supply water to 13 districts rajasthan mein पानी के संकट को बड़ा बनाने वाली कांग्रेस ही है केंद्र सरकार ने हर घर पानी पहुंचाने के लिए जल जीवन मिशन शुरू किया उसमें भी कांग्रेस ने भ्रष्टाचार किया आने वाले समय में राजस्थान के घर घर पानी पहुंचेगा ये मोदी की गारंटी है The Prime Minister will again hit the desert trail on Saturday campaigning in Barmer on the west and Dosa in the east. Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Falodi, spoke about the Congress's outreach to farmers and women voters. Ye vaada ye vaada Narendra Modi ne Agnivir banakar ye vaada toda hai. Aur ye Agnivir scheme jo hai bhai aur behno ye army ko nahi chahiye thi. ये आर्मी ने नहीं कहा कि हमें अग्निवीर चाहिए ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने पीएम ऑफिस से अग्निवीर योजना लागू की है जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी अग्निवीर योजना को हम रद्द कर देंगे राजस्थान इज इन फॉर अ लार्जली बाइपोलर कॉन्टेस्ट and the bjp is hoping to score 25 out of 25 for the time even as the congress hopes for a change to open its account in rajasthan in lok sabha 2024 with harsha kumari singh bureau report ndtv Switching tracks now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has also hit back at the Congress Party for calling BJP leaders uh, dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency of 1975. In an interview, Rajnath Singh has said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to a brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Brain hemorrhage हो गया था. तो 27 दिन हॉस्पिटल में रही डेथ हो गई. लेकिन मैं आ नहीं सका उसमें. मेरी रिहाई नहीं हुई. मुझे पेरोल भी नहीं दिया गया. पेरोल नहीं दिया गया. मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं Now, Association for Democratic Reforms has released data for the richest and the poorest candidates in the fray in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. And now, as per the data, Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crore rupees. And the data also shows that 450 of the 1600 candidates are crore patis, while there are 10 candidates who have declared that they have zero assets. Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chhindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIADMK candidate from Erode Ashok Kumar, 662 crore rupees. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga, Devanathan Yadav, 304 crore rupees. These are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Analysis by the NGO ADR or Election Watch of the affidavit submitted by 16 ATM candidates has revealed that 450 that is around 28% are crore patis. Nakul Nath the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chhindwara Madhya Pradesh 
is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erode in Tamil Nadu, Ashok Kumar, is the second richest candidate. And the BJP candidate from Sivaganga in Tamil Nadu, Devnathan Yadav T, is the third richest in the fray in phase one. जी बिल्कुल ये तो ए का हमेशा से मुद्दा रहा है कि जो धनबल और बाहुबल कोट अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज़्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एम उनकी एसेट्स दो करोड़ से ऊपर थी Interestingly 10 candidates in the fray in the first phase have declared their assets as zero. A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Ponraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Kartik Gendla ji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे में सिर्फ 0.03 पॉइंट ज़ीरो थ्री परसेंट चांसेज परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट्स हु आर इन फ्रे इन दर्स्ट फेज ऑफ दिस पोल्स है of 4 crore and 51 lakh in the first phase the highest number of rich candidates are in tamil nadu ai dmk has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore while 22 candidates fielded by dmk have declared average assets worth around 31 crore clearly the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these lok sabha elections In Delhi with Manoj Thakur, Himanshu Shekhar for Delhi TV. Switching tracks now, and this is hours after the news came in of CBI uh, arresting BRS leader K Kavita on the Delhi liquor policy scam. K Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea that was filed by the CBI in court over her arrest. Remember, K Kavita is already in Tihar jail after the ED. Uh, this is the ED that arrested her in the same case on the 15th of March. Now, just a few days back, the CBI had questioned her in the excess policy scam. Now, the CBI is likely. to uh you know seek for her custody today and that case is going to be coming up in court as well we have my colleague uma joining us on the phone line to get us more on this uma uh, you know from what we are hearing is that uh, you know two uh, cases coming up one is k kavita asking for uh, details uh, or you know this is uh, details that she is seeking in order to know if there was any plea that was filed by the cbi in court over her arrest and then we also have the cbi uh, that is going to be seeking her custody today so two different cases but what we are hearing is that uh, k kavita's husband anil kumar was reportedly informed about her arrest by the cbi while she was in judicial custody in tihar jail that's a legal requirement divya that the family needs to be uh, informed when an arrest happens and that's what had happened even when the ed had arrested her from uh, hyderabad here yeah uh, her counsel are arguing in court or rather they appealed in the uh, duty uh, uh, judges court yesterday saying that it has not been put on record whether an application was filed by the cbi or an order or permission was granted by the court for the arrest because kavita happens to be in judicial custody after earlier having been arrested by the enforcement directorate so when uh, the duty judge was asked that he said that he does not have access to the registers and as of now he does not know about it and therefore uh, that is coming up in court the plea that uh, the registry should put on record either the application of the cbi or uh, the order uh, saying that she is being arrested so that's what they have asked for in court and like you mentioned we understand from our cbi sources that uh, the cbi is planning to move for custody of kavita so that they can question her further you would recall that on the 5th of uh, april is when the uh, the special court had granted permission to the cbi to question her in tihar jail and on the 6th they had questioned her but uh, her counsel had also uh, you know uh, gone to court against that order and uh, in fact that is to come up in court on the 26th of april back to you Right uh, thank you so much Uma for joining us with all those details
Moving on to tragic news uh, from uh, Haryana and uh, six children that died and about 20 students who were injured after a bus uh, that hit a tree and overturned near a village in Haryana's Narnal. Now, Mahindragar's uh, police has arrested the school bus driver, the principal and the school secretary. The bus uh, driver was allegedly drunk and speeding. Uh, the children on uh, board that bus belonged to classes of four to about class uh, 10. Uh, they were belonging to a GL public school, which was functioning despite a holiday for Eid. The bus driver uh, was speeding at the time. He was apparently drunk. This tragic incident has uh, brought to light uh, rules and regulations that are not being followed while selecting staff when it comes to school buses. Grief, anger and despair at 13-year-old Vansha's home in Haryana's Mahindragarh. Vansha's grieving parents, who lost their only son in a tragic bus accident in the village, feel they have nothing to live for. His grandfather, who sent him off to school this morning, is still in shock. Vansh is among the six young students killed by a drunk driver who rammed a private school bus into a tree, seriously injuring over 20 students on board. Not only was the driver drunk, but the school bus was not fit to ferry students. <laughs> The driver abandoned the dying and injured children and fled the spot. This was a bus that was ferrying over 20 students uh, to a school, a private school here in Kanina. And the back portion of the bus rammed into a tree. And just looking at the bus, you can imagine the extent of the tragedy. The, the insides of, of the bus here, absolutely tragic and absolutely devastating because all that is left, you know, here, uh, these pieces of glass scattered on the floor. This was, this was a very tree that the bus rammed into during the accident. And in fact, the remains of the bus scattered all around here, you know, the water bottles of uh, kids uh, who, who, who were injured, who lost their lives here. In fact, uh, you know, shoes also lying here, school shoes. This is a GL public school, one of the few private schools in the district which was locked up soon after the incident with the principal, a school trust secretary and the bus driver arrested by the police. But there are many unanswered questions. Why was the school open on a government holiday? Why were there no checks on the vehicles carrying students to school? How was an irresponsible driver allowed to ferry the children? फिर लापरवाही ये है कि सुबह बच्चों को जो बंदा लेने जा रहा है मैं नहीं कहती कि आज नवरात्रे भी हैं और उसके बावजूद जो बच्चे को सुबह बसेस लेने जाती हैं वो अपने पॉइंट से लगभग पांच साढे पांच निकलती हैं तो इस ड्राइवर ने जैसा बताया जा रहा है कि शराब पी हुई थी तो इसने कितने बजे पी और पीने के बाद ही पचास जिंदगियां एक बस में बैठी हुई थी पचास घरों के बच्चे थे इनके The children who died have turned into statistics already but for the families of Vansh, Ricky, Anshu, Yuvraj, Akshu and Satyam and the others who have been scarred for life this fateful day can never be forgotten. He was just 13 years old. He had his whole life ahead of him. Dreams, aspirations that have all been shattered. Who takes accountability for the tragic death of these six innocent children. 
In Mahindragarh with camera person Xavier Thomas, Vedant for Indy TV. In this case, we had a driver who was driving the car, Mahindragarh. We had to arrest him. And besides, there is a principal of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, the Dikti. There is a main member of the school, और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पे हमने तीन व्यक्ति की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने करनी है और जो छः की इसमें टोटल बैठी हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडी हमने उनके घर के हवाले बारिश आगे कर दी थी we have Gurpreet uh, joining us on the phone line to get us more on this. Uh, Gurpreet, the arrests have been made from the driver to the principal. But there's still many questions that remain unanswered, including the fitness certificate of the bus, which is likely to happen today. That test is going to happen today. Well, uh, yes, of course, we have seen yesterday the in inspection has already been initiated in the school buses. And uh, what we have learned from the sources, most of the buses, they don't have this uh, fitness certificate that is required uh, to uh, uh, run these buses on the roads. And this accident, uh, uh, the bus which has been uh, used for uh, the buses, uh, for the students who are being carried uh, from the different location, even that bus uh, did not have this fitness certificate. Today, the investigation will be taken further. They are trying to find out all the angles. And what we have seen, the FIR has already been registered against the driver whose name is Terminda, and now the Further investigation is already going on to find out what was the reason behind thing. But in the FIR, it is also mentioned the driver was drunk and the students and the school children, they were are repeatedly asking this driver to stop this uh, vehicle because he was running the vehicle at a high speed. Despite the students who had raised the alarm again and again, this driver did not stop the car, uh, did not stop the bus. And uh, that could be possible reasons why he uh, had uh, that bus had been Overturned. Gurpreet, uh, from uh, what we are picking up is that uh, it's not just that they were asking the driver to slow down, but apparently the principal was also informed almost uh, an hour before this incident took place about the fact that he was drunk, but nothing was done about it. Well, uh, yes, uh, some of the parents, they had already approached the uh, school authorities when they have learned the bus was at a high speed and uh, are they repeatedly asking the school authority to ask the driver to stop the bus on the way. But uh, they did not listen to uh, their concern and we have seen the six uh, students, they have already lost their life in this tragic accident and now uh, the uh, Haryana government uh, is going to hold a multiple meeting to find out about the uh, fitness certificate of these buses so that uh, in another school such type of tragedy should not happen. But the no question is made why the school authority has not got this uh, fitness certificate of the buses and if they don't get the fitness certificate why they were running these buses on the roads and carrying the students from the various locations of uh, this district. So all these questions will be put before the owner of the school so that the police will be able to investigate further to find out uh, what was the reason why they did not get this fitness certificate and what was the compulsion to run these buses when they know that these buses are not fit to uh, use on the roads. So, so let's see right. uh, today in, in the whole day, this will be the main issue in Haryana because the top officer, they are also holding a multiple uh, meetings and uh, what we have learned at about 3 p.m. there will be a, uh, a VC by the top officer with the district officer so that they will be able to find out more clues in this case and further investigation will be taken place. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Gurpreet Mahendra. Uh, Guard Deputy Commissioner has also written to the Haryana Board of School Education and the state government to terminate the school's affiliation for conducting classes on a holiday uh, the, on the occasion of Eid, in which uh, six students, including five boys and one girl, aged between 13 and 16, have died. We're slipping into a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Go presented by Intelligence Meets Art with the all new.
basically say to parents, stop chasing happiness and success for your kids. I'm like, hey, but if nothing else, I should at least be doing that. And in today's very goal-driven, success-driven world, I'd be like, I get it, but I don't want my kid to be left out. I want to give them the best chance. Right, so let's just take success first. And most Indian parents will have to admit, even in the privacy of their own solitude, that success is their main goal in raising their children. And when we raise children with this goal in mind, what we often do is become blind to who the child really is. When we drive our children to success, we objectify them. And no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we, we pretend to. Welcome back. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally in Rajasthan where he commented on a section of media. Rahul Gandhi said that for people of India, the biggest issues are unemployment and inflation that the Congress party has been breaking up. But for a certain section of the media, the biggest issue seems to be the wedding of the Imbanis. If you ask the people of India, they will tell you that the first number is दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा Breaking news coming in, an FR has been registered in the Haryana bus a tragedy case. So an FR has been filed in that Haryana bus accident in which six students aged between 13 and 16, five boys and a girl were killed due to the negligence of the driver. Do remember the driver was allegedly drunk. Uh, the children on the bus kept asking him to slow down. They in fact informed their parents, even the principal was informed of the fact that he is drunk. However, the authorities uh, refused to take any sort of action. They asked the children to come to school even though it was a public holiday so a school that was running on a public holiday uh, uh, you know interesting uh, the life of uh, uh, these children there were 37 children on board that bus of which six students have died and many others have been injured and with that we're slipping into a short break back with a whole lot more Go As this is all about gadgets, so I have always have multiple gadgets for you. And the second one this time is this, the all-new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Now, the Edge series, just by the name, it's you know, obvious that we get screen with the screen, it's with this 3D curved edge design. At the same time, phone is also having specs that are cutting edge. Or this phone, mein bhi, we have something special because there are many world's first and world's only features packed inside this phone. Uh, what we have is this nicely crafted, very sleek phone where the frame is made up of aluminium. The back, what we have is this special vegan leather. It smells nice as well. And the phone inside packs the punch because हमारे पास में है Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. What we have is a 4500 mAh battery. But the best part is this phone supports up to 125 watts of fast charging, and the charger comes inside the box. At the same time, this also supports up to 50 watts of wireless charging. You can also charge your other smartphone accessories because this phone में reverse wireless charging भी है. And then the camera and the screen, they are pretty unique because here they both are Pantone certified. 
the screen goes up to 144 hertz and the kind of colors you see they're all certified by pantone and you know pantone being the pioneer in the color space to humko jo colors milte hain they are very accurate at the same time what we have are like you know precisely accurate skin tones for all your shots because jo rear camera se photos aa rahi hain they are also certified by pantone for skin tones so the phone feels like a uh, a fresh device with all these unique specifications packed inside let's have a closer look about this motorola edge 50 pro motorola's edge 50 pro has finally hit the market and under the hood is packing some serious heat so dekhte hain quickly why this phone has all the potential to be your next upgrade while 50 megapixel ka front camera is no joke but expect absolutely crisp selfies from it and also do not forget ki piche bhi aapko ek triple camera setup milta hai jisme ek 50 megapixel ka main sensor hai 13 megapixels ka ultra wide sensor hai jo macro ka bhi kaam karta hai and then 10 megapixel ka telephoto it's like having a mini photo studio in your pocket no more searching for chargers with the motorola edge 50 pro motorola ka software already clean hai hello ux ko hum kafi look forward kar rahe hain and 3 years of major updates and 4 years of security patches have been promised that is pretty cool aapka phone ab safe aur secure rahega till the time you decide to upgrade to the next phone base model starts at 3199 but motorola does have a couple of launch offers if you look In the Haryana horror, FIR has been registered against the driver in the bus a tragedy. He's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. Well, Haryana horror has resulted in the death of six children, five boys and one girl aged between 13 and 16 as the school bus overturned. The driver, the principal and the school secretary have been arrested. A fitness test of the bus will be conducted today. After the ED, now the CBI is seeking the arrest of BRS leader K. Kavita. That uh, case will be coming up in court today. Now, after CBI's arrest, uh, K. Kavita has moved the plea. She is seeking details of the CBI plea as far as the order on record. She is demanding that 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 case will be coming up in court as well. The Prime Minister chairs a meeting to review the preparedness as far as the heat wave conditions in the country are concerned. Augmenting healthcare capacity, spreading awareness being the key issue as far as that meeting is concerned as heat wave warning has been sounded off by the Met Office in several states in the pre-monsoon phase from April to June. As the political battle heats up, NTV brings you a ground report from Virud Nagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Mr Tagore. New rules are coming to force as far as the United Kingdom's family visa policy is concerned higher salary threshold as far as uh, you know giving out those uh, visas to families of the ones who are working in the United Kingdom so now the income threshold has increased by over 55% we're talking about a minimum annual salary to the tune of uh, gbp 29000 is the minimum requirement Carnage at Wankhede with Bumrah claiming a second 5-4 in uh, IPL. Ishan Kishan takes down RCB and Bangalore lose a battle of heavyweights. Swings again, all the way down. Hey, good morning. You're watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Divya Vadva. We have very tragic news uh, concerning the six children who have died in that uh, school bus accident that took place in Haryana. Now, the uh, bus driver has uh, been arrested. So has the principal and the secretary of the school. But today, an FIR has been registered against the driver. We're talking about that driver who was driving rashly, apparently under the influence of alcohol. So the FIR states that he's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. Uh, in that accident that resulted in the death of uh, six kids we're talking about five boys and one girl each between 13 and 16 who lost their lives due to the negligence of this man who was behind the wheels he was uh, under the influence of alcohol he uh, in fact tried to jump out of the bus uh, by breaking a window he hit a tree and then the bus overturned 20 students in all were injured there were 37 students on board that school bus who were going to school on a day which was a designated holiday as far as india is concerned on the occasion of eid which has resulted in a uh, negligence uh, not just uh, by the school bus driver but also the authorities in school because the bus did not have a fitness certificate which is required for applying of these school buses uh, the fitness certificate had expired 6 years ago today a test will be conducted in 
order to know the fitness of that school bus that was flying on a national holiday, taking 37 school kids to school. और उसके अलावा इस स्कूल की प्रिंसिपल हैं दिखती और अन्य स्टाफ का जो मेन मेंबर है वो सियार सिंह जो इस सेक्टरी के अबाउट है स्कूल में और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनके अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने कर ली है और जो छः किसी में टोटल डेथ हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडी हमने उनके घर के हवाले बारिश आगे कर दी थी Gurpreet joining us on the phone line. Gurpreet, uh, FR has been registered against uh, the driver. From what we are picking up is that the students had informed the school principal about 50 minutes prior to the accident about the condition, complaining about the driver and for telling the principal that he was apparently drunk and yet no action was taken against the, princ uh, against the driver. The principal did not even make the driver stop the bus and uh, you know, ensure the safety of the students on board. Well, uh, yes, uh, the FIR has already been registered against the driver, and if we can go through the contents of the FIR, it is clearly written how many times the children, they had raised the alarm because the bus was being driven by the driver at a high speed. That is a violation of a motor vehicle act. He is not supposed to drive at a high speed. There is a speed limit which has been issued to uh, issued to all the schools that the school buses should not run beyond the speed limit. At the same time, we have seen in the FIR, a uh, culpable to homicide section has already been invoked in the FIR under section 304. That uh, it's, it's a clear-cut violation and it, it uh, violation of all rules and regulations and uh, 304 is equivalent to murder. So somewhere down the lane, uh, the way the driver did not stop the vehicle, it seems that uh, his intentions were not uh, very clear. And uh, even in the FIR, it is also mentioned he was drunk at the time when he was driving the vehicle. So uh, let's see, because uh, today again we have seen the top officer of our uh, government, they are looking into this uh, whole case to find out what was the reason behind this accident and why the school did not uh, follow all the guidelines which has been laid and uh, the right. main question which is being raised by uh, the local people they are saying the committee has already been set up but there is need to uh, look into this thing why there is no fitness certificate of these buses and how they are uh, the school authorities had allowed the bus driver to run unfit vehicle on the road Many questions being raised, including that fitness test that's coming up uh, today. Thank you so much, Gurpreet, for joining us. And Mahindragar, Deputy Commissioner, has written to the Haryana Board of School Education and the state government to terminate the school's affiliation for conducting classes on a gazetted holiday. And hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy scam, K. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea filed by the CBI in court over her arrest. The Delhi court had on the 5th of this month allowed the CBI to question K. Kavita inside Tihar jail, an order which she has gone on to challenge. The enforcement directorate had arrested K. Kavita from her Banjara Hills residence in uh, Hyderabad on the 15th of March. She has remained in judicial custody, but now the CBI is likely to seek her custody today. Now, let's uh, get you more on this. We have my colleague Uma joining us. Uh, Uma, take us through, you know, two different cases that are coming up. We're talking about a case in which uh, K. Kavita is demanding details uh, that, uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, that order of uh, the CBI is concerned. And also the CBI, on the other hand, is going to be asking for her custody. Now, she has been in judicial custody since the 15th of March. The CBI has managed to question her inside Tehar jail. But now that the CBI has arrested her, they also want her custody. Yes, indeed. The Enforcement Directorate has also had her in their custody for questioning and now we are expecting that the CBI will seek her custody so that they can question her further. What they have said is that there is some uh, critical evidence that has come up and they would like uh, to question her regarding that. Already after the court gave permission on the 5th of April is uh, when they gave permission for the CBI to question her. And on, the, on Saturday they had questioned her inside jail following which the CBI moved the application for her arrest. Counsel for Kavita has argued, saying that uh, since she is in judicial custody, the court permission would be required and that the registry must put on record either the application 
or the order for her arrest and the permission that was given uh, by the court and they they say that they have not been uh, shared any of those documents and that's why she's moving court but because yesterday was a court holiday and it was only a duty judge who was operating who said he did not have any records so therefore that case is to come up today at 10 am uh, the cbi custody plea also likely to come up today is what we are told what is uh, is showing is that uh, you know already we have manish sisodia suggest saying as well as vijay nair all of whom were arrested by both the ed as well as the cbi and uh, will kejriwal be next in line for cbi action that's a big question thank you Right, uh, Uma K. Kavita has been accused of being a key member in the South Group, which uh, the investigating agencies allege has paid the Amadi Party kickbacks amounting to over 100 crore rupees in return for a share of liquor licenses in the national capital. Thank you so much, Uma, for getting us all those details. Moving on now, amid the heat wave warning that has been issued by the IMD, the Prime Minister held a high-level meeting in order to review the preparedness when it comes to the pre-monsoon phase from April to June as the temperature is above normal. We are talking about maximum temperatures over most parts of the country which are in the range of 40 to 42 degrees. The Prime Minister also reviewed the preparedness of the health sector and according to the IMD, the temperatures have also crossed the 44 degree mark when it comes to Andhra Pradesh. But we are talking about temperatures in the range of 40 to 42 in the western part of Rajasthan, Gujarat as well as in Tamil Nadu. To get more on this, we have Mahesh Palavata joining joining us from SkyMet. Uh thank you very much uh, Mahesh for joining us this morning. Take us through the areas of concern in this pre-monsoon phase. Uh, the warning that has been sounded off by the Met office regarding temperatures being above normal. How bad is it going to get considering that the temperatures already crossed the 44 degree mark in Andhra Pradesh? Yes, uh, we have seen the temperatures are uh, increasing and uh, they are above 40 over many parts of Gujarat, South Rajasthan, Western parts of Rajasthan. and uh, earlier vidarbha marathwada chatisgarh and south mp were also witnessing uh, above normal temperature but now due to pre monsoon showers uh, temperature have subsided over those areas however rail sima andhra pradesh telangana south telangana tamil nadu all these areas are witnessing above normal temperature in the excess of 40 degree so we think that uh, temperatures will be under control over central and uh, northwest india until 15th of april because pre monsoon showers are anticipated over all these areas but after that the temperatures are going to soar again and uh, they will be uh, in the range of say 42 44 degree at many places leading to severe heat wave condition heat wave to severe heat wave conditions yeah. so uh, from what we are hearing is that uh, the national capital will touch 40 degrees and cross that 40 degree mark and that's expected by the middle of this month and we just days away from it uh, take us through when we talk about the intensity and the duration of the heat wave is that going to increase yes uh, heat, uh, intensity and duration of heat wave is going to increase after say uh, 15th of april 50 uh, because until 15th we anticipate uh, showers uh, the pre monsoon showers across uh, punjab haryana delhi up uh, rajasthan madhya pradesh vidarbha marathwada telangana and eastern parts of the country thereafter the temperature will start increasing and delhi may witness above normal temperature by uh, say uh, touching 40 degree uh, by 20th of uh, april and uh, uh, this is a uh, cause of concern because now uh, because, uh, the temperatures when uh, severe heat wave or continuous heat wave is there then it it, it adversely impact the health of uh, masses and uh, may in may is the hottest month uh, so we think that uh, the intensity and duration of heat wave across the country not not only northwest india uh, south peninsula and eastern parts of the country as well as central india uh, the intensity and duration will be much more in the month of may and the first half of june right uh, so uh, of course uh, you know we uh, the only solution to this is uh, the monsoon and uh, you know skymet has predicted that monsoon will be normal this time around and it's going to be to the tune of 102% uh, get us the areas uh, where monsoon is going to be good and the areas perhaps where monsoon will not be performing as uh, expected uh, so uh, because we are now uh, uh, in the early no condition and it will be devolving and by the uh, beginning of monsoon larina will start developing so Uh, we uh, we think that south peninsula and central parts of the country as uh, country as well as northwest india uh, will have decent rains our area of concern will be eastern parts of uh, bihar jharkhand uh, some parts of uh, north orissa and uh, 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 west bengal as well as northeast india so these areas may get less than normal rainfall and uh, some parts of western himalayas yes. right uh, thank you so much mahesh palavat for joining us with all those details
News from the South now and we turn our focus to the constituency of Virudhnagar where BJP is hoping to draw on star power when it comes to actor turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. <laughs> popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress left alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics since 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroot arithmetic to get past the post. He won this seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Khan. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Peter Raghav for NDTV. The triangular contest in Virudhunagar, Marika Tagore versus Radhika versus Vijay Prabhakar, all needs to be seen with. We will keep covering all the election news. Thank you so much, Veera Raghav, for getting us that special report. With that, sipping to a short break, back with a whole lot more. Q NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards and. NDTV 24-7 takes home News Channel of the Year Award. NDTV stands for trust.
प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी पावर कांग्रेस ने एक षड्यंत्र करा था The 2024 campaign hot side. Hey, Tarun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. कांग्रेस एमपी राहुल गांधी एड्रेस रैली इन राजस्थान ऑन थर्सडे वे ही कॉमेंटेड ऑन अ सेक्शन ऑफ द मीडिया राहुल गांधी सेड दैट फॉर पीपल ऑफ इंडिया द बिगेस्ट इश्यूज आर अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड इन्फ्लेशन समथिंग दैट द कांग्रेस हैज रेक्ट अप टाइम एंड अगेन बट फॉर सम सेक्शन ऑफ द मीडिया द बिगेस्ट इश्यू सीम्स टू बी द अंबानी स्वेडिंग हिंदुस्तान की जनता से अगर आप पूछें तो वो आपको बताएंगे पहले नंबर पर बेरोजगारी दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा And now, in a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative. We're talking about home voting, where voting facilities reach the voters at their doorstep for the disabled and the blind voters apart from the elderly. Take a look at this report. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above. as well as people with disabilities those registered for the facilities to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes many have voted after years welcoming the initiative voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes aage to sar gaya ache oi school di tam line dui ta sire okhono to sar barid do na sar balise माइंडसेट स्पार्क societal change to create a opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities in guwahati ratnadeep chaudhry for indi tv well uh, getting you all the action uh, from uh, the run up in the run up to the elections the prime minister will be campaigning for union minister jitendra singh he is seeking a re-election for the third consecutive time uh, for jammu and kashmir's udhampur lok sabha seat in the first phase of the elections the prime minister will be holding rallies also in rajasthan do remember he's been in rajasthan since yesterday uh, he will be in barmer at about 11:40 this morning followed by dosa Home Minister Amit Shah will address a public meeting at Saint Mary's School in Uttar Pradesh's Muradabad. That's going to be taking place today. And today, uh, Congress Leader Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister M K Stalin will be addressing an election rally, and that's going to be taking place in Coimbatore in support of the India Coalition candidate. Rahul Gandhi will be campaigning for the DMK candidate Raj Kumar, who has been pitted against BJP State President Anna Malai in the April 19th election to the Lok Sabha. And late AIA DMK Chief Jay Lalita is virtually seeking votes for her party's Madurai candidate. The candidate, Mr. This is we're talking about Dr. Saravanan, has used artificial intelligence technology to get Jay Lalita's voice creatively to seek votes for her. 
The Samajwadi Party has never won the seat considered a stronghold of the BJP leaders, Manika and Varun Gandhi. The BJP has, however, dropped Varun and instead fielded Jitin Prasad from the seat for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Pilibit is going to polls in the first phase on the 19th of this month. Let's get you some international news now. And in a hearing that took place on Thursday, FBI director has told a House panel that he's seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole level from the 7th of October. And he's urged Congress to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, better known as FISA, before it expires on the 19th of April. A bill that would do that has blocked Wednesday by conservative revolt, leaving its approval uncertain as the deadline approaches. Ray has gone on to say that the bill was critical in securing the nation and the failure to reauthorize it would put Americans at risk. And the first ever trilateral summit amongst uh, the United States, Japan and Philippines was held at the White House on Thursday with all the three leaders signaling that many more meetings would follow in the years to come. Long simmering tensions between China and its neighbours took centre stage on Thursday as leaders of the three countries gathered to push back on Beijing's stepped-up pressure on Manila in disputed South China Sea. And some big changes have been made when it comes to the family of those working in the United Kingdom. The visa rules have now changed. A minimum income is required for British citizens and the residents, including those of Indian heritage, wanting to sponsor their relatives on a family visa that's been increased by over 55% from Thursday. Starting now, for someone to be sponsored to come to the United Kingdom on a family visa, they have to have a minimum income. We're talking of GBP of 29,000. So we're talking about uh, that is an increase of 18,600 pounds by early next year. This will have increased two more times to match the skilled worker visa salary to a threshold of 38,700 pounds. And with that, we're slipping into a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. The car has been registered against the driver driving that bus uh, that caused the death of uh, six uh, school children and uh, 20 other students who were injured. Now he's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. Six kids died in between the age of 13 and 16. Five of them were boys, one was a girl. The school bus driver, the principal and the school secretary have all been arrested. A fitness test will be conducted on the bus uh, as the certificate had expired years ago. After CBI's arrest, K. Kavita moves a plea seeking details of a CBI application. The CBI are likely to seek uh, K. Kavita's custody. Do remember that the CBI had arrested K. Kavita yesterday. The Prime Minister shares a meeting to review the preparedness when it comes to the heatwave conditions augmenting healthcare facilities as well as spreading awareness. That those are the key issues during that meeting that took place as a heatwave warning has been sounded off by the Med Department in several states. The temperatures are going to be above normal between April to June. New rules come into force as far as the United Kingdom's uh, family visa is concerned. Now, people living there will need higher salary in order to sponsor families for a visa. We're talking about the income threshold that's increased by over 55%. A minimum salary of £29,000 is required to sponsor a family in the United Kingdom. You say celebrate the ordinary in your child celebrate their ordinariness or at least observe their ordinariness because once they are seen by you for who they are that's going to create a child with better self-worth and that unconsciously we are looking at the child that we want them to be or that we're trying to get them to be or the future that we see before for them and not who they are to celebrate the ordinary seems so radical. And why is it so hard and why is it so important, especially today? Well, it's so important because it's the fact that we are all ordinary. 
And I think that is the human plague right now, our refusal to accept that we're ordinary because we're all searching to be significant on social media, in our, in our worlds today. We're all basically screaming, see me, see me, see me, aren't I important, aren't I significant? Guess what? No, we're no more important than the next being. We are no more extraordinary. We are all ordinary. If we accept that, here's why it's important to accept that. Because then we can let go of the desire to control our children or ourselves to get external validation. And we can learn to settle into our own being and learn to be connected to our inner world, our inner sense of self and be okay in the enoughness of who we are. The moment we keep saying, oh, we're not you know, ordinary, but we have to be something very, very special, we are creating a dysfunctional relationship with ourselves and with the outside world because we're always going to think we're not, not good enough and use the outside world to get validation. So I always tell parents to tell their children, you can tell them that they are unique. We're all unique. You have long hair, I have short hair, you have green eyes, you have blue eyes, that's fine. But no one is more special. I think it is one of the most harmful things to say to a child that they are special. They should get special treatment because this leads to entitlement, but it mostly it leads to a sense of... In the Haryana horror, FR has been registered against the driver in the bus a tragedy. He's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. Well, Haryana horror has resulted in the death of six children, five boys and one girl aged between 13 and 16 as the school bus overturned. The driver, the principal and the school secretary have been arrested. A fitness test of the bus will be conducted today. After the ED, now the CBI is seeking the arrest of BRS leader K. Kavita. That uh, case will be coming up in court today. Now, after CBI's arrest, uh, K. Kavita has moved the plea. She's seeking details of the CBI plea as far as the order on record. She is demanding that uh, that case will be coming up in court as well. The Prime Minister chairs a meeting to review the preparedness as far as the heat wave conditions in the country are concerned. Augmenting healthcare capacity, spreading awareness being the key issue as far as that meeting is concerned as heat wave warning has been sounded off by the Met Office in several states in the pre-monsoon phase from April to June. As the political battle heats up, NDTV brings you a ground report from Virud Nagar, where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor-turned-politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP, Mr. Tigo. New rules uh, come into force as far as the United Kingdom's family visa policy is concerned. Higher salary threshold as far as, uh, you know, giving out those uh, visas to families of the ones working in the United Kingdom. So now the income threshold has increased by over 55%. We're talking about a minimum annual salary to the tune of uh, GBP 29,000 is the minimum requirement. Carnage at Wankade with Bumrah claiming a second 5-4 in uh, IPL. Ishan Kishan takes down RCB and Bangalore lose a battle of Hellions. Swings again. Hey, good morning. You're watching NDTV 24-7. I'm Divya Vadva. We have very tragic news uh, concerning the six children who have died in that uh, school bus accident that took place in Haryana. Now, the uh, bus driver has uh, been arrested. So has the principal and the secretary of the school. But today, an FR has been registered against the driver. We're talking about that driver who was driving rashly, apparently under the influence of alcohol. So the FR states that he's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. Uh, in that accident that resulted in the death of uh, six kids. We're talking about five boys and one girl, each between 13 and 16, who lost their lives due to the negligence of this man who was behind the wheels. He was uh, under the influence of alcohol. He, uh, in fact, tried to jump out of the bus uh, by breaking a window. He hit a tree 
and then the bus overturned. 20 students in all were injured. There were 37 students on board that school bus who were going to school on a day which was a designated holiday as far as India is concerned on the occasion of Eid, which has resulted in a negligence uh, not just by the school bus driver but also the authorities in school because the bus did not have a fitness certificate which is required for applying of these school buses. Uh, the fitness certificate had expired six years ago. Today a test will be conducted in order to know the fitness of that school bus that was applying on a national holiday taking 37 school kids to school. और उसके अलावा स्कूल की प्रिंसिपल हैं डिक्टी और अन्य स्टाफ का जो मेन मेंबर है वो सियार सिंह जो इस सेक्टर के अबाउट है स्कूल में और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनके अपनी रिस्पांसिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने करनी है और जो छह किसी टोटल बैठी हुई थी इसमें हमने उस का पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडी हमने उनके घर के हवाले वाइस के कर दी थी Gurpreet joining us on the phone line. Gurpreet, uh, FR has been registered against uh, the driver. From what we are picking up is that the students had informed the school principal about 50 minutes prior to the accident about the condition, complaining about the driver and for telling the principal that he was apparently drunk and yet no action was taken against the, princ uh, against the driver. The principal did not even make the driver stop the bus and uh, you know, ensure the safety of the students on board. Well, uh, yes, uh, the FIR has already been registered against the driver, and if we can go through the contents of the FIR, it is clearly written how many times the children, they had raised the alarm because the bus was being driven by the driver at a high speed. That is a violation of a motor vehicle act. He is not supposed to drive at a high speed. There is a speed limit which has been issued to uh, issued to all the schools that the school buses should not run beyond the speed limit. At the same time, we have seen in the FIR, a uh, culpable to homicide section has already been invoked in the FIR under section 304. That uh, it's, it's a clear-cut violation and it, it uh, violation of all rules and regulations and 304 is equivalent to murder. So somewhere down the lane, uh, the way the driver did not stop the vehicle, it seems that uh, his intentions were not uh, very clear. And uh, even in the FIR, it is also mentioned he was drunk at the time when he was driving the vehicle. So uh, let's see, because uh, today again we have seen the top officer of our uh, government, they are looking into this uh, whole case to find out what was the reason behind this accident and why the school did not uh, follow all the guidelines which has been laid and uh, the right. main question which is being raised by uh, the local people they are saying the committee has already been set up but there is need to uh, look into this thing why there is no fitness certificate of these buses and how they are uh, the school authorities had allowed the bus driver to run unfit vehicle on the road. Many questions being raised, including that fitness test that's coming up uh, today. Thank you so much, Gurpreet, for joining us. And Mahindragar, Deputy Commissioner, has written to the Haryana Board of School Education and the state government to terminate the school's affiliation for conducting classes on a gazetted holiday. And hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy scam, K. Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea filed by the CBI in court over her arrest. The Delhi court had on the 5th of this month allowed the CBI to question K. Kavita inside Tihar jail, an order which she has gone on to challenge. The enforcement directorate had arrested K. Kavita from her Banjara Hills residence in uh, Hyderabad on the 15th of March. She has remained in judicial custody, but now the CBI is likely to seek her custody today. Now, let's uh, get you more on this. We have my colleague Uma joining us. Uh, Uma, take us through, you know, two different cases that are coming up. We're talking about a case in which uh, K. Kavita is demanding details uh, that, uh, you know, uh, as far as uh, that order of uh, the CBI is concerned. And also the CBI, on the other hand, is going to be asking for her custody. Now, she has been in judicial custody since the 15th of March. The CBI has managed to question her inside Tehar jail. But now that the CBI has arrested her, they also want her custody. Yes, indeed. The Enforcement Directorate has also had her in their custody for questioning. And now we are expecting that the CBI will seek her custody 
so that they can question her further. What they have said is that there is some uh, critical evidence that has come up and they would like uh, to question her regarding that. Already after the court gave permission on the 5th of April is uh, when they gave permission for the CBI to question her. And on the, on Saturday, they had questioned her inside jail, following which the CBI moved the application for her arrest. Counsel for Kavita has argued, saying that uh, since she is in judicial custody, the court permission would be required and that the registry must put on record either the application or the order for her arrest and the permission that was given uh, by the court. And they, they say that they have not been uh, shared any of those documents and that's why she's moving court. But because yesterday was a court holiday and it was only a duty judge who was operating who said he did not have any records. So therefore, that case is to come up today at 10 a.m. Uh, the CBI custody plea also likely to come up today is what we are told. What this uh, is showing is that, uh, you know, already we have Manish Nisodia, Sajjah Singh, as well as Vijay Nair, all of whom were arrested by both the ED as well as the CBI. And uh, will Kejriwal be next in line for CBI action? That's a big question. Back to you. Right, uh, Uma K. Kavita has been accused of being a key member in the South group, which uh, the investigating agencies allege has paid the Amadi party kickbacks amounting to over 100 crore rupees in return for a share of liquor licenses in the national capital. Thank you so much, Uma, for getting us all those details. Moving on now, amid the heatwave warning that has been issued by the IMD, the Prime Minister held a high-level meeting in order to review the preparedness when it comes to the pre-monsoon phase from April to June as the temperature is above normal. We are talking about maximum temperatures over most parts of the country which are in the range of 40 to 42 degrees. The Prime Minister also reviewed the preparedness of the health sector and according to the IMD, the temperatures have also crossed the 44 degree mark when it comes to Andhra Pradesh. But we are talking about temperatures in the range of 40 to 42 in the western part of Rajasthan, Gujarat as well as in Tamil Nadu. To get more on this, we have Mahesh Palavata joining us from SkyMet. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mahesh, for joining us this morning. Take us through the areas of concern in this pre monsoon phase. Uh, the warning that has been sounded off by the Met Office regarding temperatures being above normal. How bad is it going to get, considering that the temperatures already crossed the 44 degree mark in Andhra Pradesh? Yes, uh, we have seen the temperatures are uh, increasing and uh, they are above 40 over many parts of Gujarat, South Rajasthan, Western parts of Rajasthan. Uh, and uh, earlier, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Chhattisgarh, and South MP were also witnessing uh, above normal temperature. But now, due to pre monsoon showers, uh, temperature have subsided over those areas. However, Rayal Sima, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, South Telangana, Tamil Nadu, all these areas are witnessing above normal temperature in the excess of 40 degrees. So, we think that uh, temperatures will be under control over central and uh, northwest India until 15th of April because pre monsoon showers are anticipated over all these areas. But after that, the temperatures are going to soar again and uh, they will be uh, in the range of, say, 42, 44 degrees at many places, leading to severe heat wave conditions, heat wave to severe heat wave conditions. Yeah. So, uh, from what we're hearing is that uh, the national capital will touch 40 degrees and cross that 40 degree mark and that's expected by the middle of this month and we're just days away from it. Uh, take us through when we talk about the intensity and the duration of the heat wave, is that going to increase? Yes, uh, he, uh, intensity and duration of heat wave is going to increase after say uh, 15th of April 50, uh, because until 15th we anticipate uh, showers, uh, the pre monsoon showers across uh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, UP, uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Telangana and eastern parts of the country. Thereafter the temperature will start increasing and Delhi may witness above normal temperature by uh, say uh, touching 40 degree uh, by 20th of uh, April. And uh, this is a uh, cause of concern because now uh, because, uh, the temperatures went uh, severe heat wave or continuous heat wave is there, then it, it, it adversely impacts the health of uh, masses. And uh, May in, May is the hottest month, uh, so we think that uh, the intensity and duration of heat wave across the country, not not only northwest India, uh, south Venezuela and the eastern parts of the country as well as central India, uh, the intensity and duration will be much more in the month of May and the first half of June. Right. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, you know, we uh, the only solution to this is uh, the monsoon. And, uh, you know, SkyMet has predicted that monsoon will be normal this time around and it's going to be to the tune of 102%. Uh, get us the areas uh, where monsoon is going to be good and the areas perhaps where monsoon will not be performing as uh, expected. 
सी दिव्या बिकॉज वी आर नाउ इन अर्ली नो कंडीशन एंड इट विल बी डिवॉल्विंग एंड बाय द बिगनिंग ऑफ मानसून लारीना विल स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग सो वी वी थिंक दैट साउथ पेनिसुला एंड सेंट्रल पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री एज कंट्री एज वेज एज नॉर्थ वेस्ट इंडिया विल हैव डिसेंट रेंज हाउ अर एरिया ऑफ कंसर्न विल बी ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ बिहार झारखंड सम पार्ट ऑफ नॉर्थ ओरिसा and uh, uh, west bengal as well as north east india so these areas may get less than normal rainfall in uh, some parts of western himalayas yeah. right uh, thank you so much mahesh palawat for joining us with all those details News from the south now, and we turn our focus to constituency of Virudhnagar, where BJP is hoping to draw on star power when it comes to actor-turned politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Marikam Tagore. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhnagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharad Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. Together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhnagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharad Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now that people definitely want a change, and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroots political equations and caste arithmetic, like anywhere else, play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhnagar. The two Dravidian parties, with their tested alliances, have been masters at that grassroots management, and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu, and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK. After the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J Jayalalitha, Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AIA DMK won the seat in that election. But in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there. Shops will be closed, and we will not. They will not have. We will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the Parliament, and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kam. These parts are a DMDK region of influence, and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one, and he is threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here, and even AIA DMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself. I think. Yeah. The battle for Virudhnagar is one for survival of the DMDK, one to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers, to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress, and one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together. Make Virudhnagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhnagar, Peter Agar for NDTV. The triangular contest in Virudhnagar: Marika Tagore versus Radhika versus Vijay Prabhakar. All needs to be seen. With we will keep covering all the election news. Thank you so much, Peter Agar, for getting us that special report. With that, sipping to a short break. Back with a whole lot more.
A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. वैसे अभी की डेट में आई एम श्योर वी हैव टर्स एंड टर्स ऑफ गैजेट्स जहाँ पे एटलीस्ट हमारे पास में मोबाइल फोन तो है ही एंड मोबाइल फोन से काफी लोग जो हैं वो कंटेंट क्रिएट भी कर रहे हैं स्पेशली फॉर इंस्टाग्राम और यूट्यूब यूड सी मेनी पीपल रिकॉर्डिंग देयर वीडियोस डूइंग सम कॉमेंट्री या वो अपने व्लॉग्स रिकॉर्ड करते हैं एंड फॉर दोज माइक्रोफोन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मतलब मोबाइल फोन का कैमरा है तो आपको सब कुछ अच्छे से रिकॉर्ड तो हो जाएगा बट the audio is also very important now while we have multiple different kinds of microphones aap sab content creators ko ek cheez ka aur dhyan rakhna chahiye which is the pickup pattern of a particular microphone because alag alag types ke microphone milte hain for all different kinds of usage ek hota hai cardioid microphone jahan pe द फ्रंट ऑफ द माइक इज वेयर इट्स मोस्ट सेंसिटिव और ये बैक और साइड्स को ब्लॉक कर देता है सो दैट अगर आप कहीं शोर वाले एरिया में हैं द माइक स्टिल गो न फोकस और वॉट यू आर सेंग जो आपके आस पास का शोर है वो बहुत कम कैप्चर होगा अगर हम एक स्टेप और आगे जाएंगे तो वॉट वी हैव इज अ माइक्रोफोन विद अ पिकअप पैटर्न ऑफ सुपर कार्डोइड जहां पे एकदम नैरो पिकअप पैटर्न बन जाता है सो so दैट आपकी जो आवाज है योर वॉइस ओवर योर कॉमेंट्री यू नो कुड बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग पॉडकास्ट जहां पे जो आप बोलते हैं वो एकदम प्रिसाइजली कैप्चर होता है लेकिन अगर आसपास कुछ शोर शराबा है वो एकदम अट्यूनेट हो जाता है और आपको कोई ज्यादा आवाज नहीं आती है But then sometimes as content creators we would want to capture these ambient uh, sounds humko batana hota hai ki aas paas kya halchal hai how exactly is the environment aur uske liye you can use a microphone jahan pe the pickup pattern is omnidirectional which simply means ki charo taraf ki jo bhi awaze hain microphone sabhi ko capture karne wala hai equally so mic might look like a very basic uh, device Welcome back uh, Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally in Rajasthan on Thursday where he commented on a section of the media Rahul Gandhi said that for people of India the biggest issues are unemployment and inflation something that the Congress has raked up time and again but for some section of the media the biggest issue seems to be the Ambani wedding Hindustan ke janta se agar aap puche to wo aapko batayenge pehle number par berozgari दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा And now, in a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative. We're talking about home voting, where voting facilities reach the voters at their doorstep for the disabled and the blind voters apart from the elderly. Take a look at this report. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above. as well as people with disabilities those registered for the facilities to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes many have voted after years welcoming the initiative voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes age to sar gaya che oi school di tam line dui ta sire okono to sar bari do na sar bali se मीनवाइल समर्थ एंड एन डी टीज इनिशिएटिव 
in partnership with Hyundai, which is launched as a movement to create a change in mindset and spark societal change to create an opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities. In Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Well, uh, getting you all the action uh, from uh, the run-up. In the run-up to the elections, the Prime Minister will be campaigning for Union Minister Jitendra Singh. He is seeking a re-election for the third consecutive time uh, for Jammu and Kashmir's Udhampur Lok Sabha seat in the first phase of the elections. The Prime Minister will be holding rallies also in Rajasthan. Do remember he's been in Rajasthan since yesterday. Uh, he will be in Barmer at about 11.40 this morning, followed by Dosa. Home Minister Amit Shah will address a public meeting at St. Mary's School in Uttar Pradesh's Muradabad that's going to be taking place today. And today, uh, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister MK Stalin will be addressing an election rally and that's going to be taking place in Coimbatore in support of the India Coalition candidate. Rahul Gandhi will be campaigning for the DMK candidate Raj Kumar, who has been pitted against BJP State President Anamalai in the April 19th election to the Lok Sabha. And late AIA DMK Chief Jay Lalita is virtually seeking votes for her party's Madurai candidate. The candidate, Mr. This is we're talking about Dr. Saravanan, has used artificial intelligence technology to get Jay Lalita's voice creatively to seek votes for her. The Samajwadi Party has never won the seat, considered a stronghold of the BJP leaders, Manika and Varun Gandhi. The BJP has, however, dropped Varun and instead fielded Jitin Prasad from the seat for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Pilibit is going to polls in the first phase on the 19th of this month. Let's get you some international news now. And in a hearing that took place on Thursday, FBI director has told a House panel that he's seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole level from the 7th of October. And he's urged Congress to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, better known as FISA, before it expires on the 19th of April. A bill that would do that has blocked Wednesday by a conservative revolt, leaving its approval uncertain as the deadline approaches. Ray has gone on to say that the bill was critical in securing the nation and the failure to reauthorize it would put Americans at risk. And the first ever trilateral summit amongst uh, the United States, Japan and Philippines was held at the White House on Thursday with all the three leaders signaling that many more meetings would follow in the years to come. Long simmering tensions between China and its neighbours took centre stage on Thursday as leaders of the three countries gathered to push back on Beijing's stepped up pressure on Manila in disputed South China Sea. And some big changes have been made when it comes to the family of those working in the United Kingdom. The visa rules have now changed. A minimum income is required for British citizens and the residents, including those of Indian heritage, wanting to sponsor their relatives on a family visa. That's been increased by over 55% from Thursday. Starting now, for someone to be sponsored to come to the United Kingdom on a family visa, they have to have a minimum income. We're talking of GBP of 29,000. So we're talking about uh, that is an increase of 18,600 pounds by early next year. This will have increased two more times to match the skilled worker visa salary to a threshold of 38,700 pounds. And with that, we're saving into a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society and ourselves.
everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swast India, One World Hygiene. का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर वैसे टेलीस्कोप से याद आया डिड यू नो द जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप ये एक टेलीस्कोप तो है एट द सेम टाइम इट आल्सो एक्ट्स लाइक अ टाइम मशीन आपको लग रहा होगा टेलीस्कोप टाइम मशीन का आपस में लिंक क्या है फ्रेंड्स लिंक इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज आपको पता है लाइट ट्रेवल्स एट अ सर्टेन स्पीड यू नो वॉट द स्पीड ऑफ लाइट रफली थ्री लैख किलोमीटर्स पर सेकेंड अप्रोक्सीमेटली मतलब सनलाइट जब सूरज से निकल के अर्थ तक पहुंचती है इट टेक्स अप्रोक्सीमेटली एट मिनट्स फॉर दैट नाउ दस जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप जो कि हमको चीजें दिखाता है दूर दूर के डिस्टेंट स्टार्स एंड गैलेक्सीज ये जो हमको इमेजेस दिखाता है दीज आर नॉट रियल टाइम बिकॉज लाइट कमिंग फ्रॉम दीज फार अवे गैलेक्सीज इनको काफी टाइम लगता है उस टेलीस्कोप तक पहुंचने में सो असेंशली वॉट वी आर सींग इज डेटा फ्रॉम बिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स अगो मतलब ये रोज जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप है ये हमको दिखा सकता है बहुत बिगनिंग वाली इमेजेस या डिटेल्स ऑफ ऑल दीज गैलेक्सीज इन स्टार सो जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट द टेलीस्कोप कैन ऑल्सो एक्ट लाइक अ टाइम मशीन The Haryana horror FIR has been registered against the driver in a bus a tragedy. He's been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. A four-member government-appointed panel will be probing that case in which six students have died, aged between 13 and 16, on board a school bus while going to school on a public holiday. But the school continued to run. Now, the bus driver, the principal, and the school secretary have been arrested. A fitness test will be conducted on the school bus today. After ED, the CBI arrests uh, BRS leader K. Kavita, and after CBI's arrest, K. Kavita moves a plea seeking details of CBI uh, as far as that plea is concerned. An order on record asking details of that order. The CBI is likely to seek her custody. And she, do remember, she has remained in judicial custody since her arrest on the 15th of March. Prime Minister chairs a meet to review the preparedness when it comes to the heat wave conditions, augmenting healthcare capacity as well as spreading awareness. Those are the key focus during that meeting that took place in order to take stock of the situation. Do remember, heat wave warnings have been sounded off by the Met Office in several states, saying that the temperature will be above normal between April to June. As the political battle heats up, NDTV brings you a ground report from Virudhu Nagar, where BJP is hoping uh, to draw on the star power of actor and politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tego. New rules come into effect when it comes to uh, sponsoring a family in the United Kingdom. Higher salary will be required to get your family a visa in the United Kingdom. We're talking about an increase by over 55 percent. A minimum salary is uh, that is required is 29,000 pounds. That is the minimum required to sponsor your family to get a visa in the United Kingdom. Virat Kohli backs Hardik Pandya against Boeing. The Mumbai Indian skipper was booed and received constant flak from fans in the Barclays Stadium. It was Virat Kohli reminding fans that he was part of the Indian team. You're watching NTV 24/7. I'm Divya Bhatia. We have breaking news coming in of an IIT uh, student uh, in Guwahati whose body was found hanging in the hostel. A suicide note has been found, and the forensic analysis will be done. The police uh, sources are saying that the family has now demanded a probe as far as that suicide and other angles are concerned. So that body of a first-year student of the IIT Guwahati was found uh, yesterday, uh, last night, and uh, this is the cause as far as that death is concerned is being probed. Uh, he was a 20-year-old beat. 
Tech student from Bihar whose body was found on Wednesday night inside his hostel room. We have uh, Ratnadeep uh, joining us to get us more on this. Ratnadeep, uh, take us through the details of what really happened. I mean, from what we are hearing is uh, that uh, the body was found in the hostel room, but the roommate of the deceased was not around. Uh, yeah, in fact, what we are picking up from uh, uh, the police sources is that uh, this uh, body was found on Wednesday night. Uh, it, it was found in a hanging position. That's what uh, police sources are telling us. And the IIT Guwahati authorities, after that, uh, informed the police. Uh, the police uh, recovered the body. It was. It has been sent for postmortem. The family members were informed. The family members also had arrived yesterday. And uh, police has registered a, a case of unnatural death. Uh, the probe is on. A suicide note has been found. However, police has not divulged the details of the post suicide note. Uh, in fact, what we are picking up from police sources is that since the uh, family members have demanded a, a, a thorough investigation. Therefore, a forensic analysis of the suicide note will also be uh, done. Uh, that's what police sources are telling us. Uh, the police is waiting for the autopsy rep report to as to ascertain the cause of the death. Uh, at this moment, uh, police is treating it as a case of a unnatural death and therefore a case of a suspected suicide where other angles are also being probed. Now, remember, IIT Guwahati remained silent for 20, almost 24 hours on this, uh, only issuing a statement yesterday late in the evening, where the IIT Guwahati says that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that right. uh, the student was found dead, uh, found hanging, and then uh, necessary support uh, was uh, given to the police. Police is investigating the circumstances uh, surrounding the sur 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 surrounding uh, the sur circumstances of the unfortunate in incident, and the IIT Guwahati in that statement also requests that keeping the privacy of the students and sensitive sensitivity of, of the incident in consideration, the media is requested to maintain discretion while reporting on this incident. While IIT Guwahati is asking media to uh, maintain discretion, IIT Guwahati itself remained silent on this inc incident for hours until the media asked IIT Guwahati uh, for details on this. So therefore, the IIT right. Guwahati, which has been uh, in news for wrong reasons, once, once again, uh, this unfortunate incident has taken place. Remember, uh, on, on recently, an IIT Guwahati student has been arrested by Assam SPF right. after he declared that he uh, has uh, intention to join the ISIS. And only in January this year, uh, right. outside the IIT campus, one student uh, was, uh, you know, uh, 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 died after uh, partying right. on the uh, New, Year, New Year Eve. So therefore, there uh, should be some concerns about the way the students are being managed at the IIT Guwahati campus. Many questions being raised, uh, especially this year with uh, IIT uh, Guwahati making news for all the wrong reasons. Moving on now, uh, in the Haryana horror, FR has been uh, filed against the driver in the bus tragedy that uh, led uh, to six uh, students dying. We're talking about the age group of 13 to 16. Five boys and a girl have died in that mishap that took place in uh, Haryana yesterday. Uh, now, uh, the driver has been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. A four-member government-appointed panel will be probing uh, that case. So, uh, you know, we do know that uh, 20 other children were uh, injured uh, during during uh, that accident that took place, uh, the driver was under the influence of alcohol. And uh, of course, it is uh, the principal and the secretary of the school who have also been arrested along with the school driver. We we have Gurpreet uh, joining us to get us more on this. Uh, Gurpreet, uh, FR has been filed against the driver. He's been arrested, so has the principal and the secretary. Take us through uh, the cases that have been filed against him. Well, uh, we have seen in the preliminary investigation, police have already revealed multiple violations by the school authorities. The first thing which has come up, uh, there was no fitness certificate which was uh, issued by the transport department and that could be one of the reasons the, the district transport officer has already been put under suspension because he was not able to discharge his duty and uh, 
if uh, he has acted on these uh, buses who are not fit and uh, they don't have the certificate uh, to run on the roads uh, the life of uh, six students could have been saved and that could be one of the major reason why the state government has taken action against the local transport officer at the same time we have seen a panel has already been set up to inquire into all these details and at the same time the police say in the preliminary investigation and specifically in the fir they, he has the the police have already mentioned uh, the driver was drunk and so many times uh, the students raised the alarm they were saying uh, the, the bus uh, could be stopped there but despite their alarms the driver was uh, running the bus at a very high speed and finally uh, uh, this bus was overturned which has already snuffed the life of a six school student uh, the today, life short uh, of uh, uh, you know teenagers uh, gurpreet uh, you know from what we are picking up is that uh, the students had also informed their parents as well as the principal as to the condition in which uh, the driver was driving he was speeding he was drunk and yet the principal took no action did not take cognizance of the situation and let uh, the driver continue driving the bus at the speed that he was in the state that he was under the influence of alcohol well uh, yes of course uh, we uh, we had a word with the top police officer uh, they say the uh, the person who had called was to the school uh, his statement is going to be recorded uh, in the uh, in the court so that there should be a substantial evidence against the school authority and uh, they should be accountable and responsible for the deaths of uh, six school students the main thing uh, the police say uh, it seems that uh, there are multiple buses uh, which are not having that uh, fitness certificate and how and what under what pressure this driver was running this uh, bus right. uh, and at the same time if we can talk about the fir one section 120b has already been invoked into the criminal conspiracy to find out what the role of other management people in whole case so let's wait for the investigation uh, today the people who have been arrested they will be produced before the court and uh, most probably they will ask for the police remand so that investigation could be taken place in a proper way and they will be able to find the root cause of this accident and uh, the life of for six school students which has already been lost in this accident there is need to go into detail probe to find out what are the right. more reasons and there is need to run a campaign against the school buses in all over haryana right. so that this fitter certificate should be given and if uh, they are liable uh, and uh, they should be booked immediately right uh, in fact uh, mahendra gar uh, deputy commissioner has also written to the haryana board of school education as well as the state government to terminate the school's affiliation for conducting classes on a holiday thank you so much gurpreet for joining us with those details now as after news coming in of cbi arresting brs leader k kavita in the delhi liquor policy scam k kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea filed by the cbi in court over her arrest the delhi court had on the 5th of this month of allowed the cbi to question K Kavita inside the hard jail an order which she had challenged the enforcement director had arrested K Kavita uh, from her residence in Hyderabad on the 15th of last month she has remained in judicial custody since but now the CBI is likely to seek her custody and that case is going to be coming up in court today K Kavita has been accused of being a key member in the south group which the investigative agencies allege paid the aam aadmi party kickbacks amounting to over 100 crore in return for a share of the liquor licenses in the national capital So to get more on this, we have my colleague Uma joining us. Uh, Uma, take us through uh, you know the different cases that are coming up in court today, and what time are we expecting that to happen? So Kavita had moved court yesterday, saying that the registry must put on record either the uh, application or the order for the CBI arrest, because even though her husband was informed of the CBI arrest, their argument is that unless the court permission and order is presented to them and they are given cognizance of it, this should not have happened. But because yesterday was a court holiday, the duty duty judge said that this would come up or will be put up in court for hearing at 10 a.m. itself. We are also expecting that after the CBI, in fact, announced. so they have arrested her uh, after having questioned her and sought the permission of the court they are likely to move for custody and what we understand is that if she if the custody is indeed granted to the cbi then she would be moved uh, from the tihar jail to the cbi headquarters
Kavita was arrested on March 15. That was under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act and that was by the Enforcement Directorate. And now the arrest has come by the CBI under multiple sections, criminal conspiracy, falsification of accounts, as well as an attempt to bribe a public servant. These are the sections under which uh, she is now being arrested by the CBI. You would recall that uh, Kavita is uh, uh, alleged to be part of a South group that is said to have paid 100 crore rupees in bribe to some members of the AAP uh, through a person called Mr. Vijay Nair, uh, who is said to be acting on behalf of the Delhi Chief Minister. And uh, Vijay Nair, as well as uh, Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh, all three of them were in fact arrested uh, by the CBI as well as for the ED. Of course, Mr. Sanjay Singh is now out on bail. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal, who is under arrest, has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. The three other people who were said to be part of the same South group, uh, whether it is Magunta Srinivas Reddy and his son Raghava Reddy, they were part of the YSRCP. He was in fact a YSRCP MP. He has moved to the TDP, but he has turned an approver and so has uh, Sharath Reddy, who is a director of Arabindo Pharma. And uh, he has also turned approver in this particular case. And Kavita's own argument has been that uh, all this case is based on the statements of others and not on a trail of evidence. And she, in fact, has told the court that she believes that she has been made a victim. Back to you. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Uma, for getting us all those details. We will come, keep coming back to you to track that story. Now, amid the heatwave warning issued by the Met Office, the Prime Minister held a high-level meeting. He reviewed the preparedness for the period between April to June as the temperature is above normal. Maximum temperatures over most parts of the country are in the range of 40 to 42 degrees. The Prime Minister also reviewed preparedness of health sector. According to the Met Office, that the temperatures are going to be above normal during uh, this uh, pre-monsoon phase uh, starting from this month going over the way to June. We are talking about West Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu which have recorded temperatures above the 40 degree mark and areas of Andhra Pradesh where the temperature has already crossed 44. Now uh, we have uh, Mahesh Palawat uh, from uh, SkyMet uh, joining us to get us more on this. Uh, Mahesh, uh, uh, you know the Prime Minister is taking stock of the heatwave situation which highlights the warnings that have been sounded off by the Met Department regarding heatwave and temperature. So it is going to be a brutal summer at that. Take us to the areas of concern and how bad is it going to get? We have seen the temperatures are uh, increasing and uh, they are above 40 over many parts of Gujarat, South Rajasthan, Western parts of Rajasthan. Uh, and uh, earlier, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Chhattisgarh and South MP were also witnessing uh, above normal temperature. But now, due to pre-monsoon showers, uh, temperature have subsided over those areas. However, Rayal Sima, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, South Telangana, Tamil Nadu, all these areas are witnessing above normal temperature in the excess of 40 degrees. So, we think that uh, temperatures will be under control over central and uh, northwest India until 15th of April because pre-monsoon showers are anticipated over all these areas. But after that, the temperatures are going to soar again and uh, they will be uh, in the range of, say, 42, 44 degrees at many places leading to severe heat wave condition, heat wave to severe heat wave condition. Uh, intensity and duration of heat wave is going to increase after, say, uh, 15th of April, 50, uh, because until 15th, uh, we anticipate uh, showers, uh, the pre monsoon showers across uh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, UP, uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Telangana, and eastern parts of the country. Thereafter, the temperature will start increasing, and Delhi may witness above normal temperature by, uh, say, uh, touching 40 degrees uh, by 20th of uh, April. And uh, this is a uh, cause of concern because now uh, because, uh, the temperatures went uh, severe heat wave or continuous heat wave is there, then it, it, it adversely impacts the health of uh, masses. And uh, May is, May is the hottest month, uh, so we think that uh, the intensity and duration of heat wave across the country, not not only northwest India, uh, south Peninsula and the eastern parts of the country as well as central India. Uh, the intensity and duration will be much more in the month of May and the first half of June. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Mahesh Palavat of SkyMet uh, for joining us and breaking it down for us. It's going to be a very hot summer. Temperatures will be above normal. Moving on to more news. And news coming in from South India, we can turn our focus to the constituency of Virudunagar, where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power of actor-turned-politician Radhika to take on Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. My colleague Veera Raghav gets us this report. Popular actor and a powerful name in television production, 
Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics is to 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want a change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic like anywhere else play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will, not, they will, not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Khan. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Veera Raghav for NDTV. Thank you, uh, Veera, for getting us that uh, ground report. With that, we're slipping into a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards and. NDTV 24-7 takes home News Channel of the Year Award. NDTV stands for trust.
biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are... Break news uh, coming in of a boy in Ghaziabad who's been found dead. He has fallen uh, from uh, the society building. He was a class 11 student who's been found dead in the society building. The police in Ghaziabad are probing a suicide angle as well as other angles and the investigation is on. So this is an 11th class student who has been found dead in the society. He has fallen from the building, the high rise in Ghaziabad. But the uh, exact cause of death is unknown yet. But the investigation is on. The police are saying that they are investigating the angle of a suicide as well as other angles are being probed. So it's very initial at the moment. Breaking news coming in of the student who has died. He is, has been found dead in a society building in Ghaziabad. Uh, well, uh, the cause of a death seems to be uh, that he has fallen uh, from a high-rise building in Ghaziabad. But was it a suicide or is there another angle involved? Well, the police are at the moment investigating. We have uh, my colleague uh, uh, joining us to get us more on this. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, this uh, breaking news coming in, Mukesh, uh, take us through uh, uh, you know the details that you have for us. Uh, all we know at this point in time is that he was 11th class student. What really happened? What time did this incident take place? Uh, uh, the uh, ATS Advantage Society hai. वहां पर नव खन्ना नाम का एक छात्र था जो कि 11th में पढ़ता था वो अपने दोस्त के घर गया था और 24वें फ्लोर पर दोनों फोटोग्राफी कर रहे थे फोटोग्राफी करने के बाद उसने कहा कि वो अभी नीचे से आ रहा है लेकिन थोड़ी ही देर में उसी बिल्डिंग के 21वें फ्लोर से वो नीचे गिर गया और उसके बाद उसकी मौत हो गई इसके बाद सोसाइटी के लोगों ने पुलिस को कॉल किया पुलिस मौके पर पहुंची पुलिस ने नव खन्ना के पास से एक सुसाइड नोट बरामद किया है हालांकि उस नोट में क्या लिखा है अभी तक साफ नहीं है लेकिन पुलिस का कहना यह है कि वो सुसाइड के अलावा कुछ और एंगल से इस पूरे मामले की जांच कर रही है कि आखिर वो छात्र कैसे गिरा अपने आप गिरा या तो गिराया गया तो इसको लेकर अभी जांच चल रही है लेकिन जो सुसाइड नोट मिला है उसमें क्या कुछ कंटेंट है उसको भी देखा जा रहा है तो कुल मिलाकर अभी तक ये साफ नहीं है कि जो नव खन्ना है वो अपने आप गिरा या तो गिराया गया उसको लेकर पुलिस जांच कर रही है लेकिन शुरुआती जांच में ऐसा लगता है कि ये मामला सुसाइड का हो सकता है क्योंकि जो छात्र नव खन्ना है उसके पास सुसाइड नोट मिला है so a suicide note has been found on this 11th class student who's been found dead in a society building. Uh, he has, uh, uh, you know, the cause of a death is yet being, uh, you know, probed and investigated by the police uh, there. He has uh, died uh, from what we know is that uh, it is being probed as to what really caused the death of this 11th class student. In other news, uh, Defence Minister Rajna Singh has hit back at the Congress for calling the BJP leaders dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency of 1975 and in an interview, Rajna Singh has gone on to say that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to a brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Listen in. Brain hemorrhage was So, 27 days hospital, but I could not come to it. I didn't have a parole, I didn't have a parole. I didn't have a मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं while uh, Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally in Rajasthan on Thursday where he commented on a section of media. Rahul Gandhi went on to say that for people of India, their biggest issues are unemployment and inflation, something that the Congress party has been raking up time and again. But for a section of the media, the busy, biggest issue seems to be the Ambani's wedding. Listening. हिंदुस्तान की जनता से अगर आप पूछें तो वो आपको बताएंगे पहले नंबर पर बेरोजगारी दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा 
Well, Rahul Gandhi there uh, talking about how a section of the media is only focusing and has been focusing on that wedding of the Ambani's. With that, we're slipping into a short break. Back with a whole lot more. Stay with us. Can you give us a few, like say three of your strongest takeaways of not to do's or to do's because it's a map you have to parenting you have to, it's a slow process but the three things one has to get one can keep in mind even today in this very stress pressure driven world goal driven world for our kids well I think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children understand who their children are and understand that every goal or every solution out there will not be tailor-made for your child. You have to attune to each child's essence and connect to who to that connect to who that child is. The second takeaway is connect before you correct. First try to understand what's going on within the child. Their behavior is only on the surface, but underneath the behavior is a need that the child has that we have to help the child discover and solve. And number three is every reaction to your child is more about you than it is about your child. So if you want to really do this as consciously as possible, you have to examine your own reactions and understand where they are coming from. And, and number four, the traditional ways of disciplining our children only create more harm. The main concern is this constant hunger for approval and significance from the outside world. Uh, Dr. Shafali, I had the chance to hear you on Super Soul Sunday talking to Oprah Winfrey. This is, um, uh, she loves your work and the world gets to hear more about it through your public speaking and through all of this um, recognition that the work and your ethos is getting. Tell me about how you came to create this map of parenting and your journey. Oh. Staying with election news, Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to address an election rally at the Modi Stadium in Udhampur today. He'll be campaigning for Union Minister Chitendra Singh. Uh, he is seeking a re-election for the third consecutive time when it comes to Jammu and Kashmir's Udhampur seat in the first phase of the elections. The Prime Minister will also be holding election rallies in Barmer, in Rajasthan and in Dosa. Home Minister Amit Shah will address a public meeting and that's going to be taking place at the St. Mary School in Uttar Pradesh's Muradabad today. And Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister M.K. Stalin will be addressing an election rally and that's going to be taking place in Coimbatore in support of the India Coalition candidate. We're talking about Rahul Gandhi campaigning for the DMK candidate Raj Kumar who's been pitted against BGP State President Anamalai on the 19th of April for the Lok Sabha. And late AIA DMK Chief Jay Lalita is where she's seeking votes for her party's Madurai candidate. The candidate, uh, Dr. Saravanan, has used artificial intelligence technology to get Jay Lalita's voice creatively to seek votes. The Samajwadi party has never won the seat considered a stronghold of the BJP leaders, Manika Gandhi and Varun Gandhi. But the BJP has, however, dropped Varun Gandhi this time around and fielded Jitin Prasad from the seat for the upcoming Lok Sabha election. So, Philippi is going to polls in the first phase on the 19th of this month. Big blow to the BJP in the Maharashtra. Uh, in fact, uh, when we talk about the state of Maharashtra, just before Lok Sabha elections, BJP leader uh, Moite uh, Patel has resigned from the party and uh, BJP has made Ranjit Singh Nibalkar its candidate from uh, the Lok Sabha constituency and angered by this, uh, the Patel has submitted his resignation to the BJP and after resigning, he also met with Sharad Pawar in Pune. An Association for Democratic Reforms has released uh, data for the richest and the poorest candidates in the fray in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. And as for that data, Kamal Nath San, Nakul Nath, is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crore rupees. The data also shows that 450 of the 1,600 candidates are crore parties, while 10 candidates have zero assets.
Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIA DMK candidate from Erode Ashok Kumar, 662 crore rupees. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga, Devanathan Yadav, 304 crore rupees. These are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Analysis by the NGO ADR or Election Watch of the affidavit submitted by 16 18 candidates has revealed that 450, that is around 28%, are Karorpatis. Nakul Nath, the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chindwara, Madhya Pradesh, is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erod in Tamil Nadu, Ashok Kumar, is the second richest candidate. And the BJP candidate from Sivaganga in Tamil Nadu, Devnathan Yadav T, is the third richest in the fray in phase one. जी बिल्कुल ये तो एडीआर का हमेशा से मुद्दा रहा है कि जो धनबल और बहुबल को अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एमपीज उनकी एसेट्स 2 करोड़ से ऊपर थी Interestingly, 10 candidates in the fray in the first phase have declared their assets as zero. A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Pondraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Karthik Gendlaji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे में सिर्फ 0.03 परसेंट चांसेस परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट of 4 crore and 51 lakh. In the first phase, the highest number of rich candidates are in Tamil Nadu. AIDMK has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore, while 22 candidates fielded by DMK have declared average assets worth around 31 crore. Clearly, the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these Lok Sabha elections. In Delhi with Manoj Thakur, Himanshu Shekhar for NDTV. Thank you so much, Himanshu, for getting us uh, that report. Now, in a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in the western part of Tripura, the West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency, has launched a pioneering initiative. They're talking about home voting, where voting facilities will reach the voters at their doorstep for the disabled, the blind voters, and also for the elderly. Let's take a look at this report with my colleague, Ratadeep. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above, as well as people with disabilities, those registered for the facilities, to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes. Many have voted after years. Welcoming the initiative, voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes. आगे तो सर गया जो स्कूल दी तम लाइन दे रहे थे वो कौन तो सर बारिद दो ने सर बाली से ये प्रथम दिन लाइन बारिद है प्रथम दिन सी सर क्यों शो विद आपने हमार सो के शो में शो सर आज तो बारिद आया जो तो बूटा दी से तो बूढ़े दिन तो शो विद तो ना वो कौन जो प्रथम वो से देख लाम ये तो सुन दो � to create a change in mindset and spark societal change to create an opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities. In Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV.
Welcome to some international news. Uh, news coming in from the United States. In a hearing on Thursday, the FBI director, Christopher Wray, has gone on to tell a House panel that he's seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole new level after the 7th of October last year. He urged Congress to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act before it expires on the 19th of this month. A bill that would do that was blocked as far as Wednesday by a conservative revolt, leaving its approval uncertain as the deadline approaches. Ray has gone on to say that the bill was critical in securing the nation and the failure to reauthorize it would put Americans at risk. The first ever trilateral uh, summit, um, uh, this is amongst uh, the United States, Japan and Philippines was held at the White House on Thursday with all the three leaders signaling that many more meetings would follow in the years ahead. Now, long simmering tensions between China and its neighbors took center stage as far as that meeting of the leaders of the three countries that had gathered to push back on Beijing's stepped-up pressure on Manila in the disputed South China Sea. Some big changes have been made to the United King family visa rules. We're talking about changes made if you need to sponsor your family if you're working in the United Kingdom. A minimum income required for the British citizens and residents, including those of Indian heritage, wanting to sponsor their relatives on a family visa has now increased by over 55% as of Thursday. So someone who needs to sponsor their family to come to the United King Kingdom on a family visa will now need a minimum income of £29,000, up from £18,600 earlier. By early next year, 2025, we're talking about this will have increased two more times to match the skilled worker visa salary threshold of 38,700 per year. And with that, we're sitting in a short break, but on the other side, Rika will be here to get you the very latest from IPL and a lot more. Stay with us. Prime Minister Modi power. Congress ne Sadhendra Karata. The 2024 campaign hot side. Late Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24-7. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7. talking but very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front the biggest carnival of democracy india's general election prime minister modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick the opposition is trying to mount a united challenge and the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn... Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us.
you basically say to parents, stop chasing happiness and success. Dinesh Kartik provided the late inning spark that asked to be desperately needed. DK stepped up with a blistering cameo of 53 runs of just 23 balls, taking his team to 196 runs. 197 may have looked like a tall chase, but Rohit Sharma and Ishan Kishan had planned the takedown of RCB. The Wankhede Stadium witnessed Rohit and Ishan unleash an offensive masterclass. Kishan smashed his 16th IPL 50 and a blistering 72 runs in the power play. The duo had a 101 run opening stand. Surya Kumar Yadav exploded onto the scene with Rohit Sharma and boundaries rained down as they tore apart the RCB bowling attack. The carnage continued, but this time the Mumbai Indians were the ones wielding the axe. Striking at 273, Surya Kumar Yadav scored 52 of 19 balls. Mumbai's batting firepower ultimately proved too strong as they chased down the target comfortably in 15.3 overs, winning by seven wickets. It was a little sticky for the first 10 overs and then quickly observed that and trying to use it to my advantage. One of those days where all of those things worked in my favour, all the catches went to hand. So very happy with the contribution. It's anyways very harsh on the bowler, so you have to have all kinds of skills. So this is what I train for, that come this situation, I should have different options. I should not be a one-trick pony or I should just not rely on my yorker. Well, I'm joined at this hour by two fans of two teams, Naresh Mansukhani of the Mumbai team and uh, Somi De Sarkar of uh, Bang Royal Challengers Bangalore. We call it Bangaluru these days. There were 550 plus scores uh, in Vankhere, including a 17 ball 50 by Surya Kumar Yadav. Yet we are talking about one man, Jaspreet Bumrah. Um, I, I can see a smiling Naresh. He, he uh, claimed, Bumrah, Bumrah claimed his second uh, IPL Pfeiffer. Would you say it's about the lengths that he is hitting this season that really, uh, you know, making, is making him shine? Uh, yes, Rika. First thing, uh, any format you take the team list, he'll be number one there. Uh, and uh, yes, the way he bowled yesterday, the variation over the wicket, round the wicket and the lengths, uh, it, it was really difficult and the couple of Yorkers, uh, especially the one to Longroar also on the mm. first ball he faced, uh, uh, he's, he's just at his peak at this moment and that's making a difference. A Pfeiffer giving only 21, mm. a team setting 197, uh, a huge uh, contribution to keep uh, RCB below 200. So uh, yeah. I think he's at his peak and his variation is uh, really at its best. I think his economy was around 5.4. Uh, so I mean, yeah. let me ask you about one moment in that match. Uh, it took uh, Bumrah just three balls to knock over IPL's leading run getter, Virat Kohli. Give us your reaction to that ball. I think it was for me the coolest moment of the match because, you know, no matter what franchise you support, no matter how much you love RCB, MI, all of those banters keep on happening. Ultimately, we are lovers of the game. And uh, it, was a, it was a contest of the best versus the best. And uh, I think that's where the mo that, that's, that's my moment of the game. Uh, of course, takes me back to Bumrah's first wicket of Virat Kohli as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it was absolutely sheer brilliance of Bumrah. Uh, I was in the stadium yesterday and uh, pretty much, very much lucky, in fact, to uh, see that kind of a spell coming in from Jaspreet Bumrah. Naresh, uh, Jaspreet Bumrah, as good as he bowled, but he missed hat-trick not, hat not once, but twice on the night. Does that hurt as a Mumbai fan? Well, yeah, 17 years, we haven't had anyone in that hat-trick list, you know. We had Madhwal last year also nearly, nearly getting a hat-trick in the playoff or the eliminator against Lucknow. Uh, so, yeah, and Bumrah should be the first one to deserve it uh, right. in IPL. So, yeah, it, it does. Uh, but, yeah, twice uh, there, this shows that uh, how effective he was. And I think uh, getting Virat and Faf, I think that's that were the most crucial wickets uh, more than actually getting a hat-trick here. Yeah. And uh, Swami, I'll have to also ask you about another moment after taking that five-wicket haul, the way he was lifted up by Rohit Sharma. You said that you were at the ground. Lasit Malinga was in the dugout applauding for him. Just talk to us about that moment when he claimed that five-wicket haul. 
I think the whole uh, the whole stadium erupted with joy, of course. Uh, and you know that's the beauty of Wangkhede. Uh, again, like everybody cheers for a good game of cricket. Uh, so yeah, every time you know the every time there was a Rohit moment, a Virat moment, you could just see how much the fans were overjoyed when Virat came to the you know came was fielding in the deep. So I mean, at a point of time, Virat was being cheered more. Than probably Ishan playing, so uh, we can we all know the fandom uh, that these greats bring along and how the fans unite when it comes to the at least the Indian greats of the game. Uh, so yeah, absolutely brilliant atmosphere out there. Talking a little bit about the bowling and now about RCB's bowling, Naresh uh, Duplessis said on the night that we do not have as many we weapons. Is that what RCB needs to zoom in on when the auction comes around? They have this habit of investing in superstar batters, but then the bowling goes fragile. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, if you see the history, that's what's uh, affected the RCB the most, and that is the bowling lineup. Uh, yeah, they they have to really get back on the drawing board to see what they need to do and who are those critical uh, bowlers who they would like to focus on. Yes, there have been talks the way. Chahal was released. That still is has affected them. Hasaranga was not available. Rather, mm -hmm. they have released Hasaranga also. So uh, these are the crucial decisions they have to make as far as the bowlers, whether it's a right arm seamer, left arm, and unfortunately, you see Siraj has been very expensive this season. So mm -hmm. he's off color too. So that's a big pressure on the bowling lineup, and we can see it. Uh, uh, it's very obvious. Yeah, Swami. So, actually, we saw the takedown of Mohammad Siraj and Rhys Topley yesterday by Ishan Kishan and uh, uh, and and former captain Rohit Sharma. 72 runs coming in the power play. Would you say that you know it was strategy which was made well before they got into the field, and it wasn't like they were reacting to the situation? Uh, honestly, you know, if you ask me, uh, Siraj definitely has been a letdown this season. Uh, he's not this kind of a bowler. We all know that, right? I mean, in the last in IPL 2023, he had an economy of around five in the power play, uh, which has gone up to a 12 uh, in this particular season. And you know, you don't mind uh, shelling out a lot of runs if you are striking regularly. But then that also is not happening with Siraj. So Siraj is a completely uh, different ball game uh, in this particular season. Uh, but yeah, Reece Topley, I think, yep, wasn't expected again. But the way Ishan was batting, I think that particular uh, over of Ishan uh, that Siraj had bowled had actually set up the momentum. So uh, that kind of defined the game, how Ishan played uh, from there and how then Rohit picked up, how Surya came and picked up and all, all of those things actually followed. But yeah, I mean, uh, Siraj has been definitely a, a, a strong letdown. When it comes to the other part of the RCB uh, bowling unit, hmm. we can't really blame much because, right. of course, the main uh, problem was already set up uh, right during the auction. A 75% versus a 20-25% expenditure in yeah. the bowling unit versus the batting unit always tells the tale. Absolutely. Now, you know, coming back to Naresh, I, I'll have to ask you about that supla shot that uh, Surya Kumar Yadav unleashed. Uh, what did you think of it? And, uh, you know, there's, I think the fans yes. have been talking about it this season. Yes, yes. And, and he's just amazing. I don't think anyone can play as better as he does. And, uh, you know, and uh, T20 is his, his uh, uh, you know, kind of forte on the way he has been performing in this format and uh, specializing in this format. So, Nice to see him back. A great comeback. Yeah, he got a duck in the first game. But uh, yeah, one kid is his home. It was always known that he's going to come good someday. And the kind of shots, you know, those those shots are just... Uh, you can only see Surya play those kind of uh, uh, shots. It was just brilliant. Uh, you know, and he himself said the one he hit over, uh, over covers the six was mm -hmm. uh, uh, his favorite. So, uh, good to see him. And I think that makes the entire batting lineup more powerful you know he, he struck at 273 that's uh, simply phenomenal um well um, going back to uh, Swami Swami uh, you know Bangalore Royal Challengers they are a star outfit but would you say that the 17th title is looks of the limit right now I mean, 17th time the title looks off the limit yeah, right now. Yeah, I think I think it's, it's pretty much safe to say that until unless there's a miracle. But uh, winning seven from here, I mean, at least they would need a seven from here, which is almost like a you know, it, it looks almost impossible. And uh, saying that, uh, does Bangalore Royal Challengers deserve a victory this time? Maybe not. So uh, 
better better strategies better options better think tank uh, in terms of how you recruit a team needs to be really thought through mm. and uh, you know i just want to make one more point just diverting off the topic here uh, especially when it comes to surya uh, we were uh, nareesh was just talking about the batting prowess that surya had brought but also just look at the kind of the way surya had actually bound the team together we were seeing we had seen that mumbai indians was pretty much in a abyss uh, before surya came in right mm-hmm. and how he had, and it shows on the field when he's yeah. talking to the players when he's just having his mannerism uh, everything just shows so uh, great for surya to come back into the Lovely. team not only for his batting prowess but the way he's binding the team together you know naresh somi was talking about uh, the fan behavior in wankhede and and how wankhede stadium gets behind the players but not the captain of mumbai indians really even last night hardik pandya was booed and we saw how virat kohli was angry and he 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 spoke to the crowd to back uh, hardik um, just tell us a little bit about you know the je- this gesture and in the end though you know when hardik pandya was coming back he was cheered and not jeered Uh, yes, and and Rika, these are senior cricketers. We have seen Rohit do that also in uh, mm. a couple of games back. Virat doing it. High respect from the crowd for these two, uh, you know, long-serving cricketers for the country, and definitely uh, they they play a role in influencing the uh, fans. And uh, mm. in the end, it's about winning the game, performing, and giving the results. And all this will phase away, and you can see that as you said when Hardik walked in, mm. and what happened when Hardik walked out. Uh, and that's the role hardik has to play his role was as a for finisher and we saw that come good yesterday right so you can say you can only rise from here and i think that is what's going to change the next game is going to be a very tough one against csk in wankhede and if we can pull it off i think you will not hear that ever again well that's going to be a humdinger and and uh, in fact uh, at the moment let's have a look at the points table after this win uh, mumbai which was uh, lurking at the bottom they have been able to get themselves up on the uh, points table they are in the mid table uh, right now and though they still not on the top half of the table with rajasthan leading it kolkata lucknow and chennai the rafter Uh, Mumbai is in the seventh position, and uh, they will only try to rise from here. Thank you very much, Nareesh and Somi, for joining me on the broadcast this morning. Now let's have a look at what's uh, coming your way tonight. It's going to be Lucknow versus Delhi in Lucknow. The Super Giants started with a defeat, but have won three on the bounce since then. Delhi Capitals have lost the last two matches and will be hoping that they don't lose a third. Batting have been a struggle for the Capitals this season. Lucknow has in fact done it with spin. Will they do that again? We will of course have to wait and see tonight. Table say to parents stop chasing happiness and success for your kids i'm like hey but if nothing else i should at least be doing that and in today's very goal driven success driven world i'd be like i get it but i don't want my kid to be left out i want to give them the best chance Right so let's just take success first and most indian parents will have to admit even in the privacy of their own solitude that success is their main goal in raising their children and when we raise children with this goal in mind what we often do is become blind to who the child really is when we drive our children to success we objectify them and no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we we pretend to ourselves we lie to ourselves that all our pushing is coming because we care about our children we love our children but that's not the truth we care about ourselves we love ourselves we feel good 
to have our children be successful. And if our children fall off the wagon, it makes us feel anxious. But then you also say, don't push for happiness. Don't make that your big goal either. Can you tell us why? That sounds like a really different way of looking at things. We want our children to be happy. Well, what that really means is we want our children to be really happy because that makes us feel as if we're good parents. It makes us feel in control and as if we are successful. Our children are going to have a lot of unhappy moments in life. Life is not about just unilateral, unilinear feelings. In fact, pain, fear, anxiety is part of the human experience. And in fact, that's what actually keeps us safe sometimes. And that's how we're wired to know that there's danger. And that's how we grow. Our children will pay a price. They may not tell us right now, but they will pay a price in their own life because they will be unable to sit with their difficult emotions. They will drink too much, eat too much, socialize too much, spend too much money and look outward because they're too uncomfortable to sit with their pain because we've taught them that they should just be happy, which is unrealistic and it's toxic. <laughs> As this is all about gadgets, so I have always multiple gadgets for you. And the second one this time is this, the all-new Motorola Edge 50 Pro. Now the Edge series, just by the name, it's you know, obvious that we get screen screen, it's with this 3D curved edge design. At the same time, phone is also having specs that are cutting edge. And in this phone, mein bhi, we have something special because there are many world's first and world's only features packed inside this phone. Uh, what we have is this nicely crafted, very sleek phone where the frame is made of aluminium. The back, what we have is this special vegan leather. It smells nice as well and the phone inside packs the punch because हमारे पास में है Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor. What we have is a 4500 mAh battery but the best part is this phone supports up to 125 watts of fast charging and the charger comes inside the Six children killed as school bus overturns in Haryana. Driver was reportedly drunk and speeding. School bus driver, principal and school secretary have been arrested. A four-member government-appointed panel will probe the school bus crash. Family members of a first-year IIT student IIT of IIT Guwahati has alleged that ragging might be the cause behind the death of the 20-year-old BTEC student from Bihar, whose body was found on Wednesday night in his hostel room. Police have registered a case of unnatural death. The family has demanded a probe. A class 11 student was found dead in society building in Ghaziabad. Police says uh, that uh, they are probing the suicide angle. Police is also investigating all other angles in this Ghaziabad story. The Central Bureau of Investigation on Thursday arrested BRS leader K. Kavita in connection with a corruption case linked to the alleged Delhi liquor policy scam. Kavita seeks details of CBI plea order on record. CBI is likely to seek Kavita's custody today. New rules come into force for UK family visa. The minimum income required to sponsor their relatives to UK on a family visa has been increased by over 55% on Thursday as the country aims to reduce legal migration. Virat Kohli got angry as Hardik Pandya was booed at the Vankhede Stadium. The former Indian skipper supported the MI skipper even as his team went down against the hosts. member government appointed panel will probe the school bus crash that killed six students and injured around 20 in Haryana's Mahindragar on Thursday. The accident took place near Unhani village in Kanina where the bus carrying around 40 students from primary to secondary classes uh, to the GL public school collided with a tree and overturned. An FIR has been registered in connection with the case. Let's listen into what DSP Mahindra Rana had to say. 
जो गाड़ी का ड्राइव इस गाड़ी को चला रहा था धर्मेंद्र उसको हमने अरेस्ट कर लिया है और उसके अलावा स्कूल की प्रिंसिपल है दिप्ति और अन्य स्टाफ का जो मेन मेंबर है होशियार सिंह जो इस शक्ति के अकाउंट है स्कूल में और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनकी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों और बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्ति की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने करनी है और जो छः जिसमें टोटल बैठी हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडियाँ हमने उनके घर के हवाले वारिश आगे कर दी थी so this horrific accident happened in haryana yesterday a school bus overturning killing six children and injuring 20 they were going to school on a day of a national holiday it was idul fitr the school was open they were being ferried to school by this bus which did not have a fitness certificate since 2018 lots of questions are being now asked why was the school open despite there being a government holiday yesterday uh, gurpreet uh, my colleague is uh, joining me for more uh, on the story gurpreet apparently a four member panel is going to be probing uh, this matter lots of questions uh, that are still to be answered uh, in this case but first tell us uh, what is the status of the injured students are they are they fine are they are they tracking uh, well right now well uh, we uh, we have seen uh, most of the students they have been discharged last night and what we have learned three students who are who uh, got critical injuries they are being hospitalized they are also getting the treatment and we had a word with the local administration the uh, top officer they say the proper treatment is being provided but uh, uh, they are still in critical condition and that uh, they needs to get more treatment in the hospital if we can talk about uh, perspective of this uh, investigation we have seen the top police officer they are investigating this uh, case from all the angles not only at the district level even the top uh, haryana government uh, officer they are also being involved in this thing we have seen the deputy commissioner of uh, that district uh, she has already asked uh, a four member panel to look into this matter multiple irregularities have already come to fore during the course of investigation and in the preliminary investigation it has been confirmed the bus which was carrying the student they don't have the fitness certificate if they don't have fitness certificate they don't uh, run this bus on the roads and during the course Good of Preet. inspection of these buses it is Good also Preet, apparently most of the buses belong to this school they right. don't have this gurpreet apparently what we are also getting to know that the driver was drunk something that other uh, students and their parents had uh, alerted the school authorities about but they still went ahead um uh, asking this driver and scheduling this driver to drive the bus yes uh, that uh, that uh, uh, angle has already been cropped up in this investigation and what we learned from the top police officer they say the person from one of the villages uh, he had already called the principal and even the parents of the student they had already informed the principal bus driver was uh, driving the vehicle at very high speed and repeatedly the students uh, specifically those who were in the bus they were raising alarm again and again but this driver did not uh, 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 pay any heed to their alarms which has been raised by the students uh, now that is one of the reasons uh, the police say uh, the uh, they are going to record the statement of the parents before the magistrate so that they will be able to make a, a very strong case in this case and that is one of the reasons why they are also going to ask a number of question to school manage management mm -hmm. and the principal has already been arrested because uh, she was not listening to the students parents and specifically on this bus and if she had already uh, listened to the students and parents uh, the life of uh, six students could have been saved so all these angles are being uh, probed uh, from the investigation angle so let's see that what will come out of this investigation but today uh, the person who have already been arrested they will be produced before the court because section 120 that is the criminal conspiracy that has already been invoked in the FIR and from the FIR uh, it seems that they are going to ask for the police remand so 
that the proper conspiracy should be exposed and the people who are involved who allowed the driver to right. run this vehicle without having the uh, fitness certificate uh, they will be booked soon so let's see that uh, how the police is going to interrogate and investigate the management and they will be tr uh, try to find out the role of uh, management and mm -hmm. they are going to highlight all the irregularities which has been uh, made by absolutely the, the role of the and school should, management they, they is under scrutiny thank you very much Gurpreet for joining us with all those details you keep a track of what's happening on ground and we will get you time to time for all the details on the story now the body of a first year um, IIT student of IIT Guwahati was found yesterday police is now probing the cause behind the death of the 20 year old BTEC student from Bihar whose body was found on Wednesday night uh, in, inside his hostel room at IIT Guwahati. Apparently, his roommate was not there at that time. While the police have registered a case of unnatural death and post-mortem of the body has been done, the family has demanded a probe. Police uh, sources have added that a suicide note has also been found, which has been sent for forensic analysis. I have... Uh, with me, my colleague Ratadeep Chaudhary for more on the story. Ratadeep, IIT Guwahati has been in the news for wrong reasons. Even earlier, we, we heard about a girl being um, rushed to the hospital during, a New Year's, uh, during the New Year's Eve after a party. Then she was declared dead. Now, this girl found dead inside his hostel room. What's happening? Well, uh, this is a uh, male student, a 20-year-old uh, from Bihar, a first-year BTEC student of IIT Guwahati. Now, uh, this has happened in Wednesday night uh, when his uh, body was found hanging uh, and then the authorities informed the police and the body was sent uh, to the Guwahati Medical College Hospital for uh, post-mortem. Uh, police is awaiting the autopsy report and at this moment an uh, unnatural uh, death uh, case has been registered. Police is investigating into the case. In fact, uh, his uh, family members have also arrived uh, they have uh, requested the police uh, for a uh, detailed probe that's what we are picking up from police sources and uh, therefore the police is also uh, while police has confirmed that a suicide note has been uh, recovered but police has not given details of what uh, are the contents of the suicide note and uh, the police is suspecting this as a case of uh, suicide however all other angles are uh, being probed that's what police sources are telling us in fact the forensic analysis of the uh, uh, you know the suicide note would be uh, also done uh, 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 and uh, the, the most in, in, uh, important thing is that that IIT, remember, only recently a student of IIT was arrested by Assam uh, STF after he, uh, 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 you know, he uh, came on uh, openly, came and said that he wants to join the ISIS. Uh, uh, and before that, as you have pointed out, uh, in January this year, uh, on the uh, New Year Eve, a uh, uh, girl student uh, who had uh, come back from home, uh, she, uh, she uh, was partying uh, outside the, the campus, though, uh, in the city. Uh, and uh, after the party, she f uh, fell unconscious and was rushed to hospital and found dead. So, uh, uh, the, in that case, it was not inside the campus, but this uh, is a suspected suicide case. However, police is saying that they are looking at all angles, given the fact that the family Rather members the parents uh, have, are also uh, claiming uh, that there can, be, there can uh, be an however, angle however, of ragging. What is more important, Ratadeep, the parents are also claiming that there can be an angle of ragging. Well, uh, that's what. Uh, well, what police is saying that uh, they have uh, the family is yet to uh, you know lodge a formal complaint uh, uh, on uh, that regard. But however, they have made a verbal verbal uh, complaint. That's what police is saying. But what is important here is that the incident took place on Wednesday night, and IIT Guwahati remained silent on this until uh, this story broke in media, and they right. came out with a statement only uh, y yesterday evening. So why was this silence? Why uh, mm -hmm. was IIT not forthcoming to uh, uh, you know uh, let the media know that a student? body has been found uh, hanging in the uh, uh, premises of the campus in a, such a premier institute so there there are certain questions which the authorities of iit guwahati needs to answer and have in you fact, managed the police to reach is out to the parents different, uh, all the angles uh, in this case that's what we are picking up from police sources thank you very much uh, ratadeep uh, of course we will get back to you for more on this story now here's another heartbreaking story that comes from ghaziabad a boy has found been found dead in one of the Ghaziabad uh, buildings. He is a class 11 student. Police is probing a uh, suicide angle. Uh, the Ghaziabad police is also investigating other angles in this story. Uh, my colleague uh, 
Well, let's first listen into the ACP of Indrapuram as to what he had to say about this suicide. लड़के को तत्काल शांति गोपाल हॉस्पिटल लेके जाया जाता है जहां पे डॉक्टर्स द्वारा उसकी जेब से हमें एक सुसाइड नोट प्रदान किया जाता है प्रथम दृष्टिया यह आत्महत्या का मामला प्रतीत हो रहा है परंतु हम इसके सुसाइड नोट का और अन्य बिंदुओं पर भी जांच कर रहे हैं आगे की वैधानिक कार्रवाई की जा रही है Let's go over to uh, my colleague Mukesh for more on this story. He's been tracking this death of a young boy in Ghaziabad. Mukesh, what do we know uh, about this suicide right now and what are the angles that police is probing? Look, today is the case in Ghaziabad. ATS Advantage Society is there. There is a young man named Nao Khanna, who was 11 years old. He was at his friend's house and he was at his friend's house and he was at his friend's house. फोटोग्राफी कर रहे थे उसी दौरान नव खन्ना ने अपने दोस्त से कहा कि वो नीचे से होकर आता है और जब वो नीचे उतरा तो उसके बाद जोर से आवाज आई और देखा गया कि इक्कीसवी मंजिल से जो नव नव खन्ना है वो नीचे गिर गया है इसके बाद सोसाइटी के लोगों ने पुलिस को कॉल किया पुलिस मौके पर पहुंची और नव खन्ना का की जो डेड बॉडी है उसको लेकर अस्पताल गई जहाँ पर डॉक्टरों ने उसकी जेब से एक सुसाइड नोट रिकवर किया है अब तक की जाँच के हिसाब से ये मामला सुसाइड का लग रहा है लेकिन फिर भी पुलिस तमाम एंगल से जांच कर रही है कि क्या नौ खन्ना अपने आप गिरा अपने आप कूदा या किसी ने उसको धक्का दिया है इन तमाम एंगल को लेकर जांच चल रही है लेकिन अब तक के हिसाब से ये मामला सुसाइड का लग रहा है क्योंकि जो नौ खन्ना है उसके पास से एक सुसाइड नोट मिला है हालांकि उसमें क्या कंटेंट है इसको लेकर अभी कुछ साफ नहीं है लेकिन पुलिस पुलिस इस पूरे मामले में तमाम एंगल से जाँच कर रही है Thank you very much, uh, Mukesh, for joining us with those details. Now, moving on to some political news now. Hours after news coming in of CBI arresting BRS leader K. Kavita in the Delhi liquor policy case, Kavita has reportedly moved a plea seeking details of any plea filed by CBI in court over her, her arrest. The Central Anti Corruption Agency arrested Kavita from jail number no. 6 of Tihar prison around noon. On Thursday, under Section 120B, uh, which is Criminal Conspiracy, uh, Section 477A, which is falsification of accounts of the Indian Penal Code, and Section 7, which, 7, which is offence relating to a public servant being bribed of the Prevention of Corruption Act. The Delhi court uh, had on April 5 allowed uh, the CBI to quiz Kavita in Tihar jail. The ED had arrested uh, Kavita from her Banjara Hills residence in Hyderabad on March uh, 15th. She has remained in judicial custody, but now the CBI is likely to seek her custody today. Let's listen into what my colleague Uma Sudhir had to say about this uh, uh, arrest of K. Kavita by CBI. So Kavita had moved court yesterday saying that the registry must put on record either the uh, application or the order for the CBI arrest because even though her husband was informed of the CBI arrest, their argument is that unless the court permission and order is presented to them and they are given cognizance of it, this should not have happened. But because yesterday was a court holiday, the duty, duty judge said that this would come up or will be put up in court for hearing at 10 a.m. itself. We are also expecting that after the CBI, in fact, announced that they have arrested her uh, after having questioned her and sought the permission of the court they are likely to move for custody and what we understand is that if she if the custody is indeed granted to the CBI then she would be moved uh, from the Tihar jail to the CBI headquarters Kavita was arrested on March 15 that was under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act and that was by the Enforcement Directorate and now the arrest has come by the CBI under multiple sections criminal conspiracy falsification of accounts as well as an attempt to bribe a public servant. These are the sections under which uh, she is now being arrested by the CBI. You would recall that uh, Kavita is uh, uh, alleged to be part of a South group that is said to have paid 100 crore rupees in bribe to some members of the AAP uh, through a person called Mr. Vijay Nair, uh, who is said to be acting on behalf of the Delhi Chief Minister. And uh, Vijay Nair, as well as uh, Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh, all three of them were in fact arrested uh, by the CBI as well as for the ED. Of course, Mr. Sanjay Singh is now out on bail. Uh, Mr. Kejriwal, who is under arrest, has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. The three other people who were said to be part of the same South group, uh, whether it is Magunta Srinivas Reddy and his son Raghava Reddy, they were part of the YSRCP. He was in fact a YSRCP MP. He has moved to the TDP, but he has turned an approver and so has uh, 
Sharat Reddy, who is a director of Arabindo Pharma, and uh, he has also turned approval in this particular case. And Kavita's own argument has been that uh, all this case is based on the statements of others and not on a trail of evidence. And she, in fact, has told the court that she believes that she has been made a victim. Back to you. Thank you very much. Now, over to some other news now. Amid the heat wave warning issued by IMD, PM Modi held a high-level meeting. He reviewed the preparedness for the period from April to June as the temperature is above normal maximum temperatures over most parts of the country. PM also reviewed preparedness uh, uh, of health sector according to IMD temperature range between 40 degree to 42 degree in several parts of West Bengal, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Tamil Nadu. Uh, let's listen in to Mahesh Palavat, uh, President of Meteorology and Climate Change uh, uh, Office, SkyMet Weather. We have seen the temperatures are uh, increasing and uh, they are above 40 over many parts of Gujarat, South Rajasthan, Western parts of Rajasthan. Uh, and uh, earlier, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Chhattisgarh, and South MP were also witnessing uh, above normal temperature, but now due to pre monsoon showers, uh, temperature have subsided over those areas. However, Rayal Sima, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, South Telangana, Tamil Nadu, all these areas are witnessing above normal temperature in the excess of 40 degrees. So we think that uh, temperatures will be under control over central and uh, northwest India until 15th of April because pre monsoon showers are anticipated over all these areas. But after that, the temperatures are going to soar again and uh, they will be uh, in the range of say 42, 44 degrees at many places leading to severe heat wave condition, heat wave to severe heat wave condition. Uh, intensity and duration of heat wave is going to increase after say uh, 15th of April, 50, uh, because until 15th uh, we anticipate uh, showers, uh, the pre monsoon showers across uh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, UP, uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Vidarbha, Marathwada, Telangana and eastern parts of the country. Thereafter the temperature will start increasing and Delhi may witness above normal temperature by uh, say uh, touching 40 degree uh, by 20th of uh, April. And uh, uh, this is a uh, cause of concern because now uh, because, uh, the temperatures went uh, severe heat wave or continuous heat wave is there, then it, it, it adversely impacts the health of uh, uh, masses. And uh, May, in, May is the hottest month, uh, so we think that uh, the intensity and duration of heat wave across the country, not, not only northwest India, uh, South Venezuela and the eastern parts of the country as well as central India, uh, the intensity and duration will be much more in the month of May and the first half of June. Now for a very quick break on the show, we're on the other side. Stay tuned. Go present NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. BSI, Hamlo, and We the People all take home awards. And NDTV 24 7 takes home News Channel of the Year award. NDTV stands for trust. Prime Minister Modi powers Congress next Adyant Karata. The 2024 campaign hot side. Hey, Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24-7. Carnival of Democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties 
are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. You say, celebrate the ordinary in your child. Mr. Narendra Modi is visiting Jammu and Kashmir to address a BJP election rally today in Udhampur. PM will be canvassing for Dr. Jitendra Singh, who is seeking third term from Udhampur, Kathwa Doda Parliament seat. Dr. Jitendra Singh is facing a formidable opponent in Chaudhary uh, Lal Singh, who has recently joined the Congress party and is pulling in large crowds. Lal Singh is also former two-time MP from Udhampur constituency. BJP is expecting a massive crowd at the PM's rally and hopes that PM Modi's charisma will turn the tide and ensure a resounding victory of the party in Jammu and Kashmir. My colleague uh, Nazir Masoodi joins me for more on this story. Nazir, tell us the significance of uh, PM's visit to uh, Udhampur today. Well, massive preparations have been made for the for the Prime Minister's visit to Udhampur, where he's addressing a rally uh, in, in in a half an hour from now. So it is expected to be a massive rally. Large number of people have been brought to the uh, you know rally site. This uh, uh, and it is expected to be one of the biggest political rallies in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, Prime Minister Modi is campaigning for Dr. Jitender Singh, who is union minister, who is seeking third consecutive term. But he has a formidable, you know, opponent, uh, Chaudhary Lal Singh, who is also a former two-time MP from the same constituency. Um, uh, Chaudhary Lal Singh had resigned from the Congress, joined BJP in 2014, and he again resigned from the BJP. Now he has joined the, back the Congress. So Prime Minister's, you know, visit and the rally is seen as a big push by the Prime Minister campaigning in Jammu and Kashmir to win maximum seats from the Jammu and Kashmir, while BJP has only announced two candidates from Udhampur and uh, uh, Jammu parliamentary constituency, or all of the four, uh, three constituencies uh, in, in the valley and also Ladakh constituency uh, okay. candidates have not been announced by the BJP. But this is seen as a big, big rally mm -hmm. by the prime minister in, in, in Jammu and Kashmir, mm -hmm. and it is his first rally in Jammu and Kashmir to campaign for Dr. Jitendra Singh. Right. Uh, we will, of course, keep track of uh, the happenings in Udhampur with you. Thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast, Nazir. Now, Home Minister Amit Shah will address a public meeting at St. Mary's School in Uttar Pradesh, Moradabad, today. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister N.K. Stalin will be addressing an election rally in Chetipalayam in Coimbatore in support of India coalition candidate. Rahul Gandhi will be campaigning for the DMB candid candidate Kanpati Rajkumar who has been pitted against BJP state president K. Annamalai in, uh, in the polls uh, on 19th of April. Late AIDMK chief Jalalita is virtually seeking votes for her party's Madurai candidate. The candidate, Dr. Savanan, has used artificial intelligence technology to get Jalalita's voice creatively to seek votes. The Samajwadi Party has never won the seat considered a stronghold of BJP leaders Manika Gandhi and Varun Gandhi. The BJP has, however, dropped Varun and instead fielded Jitin Prasada from the seat uh, uh, for upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Pilibit is going to polls in the first phase on 19th of April. Big blow to BJP in Maharashtra just before the Lok Sabha election. BJP leader Dharyal Shil Bhoite Patil resigns from party membership. BJP has made Ranjit Singh Nimbalkar its candidate from uh, Madha, uh, Madha Lok Sabha constituency. Angered by this, Mohit Patel submitted his resignation after resigning Patient uh, Mohit Patel also met Sharad Pawar in Pune. According to sources, after BJP, Mohit Patel can now join NCP. Uh, Sharad Chandra Pawar's party and uh, 
present his claim as the Madha Lok Sabha candidate. Time for a quick break on the show. More on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. In the date, I am sure we have tons and tons of gadgets where at least we have a mobile phone. And mobile phones are a lot of content created. Especially for Instagram or YouTube, you would see many people recording their videos, doing some commentary, or they record vlogs. And for those, Microphone is very important. If you have a mobile phone camera, you will record everything well. The audio is also very important. Now, while we have multiple different kinds of microphones, आप सब कंटेंट क्रिएटर्स को एक चीज का और ध्यान रखना चाहिए, which is the pickup pattern of a particular microphone. Because अलग-अलग टाइप्स के माइक्रोफोन मिलते हैं for all different kinds of usage. एक होता है कार्डोइड माइक्रोफोन, जहाँ पे the front of the mic is where it's most sensitive और ये back और sides को block कर देता है so that अगर आप कहीं शोर वाले area में हैं the mic still gonna focus on what you are saying जो आपके आसपास का शोर है वो बहुत कम capture होगा अगर हम एक step और आगे जाएंगे तो what we have is a microphone with a pickup pattern of super cardioid जहाँ पे एकदम नैरो पिकअप पैटर्न बन जाता है, सो दैट आपकी जो आवाज है, योर वॉइस ओवर, योर कमेंट्री, यू नो कुड बी वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग पॉडकास्ट्स, जहाँ पे जो आप बोलते हैं, वो एकदम प्रिसाइजली कैप्चर होता है, लेकिन अगर आसपास कुछ शोर शराबा है, वो एकदम अट्यूनेट हो how exactly is the environment और उसके लिए you can use a microphone जहाँ पे the pickup pattern is omnidirectional which simply means कि चारों तरफ की जो भी आवाजें हैं microphone सभी को capture करने वाला है equally so mic might look like a very basic device Some more political news. Aatishi of Aam Aadmi Party has made a big charge against BJP. She says that a big political conspiracy is being hatched against the Aam Aadmi Party, which is the ruling party in the national capital. She's also saying that government is going to impose precedence rule in Delhi. And that's those are uh, pretty big charges on uh, Bharatiya Janata Party. And uh, Aatishi is claiming that there could be a precedence rule in Delhi. Let's first listen into what she has to say. कि दिल्ली की चुनी हुई सरकार, आम आदमी पार्टी की सरकार, अरविंद केजरीवाल की सरकार के खिलाफ एक बहुत बड़ा राजनैतिक शड्यंत्र प्लान किया जा रहा है। हमें विश्वसनीय सूत्रों से पता चला है। कि आने वाले कुछ दिनों में केंद्र सरकार भारतीय जनता पार्टी शासित केंद्र सरकार दिल्ली में राष्ट्रपति शासन लगाने वाली है। Well, I'm joined by BJP spokesperson Harish Khurana for more on the story. Mr. Khurana, those are pretty big charges. Atish is saying that. The government will impose precedent's rule on the national capital. I would like to say only one word for this. It's a new Manohar Kahaniya. Every time 
Atishi or Saurabh Bhargav comes to media and give a new kind of a sensation uh, story to the media for for uh, maybe a sensation kind of thing can can be happen, but it's not true. Actually, not true. After coming from Kajiranga holidays now, uh, Atishi spent for um, as many days as she can in, in Kajiranga, but after that. she came to delhi and trying to sensation in in in, in media but the fact is uh, you are allegating the uh, lg that uh, you are not appointing the officers in delhi but the fact of the matter is since last september the meeting between lg and the chief minister which is the board which was what we call as a board uh, uh, has no, a meeting has not happened Where the left? Where the where the chief minister? Chief minister is busy in himself. Whether he is going to the past now or uh, take take taking some more more issues. But where the government today? But Kurana, is, are then, you calling all of them part-time politicians? See, we need a full-time chief minister in Delhi. That's a fact. Unfortunately, we are seeing since last few. Yeah, I'm talking about since. Mr. Kurana, you are calling Mr. Kejriwal full, uh, uh, not a full-time politician, and does does that mean that you know BJP wants to wants to oust Aam Aadmi Party and get in another chief minister? Is that what I, your ask I, is? Since in jail, who is going to run the government? He like from Aam Aadmi Party. I mean, it's an administrative on the stage of that. Is a serious. Uh, I mean, uh, Chief Minister is in jail. I mean, you you are busy in in political tourism. Are you in political in political tourism or you going somewhere else? I don't know where. You, you are busy in in in, in your uh, law. I mean, debating uh, the biggest crisis in, in of the sticker cap. Where the government is running. Point is, so we need a government where. You, you can appoint Abhishek. Uh, uh, we don't mind, but at least we should have a full-time chief minister. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harish Kurana. We'll of course have to get back to you because your line isn't very clear. I don't think uh, the viewers can quite make out what you're trying to say. But I understand you are trying to say that the Aam Aadmi Party politicians are part-time politicians, calling Mr. Kejriwal as a part-time politician as well, who goes off to Vipassana. The BJP and Aam Aadmi Party are locked in a battle in national capital. The chief minister is lodged in jail. Atishi, who's one of the leaders of Aam Aadmi Party, says that there is a big conspiracy that is being hatched against the Aam Aadmi Party, and and she is saying that there could be president's rule in the national capital. Moving on, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress Party for calling BJP leaders dictators. He reminded the Congress of the emergency in 1975 in an interview. Rajnath Singh said that he could not even attend his mother's last rites after she died due to brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Brain hemorrhage हो गया था. तो सत्ताईस दिन हॉस्पिटल में रहीं डेथ हो गई. लेकिन मैं आ नहीं सका उसमें. मेरी रिहाई नहीं हुई मुझे पेरोल भी नहीं दिया गया पेरोल नहीं दिया गया मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं In a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura parliamentary seat constituency has launched a pioneering initiative, home voting, where voting facilities reach the voters' doorstep for disabled and blind voters, apart from elderly persons. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above, as well as people with disabilities, those registered for the facilities, to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes. Many have voted after years. Welcoming the initiative, voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes. আগে তো স্যার গিয়েছে ওই স্কুলে দিতাম লাইন দুইটা ছিল ওখানে তো স্যার বাড়ি দেওয়া না স্যার বালিছে এই প্রথম দিলেন বাড়ি হ্যাঁ প্রথম দিছি স্যার কি অসুবিধা আপনার আমার সকে সমস্যা স্যার আগে তো বাড়িতে আয়া যে তো ভোটটা দিছে তো ভোটের দিনে তো অসুবিধা হতো না ওখানে যে প্রথম অবস্থায় দেখলাম এত সুন্দর একটা সিস্টেম লুক করলো তো আমরা ইলেকশন কমিশনের কাছে এডি জানিতেছে যে এই সিস্টেমটাতে সবসময় থাকে মিনওয়াইল সামার্থ এন্ড এনটিটিভিজ ইনিশিয়েটিভ ইন পার্টনারশিপ উইথ হিউন্ডাই 
which is launched as a movement to create a change in mindset and spark societal change to create a opportunity for more inclusive and accessible world for people with disabilities in guwahati ratnadeep chaudhry for ndtv tv Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally uh, in Rajasthan where he commented on a section of media Rahul Gandhi said I for people of India the biggest issues are unemployment and inf inflation but if one sees a section of media the biggest issue seems to be Ambani's wedding Hindustan ki janta se agar aap puche to wo aapko batayenge pehle number par berozgari दूसरे नंबर पर महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा breaking news coming in two suspects in the rameshwaram cafe blast case in bengaluru have been detained by nia from west bengal the accused have been identified as muzaf muzaf muzawir hussain shazib who is one of the main accused and his complain a complice abdul mathin ahmed taha both suspected to belong to isis cell and were detained from west bengal by nia my colleague saurabh gupta joins me for more in the story uh, saurabh were these two suspects hiding in west bengal for uh, for for the last couple of months well the news that we will try to get you uh, uh, saurabh's uh, uh information at the moment we know that two suspects in rameshwaram cafe blast case in bengaluru have been detained by nia from west bengal the accused have been identified as muzawir hussain shazib who is one of the main accused and his accomplice abdul mathin ahmed taha both suspected to belong to isis cell and were detained from west bengal by the nia remember uh, there was a blast at uh, bengaluru's rameshwaram cafe late in february and uh, and and several people were actually outside and some of them were injured uh well i have with me our editor um nikunj garg for more on this story nikunj uh, it seems that two suspects have been identified as muzaffer shazib and another as abdul mathin and they have been actually uh, uh, traced down to west bengal what more do we have on this story well this is a dramatic development now finally with uh, certitude and confidence from the side of the law enforcement agency we can now put out to our viewers we can inform our viewers that the accused who planted the bomb the planted the id at the cafe in bangalore city is now in the uh, custody of the law enforcement agencies and also the mastermind of this abdul martin taha uh, these two individuals have been uh, uh, absconding from the law and uh, they uh, the nia teams have been trying to tail them trying to trace them trying mm -hmm. to track them for a significant period of time since the case was handed over to them now finally from calcutta they have been arrested by the national investigation agency with the active cooperation as the agency described with uh, central intelligence agencies state police forces and west bengal telangana and karnataka and kerala police this quite clearly indicates that this was a multi state operation mm -hmm. state police forces of at least six states from kerala karnataka west bengal telangana uh, all are involved of course karnataka to begin with Uh, all are involved so are the central intelligence agencies like the intelligence bureau and the national investigation agency country's premier anti terror agency so all of these agencies have coordinated and gotten into their custody muzawir hussain shazib uh, the accused who planted that means the planter of the ied the man who actually we have seen in the picture so far uh, with a cap with a distinguishably identifiable cap of wearing uh, wearing cap on his head 
from which initial leads were gathered by the law enforcement agencies and the mastermind and the individual who conspired with others to plant this bomb in uh, Bangalore cafe, Abdul Mateen Taha. Mm -hmm. uh, they, he ha they have both been arrested by the National Investigation Agency. So let me recap the entire developments of this morning. Since morning, uh, since some time back, we have been reporting the fact that certain individuals are in the custody of the National Investigation Agency now, as we speak, who have been accused of uh, planting the IED and conspiring to bomb the cafe. Uh, these two individuals, now the National Investigation Agency confirms, and we are confirming for our viewers as we speak at this moment, somewhere just before 11 a.m. on mm -hmm. uh, this uh, Friday morning, that these two individuals responsible, principally responsible for carrying out that strike in which uh, there were casualties, there were at least multiple people who suffered injuries and multiple people uh, obviously were targeted. Uh, one will have to see whether the IED was planted, uh, uh, had more intensity or the IED was only planted with the amount of, the, with the intention of carrying out the damage that it eventually did. But nonetheless, let me again recap for our viewers. On this Friday morning, we are informing our viewers at NDTV that the mastermind of the Bangaluru Cafe Blast and the principal accused of planting the bomb are both in the custody of uh, the law enforcement agencies, the countries, and premier anti-terror agency, the National Investigation Agency. This operation, the National Investigation Agency, says on record now, has been achieved with the active cooperation of at least half a dozen state police forces starting from, beginning from Karnataka, ending up to West Bengal. Nikunj, and, and the active cooperation of the Central Intelligence Agency. Nikunj, uh, this, this, the blast that happened on 1st of March, uh, do we now convincingly say that there was ISIS hand in this? Uh, at this point in time, it would be slightly early to say uh, who are the people who are precisely responsible in terms of a group or a module uh, owing allegiance to that particular party. However, what we can say that these are the individuals who have been identified by the National Investigation Agency through the painstaking investigation work uh, as the masterminds and the conspirator and the planters of the bomb. And I'm quite sure as we join, we are joined by Pratibha, our uh, uh, our uh, uh, correspondent and our colleague from Bangalore who has been very painstakingly, very uh, vigorously, very, you know, uh, with a great dynamism following this story from the word go, uh, we will be obviously getting more details from the ground zero. Uh, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, at this point in time, massive development this morning on the Friday morning uh, as we end towards the weekend. Uh, during this election season, the entire country was stunned, and this was a blast that happened after many, many, after a lull of many years uh, under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's watch. Uh, the very stringent internal security policy has seen major successes on that front, and we haven't seen across the country many uh, terror strikes. But this was one in the heart of the city of Bangalore uh, that shook the entire nation. Remember, the right. damage may have been small, but the, the impact of the impact on of the, of the imagery of the blast coming out from the Rameshwaram cafe in Bangalore was massive. Remember, Bangalore is not just an Indian city. It's an international brand. It's an IT capital of mm -hmm. this country, mm -hmm. globally recognized city. Anything mm -hmm. going wrong there has international, international, at least ramifications, if not repercussions. Absolutely. Bangalore, as you mentioned, is not just a city. It's a brand. It's the IT hub of India. It's the Silicon Valley of India. My colleague Pratibha also joins me for more on the story. Pratibha, investigations have been carried to the length and breadth of the country. Now two uh, people have been detained by NIA. Do the investigations carry on even now? Are the police looking for more suspects in this case? Well, in fact, definitely they would be looking for more leads in this particular case. But what we understand is that uh, these two who have been detained by the NIA are two of the main suspects who have already been identified by the NIA. One is uh, Musavir and the other is Abdul Taha. What we understand from uh, the sources is that uh, it was Musavir who uh, could have uh, perhaps conducted this uh, entire explosion at the Rameshwaram Cafe. And uh, it was Abdul Taha who provided all the help. Uh, remember, there was already 
one arrest that was uh, recorded by the NIA and uh, that was the person who had provided logistical support and that was one of the biggest breakthroughs as far as uh, this investigation was concerned and that was when the NIA had mentioned about uh, these two suspects who had been identified by the NIA then. Definitely a major breakthrough in this particular case especially after March 1st when uh, the blast took place especially in the IT belt of uh, the city and it is the white field area where uh, the area that houses a lot of IT companies as well as uh, an area where a lot of IT uh, people reside and uh, this definitely came as a shock as far as Bengaluru city is concerned and uh, like you were already talking about it brand Bengaluru that was affected then and this is definitely going to be some sort of a vindication of sorts for uh, the residents of Bengaluru who were definitely rattled at that point in time. Tell us a little bit about you know um, the Rameshwaram cafe in particular getting back to life after that I think after eight days of the blast it opened it started uh, servicing the customers were there any changes in terms of you know security order security um, you know brief that they uh, followed before and now that they follow after this blast Well, Rameshwaram Cafe definitely stood for the kind of resilience, especially after the cafe. In a week's time, a lot of changes that were done at uh, the cafe. Remember, it's one of the most popular joints as far as Bengaluru is concerned. Uh, four outlets in different pockets of the city where people keep thronging that area. At least around a thousand footfall recorded at least over a half a day is what uh, uh, the owners of Rameshwaram Cafe had uh, mentioned then. And uh, this is definitely not uh, figures that are only on paper, but uh, most residents of Bengaluru have witnessed it in person uh, as and when they cross Rameshwaram uh, Cafe. Every outlet where people are thronging all the time and it continues to even now especially after the blast a lot of changes that have been done is one metal detectors that have been uh, put in place and uh, a, a lot of people who have been uh, 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 under constant vigil as far as uh, Rameshwaram cafe is concerned and this is definitely a lesson that has been learned by different cafes as well as outlets across the city of Bengaluru remember this is not the first time that the blast has taken place outside an outlet like this we had uh, the coconut groove restaurant uh, for instance and now we have the Rameshwaram cafe so a lot of lessons that have been put into practice now especially mm -hmm. after this uh, blast and yes uh, the uh, life that has already come back to normalcy as far as Rameshwaram Cafe is concerned. Uh, but uh, definitely this is going to be one of the biggest breakthroughs that entire Bengaluru is going Absolutely. to be proud of. And Bangalore, people in Bangalore uh, will be relieved to know that at least two people who were involved in this case have been uh, nabbed. Perhaps police are looking out for more leads. Let me go over to my colleague Saurabh Gupta who is in Kolkata. Saurabh, uh, two people who were involved in the blast have been nabbed from Kolkata by NIA. Are they looking for more leads in the state? What is the, what is the latest you can bring us? Well, uh, what we know so far is that uh, Musavir Hussain Shazib, uh, the accused, who placed the uh, improvised explosive device, so the ID, at the Rameshwaram uh, cafe, and Abdul Mateen Taha, uh, who was the mastermind behind the planning and execution of the blast and subsequent evasion of the clutches of the law, uh, have been picked up by the NIA from a hideout that they were... Uh, you know, uh, staying in, and this is of course near Kolkata is what we've been given to understand, though the exact location is yet to be uh, released. And what we know is that on the early morning of 12th uh, uh, 4 uh, to 24, which is today, uh, the NIA was successful in tracing the absconding accused near Kolkata, mm -hmm. uh, where they were hiding under false identities is what we're being given to understand. Right. Now, uh, this pursuit by the NIA, uh, the, uh, was of course also uh, supported by uh, and this was coordinated action uh, and cooperation between the NIA, central intelligence agencies and the state police agencies of four states, West Bengal, Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala police. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, this is of course a major, major operation as you can see, uh, led by the NIA and the NIA has achieved a major a breakthrough in this blast. They managed to pick up two of the accused and these are the main conspirators in the case uh, and of course they have been picked up from their hideout near Kolkata where they were staying under false identities is what uh, we are picking up from the NIA.
viewers that the man who we see on the picture on one of the blast pictures walking out of the cafe just after the blast happened is Busavir Hussain Shazib. Uh, that's right, you know, of course, uh, Musavir Hussain uh, Shazib is the man who placed the IED or the improvised explosive device in that cafe and he, along with Abdul Mateen Taha, uh, mm -hmm. is the mastermind behind the planning and execution of this blast and they had subsequently escaped. Uh, but as you know, there was CCTV image of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Shazib and uh, now the NIA has traced both Shazib and Taha uh, to uh, this place, uh, their hideout, where they were living under false identities uh, near Kolkata. Right. Uh, it is a very, very big breakthrough indeed. Uh, um, we also have our colleague uh, Neeta Sharma for more on the story. Neeta, tell us um, about this multi-state operation, how it was meticulously planned by the uh, Home Department uh, and, 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 and the kind of uh, involvement that the Home Ministry would have had in this. Uh, see, it's a very significant development. As you were mentioning, it's a multi-state operation which includes West Bengal, Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala. As far as the NIA is concerned, uh, in their press release which they have handed out, they say that early morning, in the uh, today that is early morning, uh, they were successful in tracing absconding accused near Kolkata where they were hiding under false identities. Uh, in pursuit successfully, NIA was able to gather evidence also. Uh, they were assisted by sister intelligence agencies also. And as Saurabh was mentioning, these two people are the main uh, people behind the blast. Their names are, uh, you know, Abdul uh, Mathin Taha and uh, Muhavir Hussain, uh, Musavir Hussain Sahib. So these are the two people who have been uh, arrested by NIA. Uh, Rameshwaram blast had, uh, you know, uh, uh, created ripples. In fact, uh, questions were also being asked by the state uh, police also as to everything was caught on camera and why they were still not being able to arrest these people but now NIA in a multi-state operation has swiftly arrested and the agencies also claim that it's a big very significant development as this uh, investigation of the case is concerned. Neeta, do Back we know whether uh, these are uh, ISIS operatives or not? See, as far as, uh, as of now, the NIA uh, does not say so. So we have to wait for the probe agency to claim so. Then only we can, uh, you know, uh, tell our viewers that if they were, they had any links with ISIS operatives or not. But as of now, they have only said that it is a very significant development and absconders in Rameshwaram uh, case, uh, both have been arrested in their hideout where they were living in a false identity mm -hmm. in Kolkata. And it was a multi-state operation which includes uh, uh, West Bengal, Telangana, Karnataka and Kera Kerala police. So back and forth by all the four state police investigations were being done. They were, you know, uh, exchanging notes. They were ex exchanging intelligence. And that's the reason why NIA was able to nab them uh, in Kolkata, both of them together. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Neeta, Saurabh and Pratibha for joining us with all those details regarding the big, big uh, story that we are uh, reporting at this hour. NIA has been able to nav two suspects uh, uh, in the Be Bengaluru Rameshwaram Cafe blast case. They are Musavvir Hussain Shazib and uh, Abdul Mathin Ahmed Taha, both suspected to belong to ISIS cell and have been detailed from West Bengal. They were living in West Bengal under false identity. It is a big breakthrough from the gov for, for the government as well because we are heading into the general elections. It starts on the 19th of this month. That's all we could do. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Go press. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of coal and driverless cars 
would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society, and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Banega Swast India, One World Hygiene. हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर वैसे टेलीस्कोप से याद आया डिड यू नो द जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप ये एक टेलीस्कोप तो है एट द सेम टाइम इट आल्सो एक्ट्स लाइक अ टाइम मशीन आपको लग रहा होगा टेलीस्कोप टाइम मशीन का आपस में लिंक क्या है Well, friends, link is quite interesting because आपको पता है light travels at a certain speed. You know what's the speed of light? Roughly three lakh kilometers per second, approximately. मतलब sunlight जब सूरज से निकल के earth तक पहुँचती है, it takes approximately eight minutes for that. Now, the uh, James Webb Space Telescope, जो कि हमको चीजें दिखाता है दूर-दूर के distant stars and galaxies, ये जो हमको images दिखाता है, these are not real time because लाइट कमिंग फ्रॉम दीज फार अवे गैलेक्सीज इनको काफी टाइम लगता है उस टेलीस्कोप तक पहुंचने में सो असेंशली वॉट वी आर सींग इज डेटा फ्रॉम बिलियंस ऑफ ईयर्स अगो मतलब ये जो जेम्स वेब स्पेस टेलीस्कोप है ये हमको दिखा सकता है बहुत बिगनिंग वाली इमेजेस या डिटेल्स ऑफ ऑल दीज गैलेक्सीज इन स्टार सो जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट दर टेलीस्कोप कैन ऑल्सो एक्ट लाइक अ टाइम मशीन NDTV wins big at Enba with 43 awards. NDTV reigns supreme. Sanjay Pugalia takes home the award for editor in chief of the year. Santosh Kumar wins managing editor of the year. Vishnu Som, Maria Shakil, and Sumit Avasti take home the top honors for the anchors of the year. Be it. Two suspects have been detained in the Bengaluru blast case, uh, which took place at the Rameshwaram Cafe. The NIA have detained two suspects in the case. K. Kavita has introduced in court in the Delhi liquor policy scam. The CBI is seeking a custody of K. Kavita for five days. Do remember that she was arrested by the CBI yesterday. She was earlier questioned by the CBI while she remained in judicial custody inside the Harjil. Now, it is uh, the CBI that's saying that after questioning her, they've got enough evidence to arrest K. Kavita, which is why they are seeking her custody. In the Haryana horror case, the FR has now been registered against the bus driver who caused a tragedy in which six students aged between 13 and 16, five of them boys, one girl, have been killed. He has been booked for culpable homicide and violation of rules and criminal conspiracy. A four-member government-appointed panel will be probing the case. Uh, a test as far as a fitness certificate uh, that had expired six years ago, a test will be conducted to know the fitness of the bus. New rules have come into force when it comes to the visa issuing for families now wanting a visa in the United Kingdom. So someone who lives in the UK wants to sponsor their relatives will now have to pay 
much more in order they have to earn much more in order to be able to get that visa so we're talking about an increase of over 55 percent they now have to earn 29,000 pounds to get a visa for their family as Rishi Sunak plans to cut down on immigration a key poll issue ahead of elections Virat Kohli got angry as Hardeep, uh, this is Hardik Pandya, was booed at the Vankere Stadium in Mumbai. The former Indian skipper supported the Mumbai Indian skipper even as his team went down against the host. Very good morning. You're watching NDTV 24-7. I'm Divya Vadva. We have breaking news coming in of two suspects in the Rameshwaram cafe blast that took place in Bengaluru have been detained by the NIA from West Bengal. The accused have been identified as Musafar Hussain Shazib, who is one of the main accused, and his accomplice, Abdul Mateen Ahmed Taha. Both suspects belonging to ISSL have been detained from West Bengal by the NIA. To get more on this, we have my colleague Saurabh Gupta joining us from West Bengal. We also have Pratibha Raman joining us from Bengaluru. Uh, Saurabh, to, over to you first. Uh, get us details as to what really led to the arrest of uh, these two uh, accused. I mean, they, uh, you know, they were identified weeks ago uh, by the NIA thanks to the CCTV footage. Uh, and now, finally, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they had been searching various locations, 18 locations to be precise, in various parts of the country that finally led for them to, you know, piece together exactly who was responsible for that blast. And now, uh, uh, where did they find these people? You know, the, the blast took place in Bengaluru, but these two have been detained in West Bengal. That's right. Two people who have been identified as the main suspects, the main people behind that blast at the Rameshwaram Cafe in Bengaluru have been detained from West Bengal by the NIA. They've been picked up from a place near Kolkata. And what we know is that Musavir Hussain Shazib is the accused who placed the improvised explosive device, the IED, at the cafe. And Abdul Mateen Taha is the mastermind behind the planning and execution of the blast. And subsequently, these two people had been evading uh, the law enforcement agencies that had been looking for them. The NIA has made a major breakthrough in being able to apprehend these two accused. They've been apprehended from a place near Kolkata. And what we know is that the, uh, according to the NIA, this was a multi-state operation uh, which was uh, supported by and with coordinated action and cooperation between the NIA, central intelligence agencies, state police agencies of West Bengal, Karnataka, Telangana and Kerala. So uh, state police agencies, NIA and multi-state operation coming together to nab these two main accused. Who are these main accused? Musavir Hussain Shazib is the main accused who placed the improvised explosive device or the IED at the Rameshwaram Cafe in Bengaluru. Remember, he was later seen on CCTV as well. And then, of course, there is Abdul Mateen Taha, who is the mastermind uh, behind the planning and the execution of the blast. So these two main accused have been picked up and, of course, by the NIA, in a multi-state operation, uh, but they've been picked up from a place near Kolkata. Right. Uh, we also have Pratibha Raman joining us uh, from Bengaluru, where the blast actually took place uh, at the Rameshwaram Cafe. Uh, you know, there were multiple agencies that were involved. The NIA had conducted searches in 18 different locations, and it wasn't just uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, as well as Telangana, but going up all the way till Uttar Pradesh, where searches were being conducted. The agency had also declared a reward of 10 lakh rupees on information leading to the arrest of the people that they had identified. And they had identified these people after they had made an arrest. Uh, uh, you know, there was a person person called Muzammil Sharif, the key conspirator at the time that they believed to be the key conspirator who was arrested last month. Well, in fact, even that arrest took place only after uh, a month after the blast that uh, rattled the city of Bengaluru, which was March 1st when the blast took place. And it was only after a month that this arrest was uh, recorded. Uh, multiple agencies that were working on this, but the NIA took over, I think, three days after the blast. And uh, multiple raids that were conducted across the nation as well to find out uh, uh, possible links between the different blasts that took place earlier as well. For, for instance, uh, the Shimoga, Shimoga blast as well as the Mangaluru blast 
blast that took place in 2022. Now, piecing together all of this, Muzamil, like you mentioned, was arrested a month after that, and he seems to have been the person who provided logistical support. And at that very same time, the NIA had identified two main suspects, Musavir Hussein as well as Abdul Taha. Musavir Hussein is uh, believed to be the man who carried out uh, this uh, particular explosion at Rameshwaram Cafe, and Abdul Taha is the key uh, or the mastermind behind this, and he seems to have provided all the help that was required by uh, the main suspect, that is Musavir Hussein here. And two of them were absconding, and a lot of efforts were on by the NIA, also seeking the help of citizens, like you mentioned, to identify uh, these two people. And uh, finally, now a breakthrough has arrived, and this could uh, help the NIA piece together how this uh, blast was carried out, what was the motive behind it. Several of the unanswered questions will now find uh, the answers to themselves. Right, uh, Pratima, uh, to get some of the answers, yes, we uh, also the have NIA Bhaskar Rao, the former commissioner working. of police of Bengaluru, joining us on the phone line. Uh, sir, uh, thank you for speaking to us here at NETV. Uh, the two suspects have finally been arrested. It had been a multiple agency uh, you know, uh, team that worked that has led to the arrest of these two suspects in the Rameshwaram ca uh, cafe uh, blast case. Uh, if you could get us details when it comes to, uh, you know, the kind of information that was uh, there. There was CCTV footage. We did see the suspect eating, uh, you know, rava idli before leaving, very casually leaving his bag in that restaurant and uh, which led to that blast. So uh, from there, the footage that we had was, uh, you know, very sketchy in terms of he was wearing a cap, but uh, that has yeah. led... Uh, to uh, you know, a significant breakthrough, uh, considering that the key conspirator and his accomplice both have now been arrested. Uh, Madam, I can only tell you that post-blast investigation has become extremely professional with the commencement of NIA. And here, the coordination between different agencies has not only been excellent, but has been very, very fast also. Today, nobody can engage in a terror attack in India and get away. That is the message which NIA and the coordination has done. And every terrorist leaves something or the other behind after carrying out some kind of an activity because he is not only nervous, he is not as professional as a law enforcement officer. But now the real challenge is to piece the evidence together and ensure that the trial is also very fast and conviction takes place in the case so that it deters others from doing so but really good investigation at ground level and post-blast investigation, I think we are now leading in the whole world as regards uh, terror cases are concerned. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Bhaskar Rao, for joining us, former uh, Commissioner of uh, Police uh, of Bengaluru, for getting us all those details. Uh, let's uh, just uh, cut across to the Prime Minister now, who is in Udhampur. Uh, he is addressing a rally in Jammu and Kashmir in the run-up to elections. याद है ना मैंने कहा था आप मुझ पे भरोसा कीजिए मैं 60 वर्षों की समस्याओं का समाधान करके दिखाऊंगा तब मैंने यहां माताओं बहनों के सम्मान की गारंटी दी थी गरीब को दो वक्त के खाने की चिंता न करनी पड़े इसकी गारंटी दी थी आज जम्मू कश्मीर के लाखों परिवारों के पास अगले पांच साल तक मुफ्त राशन की गारंटी है आज जम्मू कश्मीर के लाखों परिवारों के पास पांच लाख रुपए के मुफ्त इलाज की गारंटी है दस वर्ष पहले तक जम्मू कश्मीर के कितने ही गांव थे जहां बिजली पानी और सड़क तक नहीं थे आज गांव गांव तक बिजली पहुंच चुकी है आज जम्मू कश्मीर के 75 प्रतिशत से ज्यादा घरों को पाइप से पानी की सुविधा मिल रही है 
इतना ही नहीं ये डिजिटल का जमाना है डिजिटल कनेक्टिविटी चाहिए मोबाइल टावर दूर सुदूर पहाड़ों में भी लगाने का बड़ा तेज अभियान चलाया है भाई और बहनों मोदी की गारंटी यानी गारंटी पूरा होने की गारंटी आप याद कीजिए कांग्रेस की कमजोर सरकारों ने शाहपुर कंडी डैम को कैसे दशकों तक लटकाए रखा जम्मू के किसानों के खेत सूखे थे गांव अंधेरे में थे लेकिन हमारे हक का रावी का पानी पाकिस्तान जा रहा था मोदी ने किसानों को गारंटी दी थी और इसे भी पूरा करके दिखाया है इससे कठुआ और सांबा के हजारों किसानों को फायदा हुआ है यही नहीं इस डैम से जो बिजली पैदा होगी वो जम्मू कश्मीर के घरों को रोशन करेंगे भाई और बहनों मोदी विकसित भारत के लिए विकसित जम्मू कश्मीर के निर्माण की गारंटी दे रहा है लेकिन कांग्रेस नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस पीडीपी और बाकी सारे दल जम्मू कश्मीर को फिर उन पुराने दिनों की तरफ ले जाना चाहते हैं इन परिवार चलित पार्टियों ने परिवार के द्वारा ही चलने वाली पार्टियों ने जम्मू कश्मीर का जितना नुकसान किया उतना नुकसान किसी ने नहीं किया है यहां तो पॉलिटिकल पार्टियां मतलब ऑफ द फैमिली बाय द फैमिली फॉर द फैमिली सत्ता के लिए इन्होंने जम्मू कश्मीर में 370 की ऐसी दीवार बना दी थी कि जम्मू कश्मीर के लोग बाहर नहीं झोंक सकते थे और बाहर वाला जम्मू कश्मीर की तरफ नहीं झोंक सकता था और ऐसा भ्रम बना के रखा था कब बस उनकी जिंदगी ये 370 है तभी बचेगी ऐसा झूठ चलाया ऐसा झूठ चलाया आपके आशीर्वाद से मोदी ने 370 की दीवार गिरा दी दीवार गिरा दी इतना नहीं उस मलबे को भी जमीन में गाड़ दिया है मैंने मैं चुनौती देता हूं हिंदुस्तान की कोई पॉलिटिकल पार्टी हिम्मत करके आ जाए विशेष करके मैं कांग्रेस को चुनौती देता हूं वो घोषणा करे वो 370 को वापस लाएंगे ये देश उनका मुंह तक देखने को तैयार नहीं होगा ये कैसे कैसे भ्रम फैलाते हैं 
कैसे कैसे लोगों को डरा के रखते हैं ये कहते थे 370 हटी तो आग लग जाएगी जम्मू कश्मीर हमें छोड़ के चला जाएगा लेकिन जम्मू कश्मीर के नौजवानों ने इनको आईना दिखा दिया अब देखिए जब यहां उनकी नहीं चली जम्मू कश्मीर के लोग उनकी असलियत को जान गए अब जम्मू कश्मीर में उनके झूठे वादे भ्रम की माया जाल नहीं चल पा रही है तो ये लोग अब जम्मू कश्मीर के बाहर देश के लोगों के बीच भ्रम फैलाने का खेल खेल रहे हैं ये कहते हैं कि 370 के हटने से देश को कोई लाभ नहीं हुआ जिस राज्य में जाते हैं वहां भी बोलते हैं तुम्हारे राज्य को क्या लाभ हुआ तुम्हारे राज्य को क्या लाभ हुआ 370 के हटने से क्या लाभ हुआ है वो जम्मू कश्मीर की मेरी बहन बेटियों को पूछो जो अपने हकों के लिए तरस रही थी ये उनका भाई ये उनका बेटा उन्होंने उनके हक वापस दिए हैं जरा कांग्रेस के लोगों जरा देश भर के दलित नेताओं से मैं कहना चाहता हूं यहां के हमारे दलित भाई बहन हमारे वाल्मीकि भाई बहन देश आजाद हुए तब से परेशानी झेल रहे थे जरा आकर के उन वाल्मीकि भाई बहनों से पूछो गड्ढा ब्राह्मण से पूछो कोहली से पूछो और पहाड़ी परिवार हो मचैल माता की भूमि में रहने वाले मेरे पडरी साथी हो अब हर किसी को संविधान में मिले अधिकार मिलने लगे हैं अब हमारे फौजियों की वीर माताओं को चिंता नहीं करनी पड़ती क्योंकि पत्थरबाजी नहीं होती है इतना ही नहीं घाटी की वो माताएं मुझे आशीर्वाद देती हैं उनको चिंता रहती थी कि बेटा अगर दो चार दिन दिखाई न दे तो उनको लगता था कहीं गलत हाथों में तो नहीं फंस गया है आज कश्मीर घाटी की हर माता चैन की नींद सोती है क्योंकि अब उनका बच्चा बर्बाद होने से बच रहा है साथियों अब स्कूल नहीं जलाए जाते बल्कि स्कूल सजाए जाते हैं अब यहां एम्स बन रहे हैं आईआईटी बन रहे हैं आईआईएम बन रहे हैं अब आधुनिक टनल आधुनिक और चौड़ी सड़कें शानदार रेल्स का सफर जम्मू कश्मीर की तकदीर बन रही है जम्मू हो या कश्मीर अब रिकॉर्ड संख्या में पर्यटक और श्रद्धालु आने लगे हैं ये सपना यहां की अनेक पीढ़ियों ने देखा है और मैं आपको गारंटी देता हूं आपका सपना आपका सपना ये मोदी का संकल्प है
आपके सपनों को पूरा करने के लिए हर पल आपके नाम आपके सपनों को पूरा करने के लिए हर पल देश के नाम विकसित भारत का सपना पूरा करने के लिए 24 फोर बाय सेवन ट्वेंटी फोर बाय सेवन फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सेवन ये मोदी की गारंटी है दस सालों में हमने आतंकवादियों और भ्रष्टाचारियों पर घेरा बहुत ही कसा है अब आने वाले पांच सालों में इस क्षेत्र को विकास की नई ऊंचाई पर ले जाना है साथियों दस साल के अंदर अंदर जम्मू कश्मीर पूरी तरह से बदल चुका है सड़क बिजली पानी यात्रा प्रवास वो तो है सबसे बड़ी बात है जम्मू कश्मीर का मन बदला है निराशा में से आशा की ओर बढ़े हैं जीवन पूरी तरह विश्वास से भरा हुआ है इतना विकास यहां हुआ है चारों तरफ विकास हो रहा है लोग कहेंगे मोदी जी अरे इतना कर लिया आप चिंता मत कीजिए हम आपके साथ हैं आपका साथ उस पे प्रति तो मेरा अपार विश्वास है मैं यहां नहा आता तो भी मुझे पता था कि जम्मू कश्मीर का मेरा नाता इतना गहरा है कि आप मेरे लिए मुझसे भी ज्यादा करेंगे लेकिन मैं तो आया हूं मां वैष्णो देवी के चरणों में बैठे हुए आप लोगों के भी दर्शन करने के लिए मां वैष्णो देवी की छत्र छाया में जीने वाले भी मेरे लिए दर्शन के योग्य होते हैं और जब आप लोग कहते हैं इतना कर लिया इतना हो गया इतना हो गया हम वो इतने ज्यादा क्या कर सकते हैं मेरे जम्मू कश्मीर के भाई बहन आपने पहले इतने बुरे दिन देखे हैं कि आपको ये सब बहुत लग रहा है बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है विकास जैसा लग रहा है लेकिन जो मोदी है ना वो तो बहुत बड़ा सोचता है ये मोदी दूर का सोचता है और इसलिए अब तक जो हुआ है वो तो ट्रेलर है ट्रेलर मुझे तो नए जम्मू कश्मीर की नई और शानदार तस्वीर बनाने के लिए जुट जाना है वो समय दूर नहीं जब जम्मू कश्मीर में भी विधानसभा के चुनाव होंगे जम्मू कश्मीर को वापस राज्य का दर्जा मिलेगा आप अपने विधायक अपने मंत्रियों से अपने सपने साझा कर सकेंगे हर वर्ग की समस्याओं का तेजी से समाधान होगा यहां जो सड़कों और रेल का काम चल रहा है वो तेजी से पूरा होगा देश विदेश से बड़ी बड़ी कंपनियां बड़ी बड़ी फैक्ट्रियां और ज्यादा संख्या में आएगी जम्मू कश्मीर टूरिज्म के साथ ही 
स्पोर्ट्स और स्टार्टअप के लिए जाना जाएगा इस संकल्प को लेकर मुझे जम्मू कश्मीर को आगे बढ़ाना है भाइयों और बहनों ये परिवार चलित परिवारवादी परिवार के लिए जीने मरने वाली पार्टियों विकास की भी विरोधी है और विरासत की भी विरोधी है आपने देखा होगा कि कांग्रेस राम मंदिर से कितनी नफरत करती है को प्रेजेंट बाय इंटेलिजेंस मीट्स आर्ट विद ऑल न्यू मोट biggest carnival of democracy india's general election prime minister modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick the opposition is trying to mount a united challenge and the southern parties are standing their ground as battle lines are drawn join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024 indian elections a festival like no other and ndtv covers elections like no other when india votes you count on us can you give us a few, like say three of your strongest takeaways of not to do's or to do's because it's a map you have to parenting you have to, it's a slow process but the three things one has to get, one can keep in mind even today in this very stress pressure driven world goal driven world for our kids well i think the main takeaway is that parents need to connect with their children understand who their children are and understand that every goal or every solution out there will not be tailor made for your child you have to attune to each child's essence and connect to who to that connect to who that child is the second takeaway is connect before you correct first try to understand what's going on within the child their behavior is only on the surface but underneath the behavior is a need that the child has that we have to help the child discover and solve and number 3 is every reaction to your child is more about you than it is about your child so if you want to really do this as consciously as possible you have to examine your own reactions and understand where they are coming from and and number 4 the traditional ways of disciplining our children only create more harm the main concern is this constant hunger for approval and significance from the outside world Uh, Dr. Shafali, I had the chance to hear you on Super Soul Sunday talking to Oprah Winfrey. This is um, uh, she loves your work and. और हमने इन्हीं लोगों से कहा कि एक दिन आएगा जब राम लला भव्य मंदिर में बिराजेंगे. और तीन बातें कभी भूल नहीं सकते एक 500 साल के अविरत संघर्ष के बाद यह हुआ है आप सहमत हैं 500 साल के अविरत संघर्ष के बाद हुआ है आप सहमत हैं दूसरा पूरी न्यायिक प्रक्रिया की कसौटी से कस करके न्याय के तराजू से तोल करके अदालत के निर्णय से ये काम हुआ है सहमत है तीसरा ये भव्य राम मंदिर सरकारी खजाने से नहीं देश के कोटि कोटि नागरिकों ने पाई पाई दान देकर बनाया है सहमत है जब उस मंदिर की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा हुई 
जब उस मंदिर की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा हुई तो Prime Minister Modi there in Udhampur in Jammu and Kashmir talking about how JNK has changed over the last ten years and will also be answering the question as to what are the benefits of abrogation of Article 370, saying that the women of Jammu and Kashmir will provide that answer. Moving on now to K Kavita, who has been produced in court in the Delhi liquor policy scam case. The CBI is seeking a custody of K Kavita for the next five days in the liquor policy scam. The CBI has gone on to say that they've got enough evidence when it comes to arresting K Kavita. which is why that they are demanding that arrest to remember that she was arrested uh, by the CBI yesterday and uh, just after that uh, they are now seeking a uh, custody of K Kavita do remember that she has remained in judicial custody since her arrest by the ED on the 15th of last month in the Delhi liquor policy scam uh, K Kavita currently is in uh, Tihar jail but it was on the 5th of this month that the CBI was allowed to question K Kavita inside Tihar jail the enforcement directorate had arrested K Kavita from her Banjara his residence in Hyderabad last month she has remained in judicial custody but now the cbi wants her in their custody we have my colleague uh, ishita joining us on the phone line to get us more on this ishita take us through the proceedings in court with the cbi they are saying that they have enough in evidence sir, to incriminate k kavita which is why they are asking for her custody for the next 5 days Yes. Uh, so uh, the, the court has, uh, uh, you know, the hearing has now been uh, will take place post uh, 2 p.m. today, and uh, the, inside the court, uh, K, uh, K Kavita's counsel was, uh, you know, uh, basically pressure. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Ishita. We can hear you. So K Kavita has been accused of being a key member in the South Group, which the investigative agencies allege paid the Aam Aadmi Party kickbacks amounting to over 100 crore rupees in return for a share of liquor licenses in the national capital. So the CBI is saying that it was a large criminal conspiracy involving people from the South Group and others. And our ground uh, work, uh, this is on the basis of statements that were made by K Kavita, appears to be the key conspirator, and she has given bribe of over 100 crore to the Aam Aadmi Party. Is what the CBI is saying. They have enough in evidence. and now are seeking the custody of k kavita in other news uh, moving on to haryana and fir has been filed against uh, the school bus driver in uh, the accident that took place on thursday which resulted in the death of six uh, school children now the bus driver has uh, been booked for culpable homicide and violation of uh, uh, crimes as well as criminal conspiracy a four member government appointed panel will probe the school bus crash that killed students aged between 13 to 16 including five boys and one girl in the accident 20 other students were also injured in haryana's mahender The Haryana Education Department has called for a meeting regarding the vehicle safety policy at three o'clock this afternoon. All district education officers, elementary education officers, and block education officers of the state will participate in that meeting from various areas of the state via video conferencing. In this, we have a driver who was driving the car. We have arrested him. 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 और अन्य स्टाफ का जो मेन मेंबर है वो सी आर सिंह जो इस सेक्टर के अकाउंट है स्कूल में और वो गाड़ी वगैरह का सारा इनकी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इन लोगों की जिसको इन्होंने पूरा तरह से ठीक नहीं किया है और जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की गाइडलाइन है गाड़ियों बसों के बारे में उसको भी इन्होंने अच्छी तरह फॉलो नहीं किया है इन बेस पर हमने तीन व्यक्तियों की इसमें अरेस्टिंग हमने करनी है और जो छः एक इसमें टोटल बैठी हुई थी इसमें हमने उन सबका पोस्टमार्टम करवा दिया है पोस्टमार्टम कराने के उपरांत उनकी डेड बॉडियाँ हमने उनके घर के हवाले ड्राइवर है जो गाड़ी को चला रहा था धर्मेंद्र उसको अरेस्ट कर लिया है एक प्रिंसिपल है दीप्ति और एक होशियार सिंह है जो सेक्रेटरी का काम देखता था उसको अरेस्ट किया है कंटिन्यू सीनियर अधिकारी के यही आदेश है हमारे एसपी साहब के कि इसमें अपना पूरा गाड़ियां हैं उसको देखेंगे इसमें हमारा सिविल प्रशासन बी डी साहब है वो भी आए थे सबको डायरेक्शन डी सी मैडम की स्तर तरफ से हो गया उसमें हम प्रॉपर अभियान चलाएंगे और जिसके खिलाफ जो भी कार्रवाई बनेगी हम आगे भी करेंगे 
fine has been imposed and of course many questions being raised as to why was the school operating on an off day, a holiday on the occasion of Eid and also why was the road tax not paid since 2018 since when the fitness certificate has expired, a fitness test will be conducted today. Well, moving on to more news, uh, this is an IIT Guwahati student who's been found dead on campus. He was found dead hanging inside his hostel room. The body of that first-year-old student at IIT Guwahati was found late last night. The police is now probing the cause behind the death of the 20-year-old BTEC student from Bihar whose body was found inside his room. Now, the police have registered a case of unnatural death and the postpartum of the body has been done. The family has demanded a probe. The police sources have added that a suicide note was found found, which has been sent for analysis. Moving on to Ghaziabad, and a boy has been found dead in a high-rise society. He has fallen from the 21st floor uh, of that housing society in Ghaziabad. The class 11 student was uh, found dead uh, by uh, the police, and they're investigating all kind of angles, including suicide. That class 11 uh, suicide, uh, student who died in Ghaziabad after falling from the 21st floor of that residential building in the ATS, Advantage Society, according to police, the initial reports have suggested that the possibility of suicide is possible, given the fact that there was a suicide note that was recovered from the pocket of the boy. However, after a thorough investigation into all possible angles surrounding the incident, and there have been uh, eyewitnesses who have claimed that they last saw the boy with two of his friends on the 24th floor of that very building, talking and taking pictures. Hospital हम इसके सुसाइड नोट का और अन्य बिंदुओं पर भी जांच कर रहे हैं आगे की वैधानिक कार्रवाई की जा रही है देखिए अब तक की जानकारी के मुताबिक गाजियाबाद के इंदिरा प्रम में एटीएस एडवांटेज सोसाइटी है वहां पर छात्र था जो कि 11th में पढ़ता था वो अपने दोस्त के घर गया था और 24वें फ्लोर पर दोनों फोटोग्राफी कर रहे थे फोटोग्राफी करने के बाद उसने कहा कि वो अभी नीचे से आ रहा है लेकिन थोड़ी ही देर में उसी बिल्डिंग के 21वें फ्लोर से वो नीचे गिर गया और उसके बाद उसकी मौत हो गई इसके बाद सोसाइटी के लोगों ने पुलिस को कॉल किया पुलिस मौके पर पहुंची पुलिस सुसाइड नोट बरामद किया है हालांकि उस नोट में क्या लिखा है अभी तक साफ नहीं है लेकिन पुलिस का कहना यह है कि वो सुसाइड के अलावा कुछ और एंगल से इस पूरे मामले की जांच कर रही है कि आखिर वो छात्र कैसे गिरा अपने आप गिरा या तो गिराया गया तो इसको लेकर अभी जांच चल रही है लेकिन जो सुसाइड नोट मिला है उसमें क्या कुछ कंटेंट है उसको भी देखा जा रहा है कुल मिलाकर अभी तक ये साफ नहीं है कि आप गिरा या फिर गिराया गया उसको लेकर पुलिस जांच कर रही है लेकिन शुरुआती जांच में ऐसा लगता है कि ये मामला सुसाइड का हो सकता है क्योंकि जो छात्र उसके पास सुसाइड नोट मिला है थैंक यू मुकेश फॉर गेटिंग अस ऑल दोज डिटेल्स Moving on to more news, and Home Minister Amit Shah will address a public meeting at St. Mary School in Uttar Pradesh's Muradabad, and that's going to be taking place today. While uh, we also have uh, on the other side, uh, of course, it's uh, Amit Shah there addressing that public meeting, and that's going to take place in Uttar Pradesh this afternoon. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi and Chief Minister N.K. Stalin will also be addressing an election rally and that's going to be taking place in Coimbatore in support of the India Coalition candidate. Rahul Gandhi will be campaigning for DNK candidate Raj Kumar, who has been pitted against BJP state president Anna Malai on the 19th of this month in the first phase of elections. Late AIA DMK Chief Jay Lalata is virtually seeking votes for her party's Madurai candidate. The candidate, Dr. Saravaran, has used artificial intelligence technology to get Jay Lalata's voice creatively to seek votes. The Samajwadi Party has never won the seat to consider a stronghold of BJP leaders Menika Gandhi and Varun Gandhi. The BJP, however, has dropped Varun Gandhi and instead fielded Jitin Prasad as a girl. A candidate from that very seat for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. We're talking about Pili Beat that's going to polls in the first phase on the 19th of this month. Big blow to the BJP in Maharashtra just before Lok Sabha elections, and we're talking about uh, BJP leader Mohite uh, Patil, who has resigned from the party's membership. BJP has made uh, Ranjit Singh. Nibalkar is a candidate from uh, Mada, the Lok Sabha constituency. Angered by this, Patel submitted his resignation to the BJP. And after which, he has, uh, well, from what sources are telling us, that he met with Sharad Pawar in Pune. 
Moving on now to news from uh, South and we turn our focus to the constituency of Virudu Nagar where BJP is hoping to draw on the star power when it comes to actor turned politician Radhika to take on the Congress veteran and incumbent MP Manikam Tagore. popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want to change, and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic, like anywhere else, play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroots management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jayalalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress-DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there, shops will be closed and we will not, they will not have, we will have the 40 MPs of the India alliance together in the parliament and we will all stand together as India alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Kant. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Veera Raghav for NDTV. And now the Association for Democratic Reforms has released the data for, uh, this is the data for the richest and the poorest candidates in the fray in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. As per the data, Kamal Nath's son, Nakul Nath, is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crore rupees. The data also shows that 450 of the 1,600 candidates are crore patis, while 10 candidates have gone on to declare that they have zero assets. Take a look. Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIA DMK candidate from Erode Ashok Kumar, 
662 crore rupees and the bjp candidate from sivaganga devanathan yadav 304 crore rupees these are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the lok sabha elections analysis by the ngo adr or election watch of the affidavit submitted by 16 18 candidates has revealed that 450 that is around 28% are crore patis Nakul Nath the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chindwara Madhya Pradesh is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erode in Tamil Nadu Ashok Kumar is the second richest candidate and the BJP candidate from Sivaganga in Tamil Nadu Devnathan Yadav T is the third richest in the fray in phase 1. जी बिल्कुल ये तो ए का हमेशा से मुद्दा रहा है कि जो धनबल और बाहुबल को अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज़्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एम उनकी एसेट्स दो करोड़ से ऊपर थे Interestingly 10 candidates in the fray in the first phase have declared their assets as zero. A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Pondraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Kartik Gendla ji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे में सिर्फ 0.03 पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंट चांसेज परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट्स हु आर इन फ्रे इन दर्स्ट फेज ऑफ दीज पोल्स है of 4 crore and 51 lakh in the first phase the highest number of rich candidates are in tamil nadu ai dmk has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore while 22 candidates fielded by dmk have declared average assets worth around 31 crore clearly the influence of money power seems visible everywhere in these lok sabha elections In Delhi with Manoj Thakur Himanshu Shekhar for NDTV And Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has hit back at the Congress for calling BJP leaders dictators. He has reminded the Congress of the emergency of 1975 in an interview. Rajnath Singh has gone on to say that he could not attend his mother's last rites after she died due to a brain hemorrhage because he was denied parole at the time. Listen in. Brain hemorrhage ho gaya tha. To 27 din hospital mein rahi death ho gayi. Lekin main aa nahi saka usme. मेरी रिहाई नहीं हुई मुझे पेरोल भी नहीं दिया गया पेरोल नहीं दिया गया मैंने अपना बाल वगैरह जो भी सिर का बनवाना था सब जेल में ही बनवाया था वो लोग हम लोगों के ऊपर तानाशाही का आरोप लगाते हैं Now, in a move to ensure a 100% voter turnout, the Election Commission in West Tripura Parliamentary Constituency has launched a pioneering initiative. These are home voting uh, that can be taken place, uh, where voting facilities reach the voters right at their doorstep for the disabled, the blind voters, apart from the elderly. The Election Commission introduced home voting facilities, enabling elderly voters aged 85 years and above. as well as people with disabilities those registered for the facilities to cast their ballot from the convenience of their homes many have voted after years welcoming the initiative voters commend the election administration and officers for facilitating their fundamental right to vote from the comfort of their homes age to sar gaya che oi school ditam line dui ta sire okono to sar barid do na sar balise माइंडसेट स्पार्क सोसाइटल चेन्ज to create a opportunity for more inclusive 
and accessible world for people with disabilities. In Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. And Congress MP Rahul Gandhi addressed a rally in Rajasthan where he commented on a section of the media. Rahul Gandhi has gone on to talk about how people in India, for them, their biggest issues are unemployment and inflation. But for a section of the media, their biggest issues seem to have been the Ambani wedding. Listen in. If you ask the people of India, they will tell you that the number of महंगाई मगर अगर आप हिंदुस्तान के मीडिया से पूछेंगे या मीडिया को देखेंगे तो आपको लगेगा सबसे जरूरी मुद्दा अंबानी जी की शादी है उधर आपको विदेश से हजारों लोग आते हुए देखेंगे 24 घंटा मीडिया में आपको नरेंद्र मोदी जी का चेहरा दिखेगा well, uh, switching tracks uh, now to Bengaluru and two suspects in the Rameshwaram cafe blast that took place in Bengaluru in March have been detained by the NIA from West Bengal. The accused have been identified as Musavir Hussain Shazib, who is one of the main accused and his accomplice, Abdul Martin Ahmed Ataha. Both suspects who belong to ISSL were detained from West Bengal by the NIA, in which this is a case in which several people, uh, close to about 10 people who were injured in that blast that took place in Bengaluru. We have Pratibha joining us. Uh, Pratibha, take us uh, uh, through, you know, like there were different searches uh, conducted by various teams that has finally led uh, to uh, the two suspects, the main accused, the one that we saw, the CCTV footage that we had of the man in that cap who had gone inside uh, the cafe. He was having that rava idli before he left that bag in the restaurant and walked very calmly outside the Rameshwaram cafe that day. Well, coincidentally, just as we speak, this is the exact time when uh, the suspect seems to have walked out of uh, the Rameshwaram cafe after planting the bat uh, there on March 1st. And this blast definitely rattled the entire city of uh, Bengaluru, especially for a blast to take place, one, in a famous outlet like Rameshwaram cafe, and two, in an area that is known to be the IP belt of the city. One month after that, the NIA uh, made the first arrest, and uh, that was of the man who uh, provided all the logistical support, Muzamin. And uh, he seemed to have supported two of them, and uh, they have been identified by the NIA as uh, the two uh, key suspects in this uh, particular case. And like you mentioned, Musavir Hussain as well as Abdul Taha have now been arrested. They were absconding for quite a while now, and in fact, the NIA made desperate attempts in terms of raids in different locations across the nation, as well as uh, putting out the pictures of uh, these two suspects, uh, seeking, uh, uh, putting out an advisory, seeking the help of all the citizens as well in terms of nabbing these two suspects. And finally, now, the two main identified suspects uh, that uh, the NIA had made public have now been arrested in uh, West Bengal is what we hear. And uh, out of these two, Musave Hussain seems to have been the man who walked in to plant the explosive. And Abdul Taha seems to have been the mastermind behind this, providing all the support as well as in terms of the execution of uh, this particular blast. Now we'll have to wait and see whether there were uh, similarities uh, drawn to the other blast that took place in uh, 2022 and also the motive behind this and how they really carried out this. All of these questions still remain unanswered, but all eyes are on the interrogation that will take place with respect to these two suspects. Right, uh, Pratibha Raman, thank you so much uh, for highlighting uh, all those uh, details. And of course, uh, those two uh, masterminds uh, behind the blast have been arrested by the NIA. And like she mentioned, 18 uh, locations were uh, searched, uh, the uh, search operations and raids that took place across various parts of the country that's finally led to the arrest in West Bengal. Getting you international news, news coming in from the United States where the FBI director in a hearing on Thursday said uh, that uh, to a House panel that he's seen the threat from foreign terrorists rise to a whole uh, different level after the 7th of October last year. He's urged Congress to reauthorize Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act uh, before it expires on the 19th of this month. A bill that would do uh, was uh, it had been blocked as far as uh, Wednesday by Conservative Revolt. Now, leading this is leaving its approval uncertain as the deadline approaches. Uh, Ray has gone on to say the bill was critical in securing the nation and the 
failure to reauthorize it would put Americans at risk. Some big changes have been made to the UK family visa rules. The minimum income required now for British citizens and residents, including those of Indian heritage, wanting to sponsor their relatives on a family visa has now been increased by over 55% as of Thursday. For someone to be a sponsor, uh, this is in order to sponsor their family, to come visit them in the United Kingdom or to come stay with them, they must have a minimum annual salary of £29,000 up from £18,600. By early next year, that's 2025, this will have increased to about two times more to match the skilled worker visa salary threshold to the tune of £38,700. And with that, we're slipping into a short break. Back with a whole lot more to stay with us. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Go Prime Minister Modi power. Congress ne sadhyantra kara tha. The 2024 campaign hot side. Late Torun Gogoi, the three-time chief minister. The biggest face. The big faces. Only on NDTV 24/7. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7. talking but very little being said too many voices but hardly any being heard you turn to a show that puts you front and center a show that headlines the stories of the people by the people for the people the biggest carnival of democracy India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn... Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. Detains two suspects in the Bengaluru blast case. NIA picks the suspects from a hideout near Kolkata. All identified suspects have been apprehended. 
politics erupts over Bengaluru blast case. Bengaluru blast in uh, the Bengaluru blast case, two suspects have been held from Kolkata. BJP says Bengal a safe heaven for terrorists. TMC hits back. This Bengal is cooperating with the agencies. PM's mega rally in Udhampur, Jammu and Kashmir. PM targets opposition over Article 370. He says Congress PDP wants to hold back JNK and dares Congress to bring back Article 370. National Conference announces Lok Sabha candidates in Jammu and Kashmir, ex-Chief Minister Omar Abdullah to contest from Baramula. Om Omar says undeclared emergency in country right now. K. Kavita is produced in court in Delhi liquor policy scam. CBI seeks five-day custody of K. Kavita. CBI says got enough evidence to arrest Kavita. She is currently in judicial custody at the Tihar jail. Haryana school bus accident aftermath. Uh, the education department calls meeting on vehicle safety. Schools in the area shut for two days. Investigation Agency has apprehended the two key accused in the Rameshwaram cafe blast in Bengaluru. The two suspects have been picked up from their hideout in Kolkata this morning. Muzaffir, Muzaffir Hussain Shahzeb and Abdul Mateen Taha have been picked up as per NIA while Shahzeb planted the explosive device. Inside a bag at the cafe, Taha was responsible for planning the attack and their subsequent disappearance, the anti-terror agency said. Another key conspirator, Muzaf, uh, Muzamil Sharif, who, who extended logistical support to the main accused, was arrested on 26th of March. Ten customers and hotel staff members were injured in the blast at uh, this popular Bengaluru cafe on the 1st of March. I'm joined by my colleague Saurabh Gupta for more on this story. Saurabh, uh, understandably, um, these two men who have been apprehended right now, they belong to Bengaluru, but after the blast, they fed, fled to Kolkata. Have there been any, um, you know, any news on why they, they fled to Kolkata and why they found Kolkata as a safe heaven? Well, uh, they actually fled to uh, uh, what we're being given to understand is that they were uh, picked up from, uh, you know, uh, somewhere near uh, East Midnapur and uh, probably where they were hiding was a well-known uh, tourist destination and therefore they would have found safe heaven there. There are hotels available there and therefore uh, that is one of the reasons why pr probably they chose that particular location and near Kolkata, it's not in Kolkata, so to speak. Uh, now, Musavir Hussain uh, Shazib, like you said, is the main accused. He was the one who planted the in, uh, improvised explosive device, or the IED, in that place. And Abdul Mateen Taha is the mastermind behind the planning and the execution of blast and the subsequent evasion of these two from the investigative agencies. They fled after carrying out that blast. And remember, one of them was also seen on CCTV cameras. But what we know now is that the NIA has managed to uh, apprehend these two main accused from, uh, you know, uh, West Bengal. And uh, what we know is that in the early morning of today, uh, there were, uh, you know, they were, the NIA was successful in tracing these two uh, absconding accused. And uh, they also figured out that they were hiding there under false identities. And then, of course, the NIA says that, uh, you know, coordinated action and cooperation between the NIA Central Agen Intelligence Agencies, State Police Agencies of West Bengal, Telangana, Karnataka and Kerala Police uh, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, involved in the operation. And therefore, this was a successful operation where the two main accused, the two main masterminds have finally uh, been arrested by mm -hmm. the National Investigation Agency, which is primarily an anti-terror investigation agency. And therefore, uh, their uh, primary lookout would be for the accused in the blast and they managed to do so after a massive operation involving, uh, you know, cooperation from several agencies and uh, they've managed to finally pick up these two accused mm. from uh, this place and now uh, what we're being given to Sarab, understand is... Uh, uh, as, as you mentioned uh, that they have to, been picked uh, up... You know, uh, Kolkata. 
Saurabh, as you mentioned that they have been picked up from East Midnapur. Are they being brought to Kolkata for uh, interrogation? You know, I mean, it'll, uh, in all probability, the NIA will take a transit remand and uh, obviously uh, they would be moved to where the investigation is and uh, or uh, wherever the NIA chooses fit. That is completely the prerogative of the NIA and they will, of course, you know, take a transit remand in all probability or produce them in court, uh, you know, and take a transit remand or whatever it is. The procedures will be followed. There's a certain procedure when you pick up an accused hmm. and those ag the agency will have to follow that procedure and they will uh, take them to wherever necessary for their investigation. Pratibha, the news uh, must have reached Bengaluru by now that these two accused have been nabbed near Kolkata, not in Kolkata. They've been nabbed in East Midnapur. Tell us uh, what's been the reaction in, in the city after this. Well, in fact, uh, Bengaluru was definitely rattled on March 1st when the blast took place at this very cafe. It's Back to uh, Pratibha um, when her audio is uh, better. But the news that we are reporting is that uh, two suspects in the Bengaluru blast case, Muzaf Muzavir Hussain and Abdul Matin Taha, have been picked up from East Midnapur, which is near Kolkata, and that's in West Bengal. It has been a multi state, multi agency operation. Uh, let me go back to Pratibha. Uh, she was speaking about uh, the reactions that have come in from Bengaluru post uh, this news. Well, in fact, what we saw in Bengaluru was one of resilience, especially after the blast that took place on March 1st. And there was the first arrest uh, that was recorded a month after the blast. And now there seems to be some sort of a relief on the minds of all these people because we're talking of uh, a blast that took place right during the daytime uh, and in the IT belt of uh, the city. And that was uh, something that was definitely not digestible by Bengalurians, mainly because Rameshwaram Cafe is one of the most thronged outlets as far as Bengaluru is concerned. Around four outlets across uh, the city here. And uh, for a blast to take place, such a brazen attack that uh, 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 rattled the entire city of Bengaluru. Well, now, uh, all of them seem to be heaving a sigh of relief. Finally, there was uh, there is some breakthrough of sorts in this particular case. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of reaction that we are picking up now. In fact, coincidentally, the time that we speak in right now is the exact time when uh, the suspect seems to have walked out of uh, this cafe uh, on March 1st after uh, planting the uh, bag there uh, near the washing area. And uh, after that, several of the CCTV cameras were examined in detail. A um, dedicated team that was uh, uh, set aside for examining every CCTV footage. And he seems to have walked out, uh, avoiding all the CCTV cameras and uh, taken a bus from Bellari to different other places. There were also modules that were uh, patterns that were uh, drawn up in terms of uh, the blast that took place in 2022 in uh, Mangluru as well as uh, Shimoga. Multiple uh, raids that were conducted by the NIA that took over this case three days after the blast. And finally, now we have some sort of answers to all those questions that were left uh, unanswered. Now the missing pieces would be put together in terms of the motive behind this and uh, uh, who are the key conspirators, whether there was a bigger network that was involved. All of these are still remaining to be answered. But right now, yes, a big sigh of relief with this good news. Thank you very much, uh, Pratibha and uh, Saurabh. Well, Saurabh is still there. Saurabh, uh, what do we expect as the next course of action? Are there may, uh, still more leads that uh, the Bengal police is looking into in conjunction with NIA? Well, you know, I mean, uh, there have been political statements uh, on the sidelines, but I think what's important to note is that agencies uh, in you know when it comes to uh, anti-terror or ops have to be in sync with each other have to work with each other intelligence has to be shared and when that happens you'd have breakthroughs uh, for example this was a joint operation that was uh, conducted uh, NIA of course is the primary lead in this organization it's the NIA's investigation the NIA would have had those inputs uh, but uh, obviously there were uh, you know also cooperation from local police 
and when you have such cooperation and when you have such sync and coordination between agencies the agencies function well and that's something that you see in the terms of these arrests as well uh, there will be political statements on the sidelines you know but obviously it is at the end of the day uh, you know something that is a terror related case and obviously the agencies have worked together and they've managed to attain this breakthrough the nia this is a huge breakthrough for the nia and the nia is also acknowledged in its statement that look there were uh, several other uh, you know coordinated efforts by several other agencies including uh, the state police of four states and also central intelligence agencies so this would have been a joint operation at all levels and that is something that perhaps is uh, the takeaway that when you have co proper cooperation when you have intelligence sharing when you have uh, you know agencies that are uh, working towards the same goal and not working uh, uh, against each other you will have uh, breakthroughs you will have uh, investigations that mm -hmm. will be successful and you will have actually uh, this uh, uh, you know situation where you can punish those responsible for such anti-india crimes very uh, big story uh, sort of indeed and big breakthrough by the nia considering that we are getting into uh, the election season the general elections also begin from uh, the 19th which is friday next friday and just before that, the Bengal police, along with NIA, several other agencies have worked together to achieve this breakthrough, picking up these two suspects from near Kolkata, from East Pitnapur. Now, uh, Bengal BJP says that Bengal has become a safe haven for terrorists, but Trinamool Congress says that Bengal police has been suppressing anti-national forces. Uh, TMC also says that Bengal government is cooperating with the agencies that has been proven once again. I am joined uh, by uh, two speakers right now, Riju Datta, who is the spokesperson of Trinamool Congress and Dr. Shatarupa, who is the spokesperson of BJP. Uh, Mr. Datta, um, you know, why is Trinamool Congress saying that the, uh, the Bengal police is suppressing anti-national forces? I mean, isn't it a contradictory statement when you say that Bengal police is suppressing and then uh, saying that the Bengal government is uh, cooperating with the agencies? Look, uh, I'll be very upfront. It is the duty of the Bengal police, the state government, the ruling political party to stand shoulder to shoulder and cooperate with the central agency and with the union government when it is a matter of national security. But the unfortunate thing is the trolling chief of the BJP, Amit Malviya, he has to do politics over everything and he goes and tweets about, you know, uh, unnecessary political things. Now, when he does all that nonsense, then we have to give him a reply in his own coin. Then we have to say that Mr. Modi, the Prime Minister of India, the Home Minister, the Defence Minister, Rajnath Singh, the uh, Home Minister, Amit Shah, should question Shubhendu Dikari. Because this terror mm -hmm. activity, these two so-called terrorists, hmm. were uh, arrested from Kati, East Midnapur. Hmm. Kati is the polit political turf of the Odikari family. Hmm. Shubhendu Dikari's father was the MP from there. Shubhendu Odikari's brother is contesting on a BJP ticket from Kathi and Shubhendu... Okay, Mr. Datta, I understand that elections are around the corner, but isn't this a moment of, um, you know, it's, isn't it a significant moment that uh, they have been uh, nabbed from Bengal and uh, we are leading into a season of elections and before the elections, this has come as a significant moment. Again, I will repeat my statement. The NIA and uh, the union government were looking for these two, uh, uh, you know, the planners of the blast in Gatalo Cafe. And it is the duty of the Bengal police, I salute them, the Bengal government and even the ruling party of the Bengal to aid and stand shoulder to shoulder with the union government in matters of national security. We never wanted to do politics over it. Who started the chief nasty politics? It is Amit Malviya. This person should be on a leash and should be muzzled by the union government in matters of national security. Why, do have, why does he have to do politics over such a sensitive issue? If he is saying that Bengal is the place where all these terror accused are finding safe heaven, then he should also ask his leader in opposition right. why he was nabbed from Kathi. Okay, so let me take a question. Right, let me take a question to Dr. Shatarupa. Dr. Shatarupa, Riju Datta. 
is saying that these guys who've been picked up from Kanthi is in East Vidyapur. It's a place that is synonymous to Suvendu Adhikari, the BJP's strongman. How do you react to that? He is accusing Suvendu Adhikari of harboring elements like this. Yeah, good morning, Edika. Uh, I would like to, in fact, um, because it takes a lot of caliber, to whatever the topic may be, it, as per the brief that they received from the party, they have to drag in the name of Shubhendudha at any cost, whatever it may be. Now, I would like to respond to this in a different way. Although this is national television, uh, uh, excuse me, I want to put in a, two lines of Bengali. There is a saying in Bengali, I think you also are a Bengali. There is a saying in Bengali which tells the children that Tai 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 Mamar Bari Jai, Mamar Bari Bhari Maja Ki Chornai, which summarizes this, that if you go to your, uh, you know, your uh, mother's uh, paternal house, which is mother's uh, Maike, then there is absolutely no no fear of getting beaten up or getting slapped or it is basically all uh, fun and uh, fun and games in your mamar uh, bari so to say in your buhas uh, house in this case it would be buhas house. Now yes, uh, Amit Malvi is absolutely right. This is not the first time uh, cl criminals and terrorists from all over India have been found here in Bengal, and this is most unfortunate. Whether it is Kolkata, whether it is Tomlok, nowhere in Bengal. There's even a leaf move without the onuprerona of Mamata Banerjee. So it's all very fair to, you know, blame uh, uh, blame uh, Shubhendu Odhikari and his family. But the, the fact remains that the, this is why Mamata Banerjee was... So who's the mama in this case? So who's the mama in this concern. case, Dr. Shatrupa, you're referring to? Sorry? Mama? Who's the, who's the mama in this case, Dr. Shatrupa, you're referring to? Uh, no. I am referring to the actual Bua, because Bua also de uh, decides in the Mama's house. Bua, the Pishi, the Pishi of West Bengal. She makes Okay, so the Mama is Subhendu Adhikari and the Bua is Mamta Banerjee. Well, uh, I understand that both of you are uh, targeting your respective political leaders. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, with all those details. Well, the Mama and Bua all have been dragged in into um, the biggest news of the day of two suspects who were involved in the uh, Rameshwaram cafe blast have been nabbed from uh, East Midnapur, from Kanthi. And uh, they had, this is a joint operation by Bengal police, several other agencies along with NIA. But well, moving on to some other stories, PM's mega rally in Udhampur, Jammu and Kashmir. PM has targeted the opposition over Article 370. He says uh, Congress, PDP, wants to hold back J Jammu and Kashmir. And he has also dared Congress to bring back Article 370. He says Jammu and Kashmir is right now breathing freely. Let's listen into what the Prime Minister had to say. Aapke Modi ne 370 ki divar gira di. Vixit Bharat ka sapna pura karne ke liye 24 by 7. Ye Modi ki guarantee hai. Dat saalon mein humne atangwadiyon aur brashta chariyon par gira. बहुत ही कसा है अब आने वाले पांच सालों में इस क्षेत्र को विकास की नई ऊंचाई पर ले जाना है रिटर्निंग टू द कैपिटल एंड देर इज अ Big charge against BJP leveled by the Aam Aadmi Party. Atishi, uh, Aam Aadmi Party leader says that it is a big political conspiracy that is being hatched against Aam Aadmi Party. She claims that the center is planning to impose president's rule in Delhi. She says that AAP is distracting, BJP is uh, actually saying AAP is distracting people from internal fight. Uh, uh, BJP also says Kejriwal wants his wife to become the CM and Sanjay Singh has aspirations to become the CM as well. And as a result, they want to deflect uh, all the uh, troubles in the party to make big claims like, uh, uh, like President's rule will be imposed 
on Delhi. Let's listen into what uh, Atishi had to say this morning. कि दिल्ली की चुनी हुई सरकार, आम आदमी पार्टी की सरकार, अरविंद केजरीवाल की सरकार के खिलाफ एक बहुत बड़ा राजनैतिक शडियंत्र प्लान किया जा रहा है। हमें विश्वसनीय सूत्रों से पता चला है कि आने वाले कुछ दिनों में केंद्र सरकार भारतीय जनता पार्टी शासित केंद्र सरकार दिल्ली में राष्ट्रपति शासन लगाने वाली है आतिशी मारलीना जी मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूं हम बिल्कुल ऐसा नहीं चाहते बीजेपी चुनी हुई सरकार का सम्मान करती है दिल्ली के लोगों ने आम आदमी पार्टी को मैंडेट दिया है और आम आदमी पार्टी को सरकार चलानी चाहिए लेकिन आम आदमी पार्टी का मुख्य अरविंद केजरीवाल चाहते हैं कि किसी तरीके राष्ट्रपति राज लग जाए क्योंकि वो मुख्यमंत्री जेल में है वो जेल में मुख्यमंत्री रहना चाहते हैं जो कि असंभव है इसलिए जब से संजय सिंह जी जेल से बाहर से आए हैं तो अरविंद केजरीवाल जी का जो अपने धर्म सुनीता केजरीवाल जी को मुख्यमंत्री बनाने का सपना था वो चूर चूर हो गया है संजय सिंह जी कह रहे हैं कि मैं सुनीता जी को मुख्यमंत्री नहीं बनने दूंगा सर सीनियर सेकंड मोस्ट मैं हूं मैं खुद बनूंगा अरविंद केजरीवाल जी कह रहे हैं मैं संजय सिंह जी को बनने नहीं दूंगा now, a four-member government-appointed panel will probe the school bus crash that killed six students and injured around 20 in Haryana's Mahindragar on Thursday. The accident took place near Unhani village in Kanina when the bus carrying around 40 students from primary to secondary classes to GL public school collided with a tree and overturned. Police said an FIR has been registered in connection with the case. The Haryana Education Department has called for a meeting regarding vehicle safety policy at 3 p.m. today. All district edu education officers, elementary education officers and block education officers of the state will participate in the meeting from various areas of the state via video conferencing. But before all of that, let's listen in to uh, Mahendra Rana, the DSP. Driver is driver is एक प्रिंसिपल है दीप्ति और एक होशियार सिंह जो सेक्रेटरी का काम देखता था उसको अरेस्ट किया है कंटिन्यू सीनियर अधिकारी के यही आदेश है हमारे एसपी साहब के कि इसमें अपना पूरा गाड़ियां हैं उसको देखेंगे इसमें हमारा सिविल प्रशासन बीडीपीओ साहब है वो भी आए थे सबको डायरेक्शन डीसी मैडम के स्तर तक से हो गया उसमें हम प्रॉपर अभियान चलाएंगे और जिसके खिलाफ जो भी कार्रवाई बनेगी हम आगे भी करेंगे my colleague Gurpreet joins me for more on this story. There is a big meeting that we are reporting of the Haryana Education Department. Gurpreet, what is it that they are going to look into and what kind of actionables will is, are expected to be decided? Well, uh, this uh, meeting has been scheduled to just uh, take a stock of a situation all over the state and uh, what we have learned through the video conferencing the top level officer they will be holding meeting with all the district officers specifically uh, district education officer uh, what is the main agenda of this meeting because yesterday during the course of investigation it was learned that the bus was not having fitness certificate and despite not having fitness certificate the bus was on the road and uh, carrying the children from the various locations of the district after that uh, now the state government has decided to take a stock of the situation so that proper guidelines should be given to all the schools uh, and if they are going to violate such type of guideline action will be taken against them at the same time what we have learned from the sources within haryana government they say inspection of the buses have already been initiated some of the district we have seen uh, today the traffic police as well as the uh, local uh, transport authority they are conducting multiple inspections so that there should not be such type of tragedy incident which has uh, happened yesterday now the main question in this uh, case uh, what we have learned from the investigators they say they are going to even ask a tough question to the management who had allowed uh, this bus driver to run this bus without having fitness certificate and at the same time uh, they feel the management has a role behind not getting this uh,
If you can, most of the buses are not fit. They don't have the fitness certificate. So that is that is why the section 120 criminal conspiracy has been invoked in the FIR, and now they are trying to take investigation on these lines. And even uh, during the course of investigation, it is also learned uh, that the children, as well as some of the villagers and parents, they had also approached the principal uh, to ask the driver to stop the bus wherever he was. But that didn't happen, and that that led to a serious accident that mm -hmm. had already snuffed the life of uh, six school right. children and uh, uh, that had already uh, shaken up the whole state, the whole system also. So let's see that how the investigation will be unfolded Absolutely. in the coming let's days see how the investigation and what type uh, of action they are Good going to I have one question, America. you know, which still is unanswered and no one's really talking about the fact why the school was open on a holiday and was this the only school open on, on a national holiday or several other schools in Haryana that were open as well. Well, uh, what we have learnt uh, from the various districts of Haryana, that is not only school which has been opened, but yes, uh, yesterday we have seen the education minister, she has uh, raised this question. She says that this will also be investigated why on the day of holiday this school has been opened. But in the pockets of uh, uh, Haryana state, we have seen and learned uh, from the various locations, a lot of private schools were opening and they were operating. So that is also part of investigation. Uh, why these private uh, uh, schools are not following the guidelines of a holiday and the, the, the state officer, they are going to be more strict towards the private schools. So uh, that is also part of investigation. Let's see that how the government is going to frame the rules so that next time uh, on the holiday, such private schools should not be operated and they should not be open uh, on the day of holiday. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Gurpreet, for getting us all those details. Time for a quick break on the show. More on the other side. Stay tuned. You basically say to parents, stop chasing happiness and success for your kids. I'm like, hey, but if nothing else, I should at least be doing that. And in today's very goal-driven, success-driven world, I'd be like, I get it, but I don't want my kid to be left out. I want to give them the best chance. Right, so let's just take success first. And most Indian parents will have to admit, even in the privacy of their own solitude, that success is their main goal in raising their children. And when we raise children with this goal in mind, what we often do is become blind to who the child really is. When we drive our children to success, we objectify them. And no parent likes to admit that they're doing that because we, we pretend to ourselves, we lie to ourselves, that all our pushing is coming because we care about our children. We love our children, but that's not the truth. We care about ourselves. We love ourselves. We feel good to have our children be successful. And if our children fall off the wagon, it makes us feel anxious. But then you also say, don't push for happiness. Don't make that your big goal either. Can you tell us why? That sounds like a really different way of looking at things. We want our children to be happy. Well, what that really means is we want our children to be really happy because that makes us feel as if we're good parents. It makes us feel in control and as if we're successful. Our children are going to have a lot of unhappy moments in life. Life is not about just unilateral, unilinear feelings. In fact, pain, fear, anxiety is part of the human experience. And in fact, that's what actually keeps us safe sometimes. And that's how we're wired to know that there's danger. And that's how we grow. Our children will pay a price. They may not tell us right now, but they will pay a price in their own life because they will be unable to sit with their difficult emotions. They will drink too much, eat too much, socialize too much, spend too much money and look outward because they're too uncomfortable to sit with their pain because we've taught them that they should just be happy, which is unrealistic and it's toxic. <laughs> This is well, 
Home Minister Amit Shah is in Boradabad uh, today on an election rally. Let's listen into what he has to say. Pradhan Mantri hai, Sir Brahm Mandir nai, Baba Vishwanath ka darbar bhi sajaya, Mahakal log bhi bana, Badri dam, Kedar dam, Punar jivi thuye, Or Somnath ka mandir bhi sona ka banane ka kaam abhi chal raha hai. Paanch saal mein, ये दस साल में मोदी जी ने हमारे सभी सांस्कृतिक मान बिंदुओं की रक्षा करने का काम किया है भाई और बहनों मुरादाबाद वालों मुझे बताओ कि कश्मीर जो है हमारा है या नहीं है अंत तक बोलो जरा जोर से बोलो है या नहीं है एक कांग्रेस के खड़गे जी कहते हैं राजस्थान उत्तर प्रदेश वालों का कश्मीर से क्या लेन देन है खड़गे साहब आपको मालूम नहीं है मुरादाबाद का बच्चा बच्चा कश्मीर के लिए अपनी जान देने के लिए तैयार भाई और बहनों मुझे बताओ ये धारा 370 हटनी चाहिए थी या नहीं हटनी चाहिए थी जोर से बोलो हटनी चाहिए थी या नहीं हटनी चाहिए थी सत्तर सत्तर साल तक ये कांग्रेस पार्टी धारा 370 को अनोरस बच्चे की तरह अपनी गोदी में खिलाती रही आपने मोदी जी को दूसरी बार प्रधानमंत्री बनाया मोदी जी ने 5 अगस्त 2019 को धारा 370 को समाप्त कर दिया और ये जा कश्मीर सांस से अपना तिरंगा वहाँ लहरा रहा है मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में कश्मीर हमेशा के लिए भारत के साथ जुड़ गया है भाई और बहनों मोदी जी ने इस दस साल के अंदर इस देश से आतंकवाद और नक्सलवाद को समाप्त करने का आपको याद होगा आपको याद होगा दस साल तक कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार थी पाकिस्तान से हरोज आलिया मालिया जमालिया आते थे और बम धमाके कर कर चले जाते किसी के माथे पर जू नहीं रहेगी मोदी जी आए उन्होंने फिर से गलती करी उरी और पुलवामा में धमाका किया मगर वो भूल गए कि मनमोहन सिंह की सरकार नहीं है नरेंद्र मोदी की सरकार है नरेंद्र मोदी की दसी दिन में सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक और एयर स्ट्राइक करकर पाकिस्तान के घर में घुसकर आतंकवादियों का सफाया करने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया भाई और बहनों मोदी जी ने देश को सुरक्षित किया है मोदी जी ने देश को समृद्ध किया है मोदी जी ने गरीबों का कल्याण करने का काम करा है देश के अंदर 80 करोड़ से ज्यादा गरीबों को हर महीना प्रति व्यक्ति प्रति माह पांच किलो अनाज मुफ्त देने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी कर रहे हैं 12 करोड़ शौचालय बनाने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया है 4 करोड़ से ज्यादा लोगों को अपना घर देने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया है दस करोड़ से ज्यादा माताओं को उज्ज्वला का गैस देने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी ने किया है और चौदह करोड़ लोगों को गैस का सिलेंडर देने का काम भी नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया है भाई और बहनों मोदी जी ने उत्तर प्रदेश के लिए भी बहुत किया पश्चिमी उत्तर प्रदेश में मैं 2013 में आया था हमारे भूपेंद्र भाई उस वक्त क्षेत्रीय अध्यक्ष थे यहां पर डर दंगे गौ तस्करी और गुंडों का राज चलता था आपने समाजवादी पार्टी को हटाया और यहां पर डर गुंडे गौ तस्करे की जगह वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट का काम चालू हुआ और विकास आगे बढ़ा ये उत्तर प्रदेश से उत्तर प्रदेश से हिंदू पलायन कर रहा था 
पश्चिमी यूपी से केरेना से प्रायण कर रहा था आज देखिए आपने सपा को हटाया हिंदुओं की जगह गुंडे पलायन कर रहे हैं गुंडे पलायन कर रहे हैं योगी आदित्यनाथ जी ने इस सात साल के अंदर पूरे उत्तर प्रदेश की कानून और व्यवस्था को चौक चौबंद करने का काम योगी जी ने किया है उत्तर प्रदेश को सुरक्षित किया है यहां से पलायन खत्म हो गया माफिया राज खत्म हो गया गौ तस्करी खत्म हो गई और मोदी जी ने चार एयरपोर्ट चार एयरपोर्ट देने का काम उत्तर प्रदेश में किया छह एक्सप्रेस वे दिए और छह बन रहे हैं बारह एक्सप्रेस वे दिए अस्सी लाख ग्रामीण घरों में बिजली पहुंचाने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया तीन करोड़ चालीस लाख गरीबों का पांच लाख तक का सारा इलाज करने का काम किया दो करोड़ पैंतीस लाख शौचालय दस साल में बने और चौदह करोड़ लाभार्थियों को मुफ्त अनाज देने का काम नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया मोदी जी ने उत्तर प्रदेश को आगे बढ़ाने का काम और अगर पीछे मुझे मालूम है दूर दूर तक संभावना नहीं है मगर फिर से सपा आएगी तो कहते हैं कांग्रेस और सपा वाले कहते हैं वेल द इलेक्शन इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्ड इन मुरादाबाद ऑन नाइनटीन अप्रैल इन द फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ पोलिंग मूविंग ऑन टू सम ब्रेकिंग न्यूज कमिंग इन फ्रॉम बेंगाल एट दिस आर Uh, it is about bengal uh, teachers recruitment scam ed has attached property worth 230 crore rupees now what is the scam all about in may 2022 the cbi was directed to probe the appointment of non teaching staff which is group c and d and the teaching staff by west bengal uh, school service commission and the west bengal board of secondary education the appointees had allegedly paid bribes to the range of uh, 5 lakhs to 15 lakh to get jobs after failing selection tests according to the cbi more than 100 crore rupees were allegedly raised by trinamool congress leaders for, from job aspirants to employ them as teachers and staff as at state run schools between 20, 2014 and 2021 i'm joined by my colleague mukesh for more on this story mukesh please tell us about uh, uh, the raids that have been conducted by the ed and the properties that have been attached right now देखिए पश्चिम पश्चिम बंगाल टीचर्स रिक्रूटमेंट स्कैम में जो ईडी है उसे बड़ी कार्रवाई करते हुए 230 करोड़ रुपए की जो प्रॉपर्टीज हैं वो अटैच की हैं ये प्रॉपर्टी जो है वो आरोपी प्रसन्न कुमार रॉय की हैं और शांति प्रसाद सिन्हा की प्रॉपर्टियां हैं जिनको अटैच किया गया है ये प्रॉपर्टियां पश्चिम बंगाल में अलग अलग इलाकों में है जिसमें फ्लैट है और जमीने हैं जिनको अटैच किया गया है और ईडी जो है सीबीआई की एफ के बेसिस पर ईडी ने मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग का मामला दर्ज किया था और ईडी जो है इस मामले की लगातार जांच कर रही थी ईडी ने पीएमएलए के तहत यानी मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग के तहत दो अलग अलग केस जो है वो सीबीआई के बेसिस पर दर्ज किए थे और ये जो स्कैम है इसमें दो जो टीचर्स हैं वो इलीगल तरीके से पैसे लेकर रिक्रूट किए गए थे और उस मामले में जो ईडी है वो लगातार कार्रवाई कर रही है प्रसन्न कुमार रॉय जो जो कि मिडिल मैन है उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज हैं और शांति प्रसाद सिन्हा जो वेस्ट बंगाल स्कूल सर्विस कमीशन का तत्कालीन एडवाइजर है उसकी प्रॉपर्टियां हैं ईडी अब तक इस पूरे मामले में तीन करोड़ रुपए की प्रॉपर्टीज अटैच कर चुकी है राइट ओके दैट्स अ बिग न्यूज देयर कमिंग एट दिस आर ईडी हैज अटैच्ड प्रॉपर्टीज वर्थ 230 करोड़ रुपीस इन बंगाल टीचर्स रिक्रूटमेंट case well uh, the scam of course happened between 2014 and 2021 in west bengal moving to some more election news now and from south india we turn our focus to a constituency that is being regarded as a hot seat which is virudhunagar where bjp is hoping to draw on the star power of actor turned politician radhika to take on congress veteran and incumbent mp manikam tagore take a look <laughs> 
popular actor and a powerful name in television production, Radhika is the BJP's face for the Virudhunagar Lok Sabha seat. Her husband Sharat Kumar is one of Tamil cinema's top stars and a former Rajya Sabha MP. And together, their aim is to wrestle out the Virudhunagar seat. But this man, the incumbent Congress MP, Manikam Tagore, who's backed by the formidable DMK Congress Left Alliance with other smaller parties. Radhika and Sharat Kumar are the star and local political appeal for the BJP in a state which has had an eternal bond between film stars and politics. You will be very surprised. I think this is going to throw up a lot of surprises. When I uh, entered the political fray, in the sense, to get involved in politics, it was 1996. The same reaction we feel now, that people definitely want to change and the change is going to be for the BJP. <laughs> Grassroot political equations and caste arithmetic, like anywhere else, play a decisive role in a constituency like Virudhunagar. The two Dravidian parties with their tested alliances have been masters at that grassroot management and breaking through is a formidable challenge for a third force. The Congress is riding on DMK power in Tamil Nadu and a carefully nurtured alliance of parties which have consistently sided with the DMK after the demise of AIA DMK Supremo J. Jaya Lalitha. Manikam Tagore's biggest strength is that alliance that brings with it the grassroots arithmetic to get past the post. He won the seat in 2009 with a 40% vote share as a DMK ally, but came fourth with just 3% vote in 2014 when the Congress and DMK fought separately in one of their worst elections. The AI DMK won the seat in that election, but in 2019, Tagore was back on poll as a DMK ally with a 43% vote. This history just reiterates the importance of the Congress DMK alliance, especially for the former. After 4th of July, June, they will all be there. Shops will be closed, and we will not. They will not have. We will have the 40 MPs of the India Alliance together in the Parliament, and we will all stand together as India Alliance. The bigger threat to him, according to Tagore, is this man, Vijay Prabhakar, son of DMDK founder and late actor Vijay Khan. These parts are a DMDK region of influence and Vijay is banking on a sympathy factor as his campaign is about keeping his father's legacy alive. The alliance with the AIA DMK is a formidable one and he's threatening to have a sting in the tail. We have a quite uh, good uh, vote bank here and even ADMK has a good quite vote bank here. So according to our tactics, uh, I think uh, we are stronger to compare to those two. And to be honest, the competition will be between uh, Mr. Manikam Thakur and myself, I think, yeah. The battle for Virudhunagar is one for survival of the DMDK. One to hold on to seats, to keep the numbers to remain a relevant opposition nationally for the Congress. And one that could mean a march into new territory for the BJP. All three together, make Virudhunagar as interesting a contest as any. In Virudhunagar, Peter Agra for NDTV. Looks like a lip-smacking contest there in Virudhunagar in Tamil Nadu. Now, Association for Democratic Reforms has released the data for the richest and poorest candidates in the fray in the first phase of Lok Sabha elections. As per the data, Kamal Nath's son, Nakul Nath, is the richest candidate, having declared assets worth 716 crore rupees. The data also shows that 450 of the 1,600 candidates are crorepatis, while 10 candidates have declared their assets as zero. Senior leader Kamal Nath's son Nakul Nath, the Congress candidate from Chindwara in Madhya Pradesh, 716 crore rupees. From Tamil Nadu, AIA DMK candidate from Irod Ashok Kumar, 662 crore rupees. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga, Devanathan Yadav, 304 crore rupees. These are the three richest candidates in the first phase of the Lok Sabha elections. Analysis by the NGO ADR or Election Watch 
of the affidavit submitted by 16 18 candidates has revealed that 450, that is around 28%, are Karorpatis. Nakul Nath, the son of Congress leader Kamal Nath and the Congress candidate from Chindwara, Madhya Pradesh, is the richest candidate. The AIA DMK candidate from Erode in Tamil Nadu, Ashok Kumar, is the second richest candidate. And the BJP candidate from Siva Ganga in Tamil Nadu, Devnathan Yadav T, is the third richest in the fray in phase one. जी बिल्कुल ये तो एडीआर का हमेशा से मुद्दा रहा है कि जो धनबल और बहुबल कोर्ट अभी चल रहा है हमारे इलेक्शन सिस्टम में उसमें धनबल का प्रभाव ज्यादा बढ़ गया है और अगर हम ये स्टैटिस्टिक देखें कि जीतने वाली बात तो पिछली लोकसभा का जो एनालिसिस हमने किया था उसमें लगभग 48 प्रतिशत जो जीते थे एमपीस उनकी एसेट्स 2 करोड़ से ऊपर थे Interestingly, 10 candidates in the fray in the first phase have declared their assets as zero. A few independent candidates have declared very few assets. They include Pondraj K from Tamil Nadu who has declared assets worth just 320 rupees. Karthik Gendlaji Doke in Maharashtra has declared assets worth just 500 rupees. While the assets of Surya Muthu in Tamil Nadu are just 500 rupees. बहुत कम जीतते हैं नॉर्थ ईस्ट में हमने देखा है कुछ एक कम पैसे वाले भी जीत जाते हैं लेकिन जैसे मैंने बताया स्टैटिस्टिक्स अगर हम देखें पिछले जो लोकसभा चुनाव में थे में सिर्फ 0.03 परसेंट चांसेस परसेंटेजेस थे जो ऐसे जिनके कम पैसे हैं वो लोग जीते हैं अकॉर्डिंग टू इलेक्शन वॉच सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन कैंडिडेट of 4 crore and 51 lakh. In the first phase, the highest number of rich candidates are in Tamil Nadu. AIDMK has fielded 36 candidates who have declared an average asset of around 35 crore, while 22 candidates fielded by DMK 